Hello there, David. Hello, uh, Chevron, I guess. That is all I can think to call your username. There's only one character in it. Hi, Rainbow Fox 16. Hi, Amelia. Hi, Lumi. Hi, Mr. Golden Cat. Do I do I want to check Nintendo stream chat? Do I really want to understand what that means? I'm unconvinced. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Red X Parasite. Hi, Tocad. And hi, uh, AA, or Ah. I don't know, it's, it's not much of a scream if it's only two A's. I feel like you've got to commit to it a little more if you want the, the full experience there. So I'm going to go with the double A? AA? I don't know. They were starting a lot later. Still have homework to do? Oh. Well, you'd better speed run it. We're starting in 12 and a half minutes. Hi, the true agent eight. Hi, Christian seventy one seventy eight. Hi, Roxlin. Time for the American Ink Jetter. <laughs> Greetings and salutations. Hello. <laughs> How's it going? Hi, Ico Octo. Nice. We get to stay up late. Or, for me, stay up usual. Hi, the 21st Gamer. Hi, Clover. Hi, Kanyobi. Hi, FlexDJ13. I still go sleep to do? Uh, maybe you do need sleep. Well, have a good night. Hi, Shelly Bean. It's like the middle of the night. Yeah, it takes place in Japan. So, we're staying up here to watch. Hi, Rubber. Hi, Air Sign. I also still go sleep to do. <laughs> Hi, Charge. Hi, Dayshade. Anything in particular looking forward to seeing tonight? I'm very interested to see how the... Japanese team Phantom Thief plays in the ranked modes. That, I think, is the biggest question of the tournament. Um, Kaiser is also capable of potentially upsetting Jackpot here, but I'm hoping for an NA Finals here. NA versus Japan would be pretty hype. Why does Nintendo hate sleep? They don't hate sleep, it's just this is not their time to sleep, because they're in Japan instead of here. Hi, Wulu Le Marie. Hi, Leslie. I'm doing okay. A little bit snoozy, but that can more than be made up for with hype. Player POV site still shows MKD, yeah. I figure I'll, ju I'll just keep it here. The player POV site is cool. Like, if you want to individually wa follow one of the players... But I don't know, I'm not... Oh, that's hype. That's super hype. Majin's so cool. I respect the heck out of the way that he handled the... The, the conversation that the MC was trying to start in the middle of the technical difficulties in the EU Championship. I would have been annoyed. I would, I would have acted exactly like Kiver did, but... Majin's like, I'm doing great, bro. How are you? Like, I, I like that. I like that guy. Watching Spl Spoon at Midnight with the kids and the squids. Hi, the hipster emo. Hi, Shplurmf. Long in prelims last yesterday. Um, it was... So it's going to be a completely different format this time around. Um, I don't know how loud this is for you guys, but I'm going to turn it down slightly so that it's less distracting for me. 
Um, Oh my god. Okay, that's probably good. Um, so I think they were done around like 2 or 2.15 a.m. when they started at midnight for me. So like 2 hours, 15 minutes. But these are going to be anarchy modes. Um, I think for at least most of these sets. Hoping for a Snipe Rider buff announcement? <laughs> Not getting enough use? <sighs> funny, funny words that you've said there, Paul Ryan. You. Um, I Crows J per Crows. No, Crow Sip, sorry. I thought that was going to say Crows JP, but no, it's Crows Sip. Hello. Been watching people main. Oh, you mean paint miniatures tonight? Or main the miniature splatling? That's totally what Jamie means. Japan won Mario Kart, alright. Something for the home crowd. Home team crowd. Both tables have Splatoon Amiibo sitting on them. Nice. There's a little buddy, and then there's a Grizzco radio. Here we go. And now we've got the uh, NA cast. Testing my RAM by watching all the YouTube streams. Nogami giving dating advice? Does he do that? I don't know if he does that. As far as finding our seating as WSP. For the rank mode. I actually don't know what that means. Hold on, I'm Googling. From what we saw yesterday, the competition's gonna be fierce Oh, what's up? Really playing their best platoon huh. we've seen all year from them. Yeah, it was a tantalizing day. I've never seen it abbreviated like that, but hello, Heart of War. They have been pacing around, they have been Hi, you here? In the wall. They are ready and they're gonna put on their best. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We've got quarterfinals action, semifinals action, and then finals as Lumi well. might have so played with Jamie, kind of hype. Hi, Jay Pickle. Played with Turf for the last game the of screen, each match. About the group really? Gave everybody their oh, that's kind of weird. Today we have our championship bracket. A couple of that favors Phantom Thief if they end up being able to hang on and like trade counter picks or whatever. Because that's really their mode. Look at the schedule throughout the day. We've got our My understanding bracket. is 10, that 10 they are Turf War specialists. Hence, you know, winning coaching. Makes a lot of sense. Of we have got our finals and we will have a champion as we get set to dawn a new day. Different set of rules here throughout the championship. These are scheduled so till... A bit yeah, I guess so. All weapons and um, gear, primary gear abilities only. Primary gear abilities only still, only so that no subs. Voice chat, of course, you have to have it on. Voice How chat on, with your team at that point? I guess. And as you take ad, I, the, the, you could just set up a headset, whatever. Um, okay, yeah, so all of the deciding games at the end would be Turf War, but we go ranked modes first. Lots of splat zones in there. Zones Bluefin. I'm just going to pause here for a minute. So Zones Bluefin is probably the best Bluefin, but it's still bad. Uh, Tower Ship Shape is fine. Rainmaker Robo is pretty good. Um, probably not the mode that I would put on Robo, but it's still good. Clam Sturgeon is a classic. It's I, I don't like it a lot it, by Splatoon 2 terms, but I mean, it's a Splatoon 2 map, which automatically makes it a little better. And then Turf War Mahi is such a crazy match that could potentially decide who makes it on in Worlds. Um, Rainmaker Barnacle is a little weird. We don't tend to play that one competitively. Tower Inkblot is a classic. That's the, the NA right there. Every tournament always has that. Clam Blitz Umami is fine. Zones Museum is, is good. And then Turf on Humpback. Then Tower Brinewater is pretty weird um zones flounder is a classic clam blitz mako is pretty good rainmaker manta is fine zones hammerhead i honestly don't think zones hammerhead is that bad up until the point where a lockout ha happens if a lockout starts then that's going to snowball really quick but i think the the middle of the map is actually really well designed on that that uh map and then Tower Crab Leg, really? That's 
so weird though. On their strength on these given maps and modes. Let's focus in on the core. And then turf Marlin would be the deciding. Finals that take place. Already. Uh, congrats on air sign to air sign on being first in Twitch chat. That five times fast, and then Rainmaker and Robo Ramen, and then if necessary, a game four clan blitz at Sturgeon Shipyard, and game five. What's up, Risa? Mahi Mahi Resort first team to three wins. Scooter Puff. So will they Let's announce anything here, you think? If it happens, it's going to happen right before the final. It's going to happen right here. Um, and this would be the time for them to do it if they had something to announce. But I'm not holding my breath too much. Uh, thank you, Rissa, for confirming that Serial is not... Su okay, actually, Wulu is corrected, Rissa, here, that Serial actually is soon. So thanks for, for the information there. Sprout Telephone says, I was going to watch with my team, but they're... Where, where is the... That's a heck of a name. I don't know what a Sproutella is. Maybe I should know what a Sproutella is. Anyway, welcome. Jackpot looked a little vulnerable as and well. Pumpkin Queen has successfully though, secured no last. They are the last person the to have yeah, that's been the, last. The beauty of this game, right, is depending on the map, depending on the mode and how you prep for it, things can turn very, very quickly. And if you joined us yesterday, we discussed in Turf War, you really must obtain small fry. Yeah, there, there's a lot of will. there's a lot of Splatoon merch out there that they're willing to sell you if you want it. One thing that you pointed out yesterday with turf war you can make this huge push early in the match however when you get to ranked modes that huge push you make could be the only push you need to make you don't have to play all three minutes necessarily yeah it's like turf decider keep your best score which is it feels nice. bad if it goes to last game but the thing is that's a very unlikely outcome like if they do it this way if you really think about it turf war is actually the least likely mode to influence the outcome of the match here so that's kind of better i guess if they were going to include it i don't know i like the way that they did it in eu where game one was a turf war best of three so even though Turf War is pretty volatile, you had another chance to get back in, and that was, I think, a good way that they included it in the scoring. I'd like to see more of that sort of thing from Nintendo tournaments if they're, you know, not going to just get rid of Turf entirely for this kind of thing. The thing that I really like the least about how they formatted this is that there are some qualifiers and stuff, like Koshin, for example, where they qualified for a tournament that's primarily ranked modes in the finals by winning in Turf War. Like, you're not testing some sort of confidence who's best at the thing that they need to win at with the qualifiers. Like, that's kind of whack. That's not really how that should work. Thank you for the resub, Jupiter Saturn. Appreciate you. Say, go jackpot. Woohoo! Exactly. Can you turn upstream? Okay. I'm going to trust you that this is a good idea and that it's not, like, completely drowning me out. Oh, I pause. I see. Okay. Kaiser takes the stage, and obviously the charisma. Majin was part of that 2018 team. Umami Resort. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah part of the sure. World Championships. Right. They're facing off against Unadon. Early thoughts on both of these teams. Well, I got to say. So jealous of Splatoon 2 and 1 maps. They look so fun. Kaiser, yeah, for sure. Ishik, they are. Five the one Splatoon 2 maps were a lot bigger and had a lot more flank routes in general. There, there were some stinkers still, you know, in every game. To provide um, tactical loop. That means that but I do wish we had more of those Splatoon 2 maps. I, I, it's crazy to me that they did not bring the Reef back. It was such a good map. Shooter, but still it would be so different to play in this game. There, Huide, I was very impressed with the mechanics of that sloshing machine, one of the strongest main weapons in all of Splatoon right now. You can get behind somebody, you can be ahead of somebody. But it's all going to come down to that. TC Crab Leg presents a unique challenge that other TC maps don't. That's a very optimistic and positive way to, to put it. Amount of tentabrella. Do you foresee that in the ranked modes? Oh, absolutely. If you were going to use it in turf, you're going to watch with my friends. Points, awesome. Might be one of the weaker modes. What would you do if you were turned into an inkling? Objective in some of these modes. I don't know. That be an inkling be and then the do things. Absolutely, make it easier for you to push forward, hold on to a tower. Push a rainmaker and keep that zone your color. Kaiser, one of the teams that surprised themselves yesterday by being able to pick uh, yeah. up the game 
probably just higher risk. Turf War. They felt coming in Turf War is our weakest. They're willing mode. to sell it to us, though. We don't I'm sure you could probably get it online. It would just finals. cost a little more because of shipping. Opportunity to shake off the rust and I need him in my house and home. Early on. <laughs> yeah, Majin said <coughs> yesterday when I was talking to him that they think that finishing second or third... Hoping the Goblins do well from advantage. Australia and you, you never see us get very far in many comps across many games. They had a challenge for sure. As, uh, as we say it in, in the, the uh, earlier rounds, um, Listen, when you have a if I remember set, correctly, they like did you beat Unidon. Everybody. It builds, it compounds. But right now, Kaiser knows if they want now to they've got to beat run, they have some absolute Smart Roast Chickens. I feel like they could definitely Let's beat Smart Roast Chickens. I think that's doable. I think it's going to be a lot harder for them to beat Phantom Thief if Phantom Thief are as strong as they looked in Turf War. And their weapons ready to roll. You played this mode several times at Bluefin Depot. What are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind on this map? Well, this is one of the most unique Splat Zones game or Splat Zones maps in the game. Maybe <coughs> the most unique in this particular is my stream behind this map. This is certainly one where if you've got it in the pocket, <coughs> use it. But Jordan, we're not going to have to spend. Okay, here we go. Well, I guess it's starting. The World starting. Championship <laughs> is finally here. Let's get it started. The very first game okay. of the Splatoon 3 World Hello, Championship Debbie. 2024 is for all the marbles. Day two. As we begin the quarterfinals, there it is go. Kaiser versus um, on Nine. What do we see? So Kaiser running Zap. Very interesting change. That's all completely that expected. And then Junior is interesting from, uh, from Unidon, but everything else we've pretty much seen before. From Unidon, so Did we see that? I think they were playing Splash the in the past. The but like Junior actually makes a lot of sense on this map. Like bombs are still really good, and you can actually use the bubble really well for like maintaining the safety on the zone the there's just to it's the too cramped of a map point lead, there's not enough space there, that you can three, safely stand on so one. it's a wipeout for kaiser and an opportunity but yeah to take kaiser textbook there by Maja kaiser no slouches like there's a world where they just those take the entire tournament those duelies, rather, they are all top players very mobile that chip damage that that weapon can apply they wouldn't be who i would guess from safety but they could do it take over kaiser's lead continues to build they're going to try and push their way in with pushing out Unidon, the that umbrella coming out from Unidon, trying to create a little oh, bit man, of space. Oh man, they use the tent They're to set up the bubble. In the middle. Then they that gets them so control. much space. Yeah, but you're going to see a lot of that. This zone flips very, very quickly. Once you dive down, on that is a set side. play. And once that set play is over, they just that straight up lose the one v ones. Getting into a lot of positions that are very and difficult to challenge. And another thing that's really dangerous about this is that Kaiser has cooler advantage. stampers you'll ever see. The second wipeout of the game for Kaiser, and now they're pushing forward, trying. To keep I'd be really bay. interested to see what would happen if they just the switched the dapples to onto Kaiser. They're cutting the V-dapples. They used the Unidon cooler trying to get for back that at least. The game, but so far, they wouldn't even have to change their comp that much. A big lead I guess it gets rid of their, their reef slider master, but gets the zone it's an option. Again, here you can see that uh, I, I would think you would at least want to be using the reef slider to cap zone here. Like they got two reef sliders and none of them are going off. They're kind of just diving. They've continued to score more and more points even as players have gone down. This does not look especially hands, winnable. Seconds away for oh, Kaiser. it's Ten over. Seconds left. They're trying to push everything. It's They've so got three, one on the map. Nine. They are determined. It's the third wipeout of the game. And Kaiser, how about that? A dominant performance out the gate. Unadon had to go through three wipeouts as Kaiser gets game number one. Great showing there from Kaiser. And listen, Kaiser felt comfortable Man. in the Splat Zones mode coming into this event. It was one that they I, felt like was one of their better ones. So, I mean, it's Bluefin. The first map you feel there's no room to move. There. But the way that they play, I feel like that does kind of benefit the comp those two of one of those gets behind you and removes Unidon, get out of hand but, bit, but they never let them get behind them. There is always they also got outranged really hard by sure no rapid plus business, stamper no tricks and they so like they, they didn't really have a way to attack those the at all they have without their longest range, was their longest the ranged weapon whenever they need to left or right with that I think their longest ranged main weapon was tetradulies on that so and they were able to move fast enough to really find those so like that's just gonna get bullied by the, both Majin and Zerez advantage of the range that they had here I know you look at that no backline you say you don't have a ton of range but when the opponent is bringing there might be audio issues on Kaiser's end a splatter shot junior I, I mean they're gonna have to run at you and pretty much I'm one seeing way. like not gonna be able to hit you uh, Isik and fly zero talking back and forth so okay again 
Credit to Kaiser. Hopefully the the, that's that okay. They had an executing when the moment presented itself. So Kaiser gets. Yeah, they're not trying to get anyone's attention. So they it's just kind of talk to each other. Three wins to advance to the semifinals and. They looked very comfortable. Took that initial ah! Looking pretty loose. From Unidon. Unidon I, I, nice I'm used to like after that. just keeping it my focus locked on the screen. Like that's one of the ways that I try to center uh, myself when I'm playing a tournament. Unidon like because if I accidentally look like past the screen and look out at the massive crowd in front of me <laughs> from this position, it's a little more intimidating. That's the sort of thing that can trigger an adrenaline rush. So they can shake that one off here. But Still plenty of time. nice that they're just kind of chatting with each other. To go through here. I'll be interested in seeing if they go back to the composition they used yesterday. I just got done talking about how I thought Quide on that sloshing machine really was the key player for them yesterday. Like Reef Slider, if you're going to run it, zones is absolutely where you run it because you can try to cap the zone with it. Um, it's a good... And it's really dangerous on that map really because one -on -one you cut off so many angles. Over the hump and get enough of those splats to give themselves the advantage. You could kind of just like double reef slide at the same time, advantage and you'd probably get like three splats because there's just nowhere to run away from it. But uh, they were really trickling pretty badly. Um, they had the one play where they moved in using the tent and used that to get a bubble set up, and that all worked really well. And then as soon as the tent shield was gone and the bubble was gone, they just hadn't gotten anything from it, and they got shredded. So plenty of answers for Unidon to go back to as well, and we've already talked at length about how Kaiser can switch on a moment's notice, so this will be interesting to see. Up next, tower control. Look over and see the devs of the game itself watching. This, you said it right there, Splatoon brand you wish was in IRL. Um... This is a scary one. A snowball map, as we like to call it, where the game can get away from you in a hurry. There are lots of positions that the opponent will like to set up their defenses on in tower control. I don't think any of them are, like, totally my style. But on this map in particular, it is very easy for the team that is riding the tower. To I guess they are also just based on, like, human clothes. So it's like, you could get anything that you want to bring it in again, the, the from fashions that already exist. And this is the team Kaiser that is very relaxed and very comfortable as far as the body. Tony Kensa would be interesting to shop at. Expressive, it feels like in those chairs. You see the joy coming out. Doesn't mean it's a lack of focus. They just enjoy the moment here. So tower control. Oh yeah, Rockenberg's not bad. Margo I like their shoes. Company. Game two. Can Kaiser build a 2-0 lead, or can Unadon lock it up? All right, let's see. machine coming out. Well, you see Double what's coming out from slider both again. sides as we get started here. On one side, you're going to see the sloshing machine Neo, and on the other side, you're going to see much the same. The sloshing so machine the, the idea Neo here generally those the with the excuse me. Neo machine so especially is that the point sensor side. shows out, your Zuka player who to shoot. Space. You want to get that advantage before you think about moving the tower initially. Because it's really hard so to far, avoid Zuka on this map for they nearly if they know where the you are. Clean. Well, and look, Shino is all the way back behind them. So, there. like, that double Zuka play. plus point sensor go in and attack Shino and they just would work clears through. everything out. Kaiser says, well, okay, we'll just attack everyone that's not behind the Tent Umbrella Shield. Excellent yep. play and adaptation. The, that's the, the way that you play against the Tent Shield. You do not fight the Tents, you fight everybody else. Oh, my God. Gosh, look at these Trizuka shots. There's a reason why it has become the special number yeah, one in this Trizuka game. Yeah, get used to it here, folks. You're going to see gross a lot here. of Trizukas, but we'll talk more about those later on because a second wave of them are coming. So Love Puyo and Typhon might not able to, get something done here. Yeah, they get a couple Shino on the side here. Good fighting together. To uh, who right wins off. that fight down, down there? Down okay, they the stole it out. They're simply trying to give themselves a little stability and not get taken down Good by jump out. Team. That's Impressive a great push by Kaiser. Um, they get through two checkpoints. It's a great instinct to have. Board. And look at this. Man, it doesn't even matter. Once again, sending Unadon retreating back to spawn. And Kaiser is just winning every fight. Right now, it's gross. Well, I mean, this is what a double Trizuka composition we, We've seen, is like, you Puyo and Typhon spots they would grouped like to together to, to, to get one pick. Simply by firing that, that was clean. Over on and that otherwise, side. they've just they're they're already the entire team has lost every fight that, that they've taken. Earlier. Once again, Shino comes forward and is able to force the Tower Riders off. Oh, that was game. massive. And with an explosive wipeout on their own, they're finally going to have the opportunity to make a counter push. Worth noting, 30 points didn't take a lot off of that last checkpoint. If they get to that checkpoint, they could steal this lead. Okay, Unidon let's see. Stepping up to the plate and hitting one as they get the wipeout. Has now it been showing, like, player splatted notifications at the bottom of the Kaiser screen now put when the someone gets a splat? For the first time. We take a look. Oh, a splat right behind the tent umbrella. 
no luck there. Okay, it has. And then yeah. a splat on Ishik. That's it's a huge crazy opportunity, that the but down goes that another they member hit. of Unidon. Yeah, very Wasn't, out means they're not going didn't to splat anybody. anybody. That all of those splats went to, to somebody Unidon, else's credit. Team in this tournament who hasn't been running Tacticooler, which means they're not going to be able to jump back in quickly enough to continue that push. Yeah. They're going to have to do it again. Tacticooler is a part of why they're so getting like, outpaced here. They're going to go in there and mix it up, but Ishik able to negate that attempt, and now... Kaiser just really trying to fortify their approach at this moment. You've got the lead, just over two minutes left. Nine, what's their thought process as this game continues to go on? Yeah, I mean, at this point, they're really trying to find some of these fights to break through. The problem is that Kaiser is too good at identifying where their members are. Good job are. from Finally, Unidon. That's a good fight to take. Over at Puyo, so maybe and now the Reef dies. <laughs> here, no, they don't fall for any that like has been the story the of uh, so even the promo material. To trade player after player, but like, your Reef Slider into a place where you have no cover, you are going, going to go down. And Majin doing an excellent job of just holding down that anchor position. They get position a jump out. Kaiser advancing the tower, trying to move forward, just peppering Rapid Blaster shots. Here comes that killer whale just to provide a little bit more support. And they've got Unidon scrambling oh, in their spawn. Oh, that's yeah, a beautiful pinch between Majin nice and Azuka. to close that one down. And with Fly Zero gone as well, it appears that Shino has stabilized this position once again. But, Jordan, they've stopped them every time at this spot. I, they can clearly play defense and keep some sort, and of, cooler. Some sort of opportunity for them. So now, I'm even though sure Unidon won a fight, they're still not in checkpoint. And Shino did an excellent job of dodging and then finally getting the splat with the Trizuka before they go down. So the Just zap is still behind left, them. 71 to 30. And look in the back. Ishik trying to flank from behind. Way behind there. Waited that entire time. It may have waited a little bit too long. No. The other members respawned. We've got a raid from d -Dip. And it's telling me that it happened twice again. And I don't know why it does that. Welcome. It's not easy to know when the time is right. Majin just trying to cover that tower with those rapid blasts. Yeah, we're getting a second again. I, I, don't, I don't know why. Damn it, Shino was about to jump in, but no right, here luck we go. there as that member goes down. Two Over down, 30 seconds left, and now Kaiser seconds. can take full control They've of the They've got game. one chance. Yeah, they're gonna do exactly that was a good pick. That. Simply get the spots on the map the opponent is trying to come from here, and don't fall prey to any of these tricks. We know what the Reef Slider can do. There are three do. people on the Dapples they need to back out. Of, and we know what they're trying to do with their oh. Sit back and build They might have just accidentally gotten their teammates splatted with the whales. We they dragged the whales in the direction of their teammates. Down one by one. They're tacticoolered. They're in position of the tower. It's going to take a miracle at this point for Unidon. Yeah, Kaiser just trying to close happen. this out. Three seconds left. They have they don't control even get to the, the tower. tower. And that's going to wrap up game two as Kaiser gets the victory courtesy that initial Thank you so much for the subscription, UV Bay. Defense for the Appreciate majority you. Of that game, whereas Unidon had to keep pushing that tower, could never really get comfortable. And you have to credit the way that Kaiser was able to quickly snuff out any potential push that Unidon was doing there. And they really only <sighs> yeah. had one opportunity, too, which is an especially impressive Unidon, like, played that game. Oftentimes in tower control, they took a game off jackpot. Of you know, they, they played close matches with Greasy Goblins, but... Haymakers being traded back and forth with these Day two pushes, Kaiser. There was only one real I don't think day two Kaiser loses on there and because of a nice timely Trizuka and one player hitting the tower from the right angles there They yeah. managed to segment some of the different players from Unidon off take them down one by one and at that point they were really in control the entire time. So I could easily have seen Unidon, behind everybody in spite of the, the no cooler comp, final push taking like, like was organized. fifth they or even maybe fourth Oftentimes the in the event if they had gotten different seating. Right well, not that. I guess. Yeah, and I said earlier, flanking is a skill because if you so the losers the right of time, these matches the back of an will tie for fifth, a human to this game. and then the losers of the next match like will tie for third. Possible accuracy, but if you think is how that, that works. Might be flanking. Maybe you spend a little so, more time turfing behind. Maybe you. There's, but there's definitely a way I think that they they win one of their sets if they get certain seating. I don't think they nice beat either Jackpot or got, I, I think um, one Phantom player, Thief really led to another player in a full well. best of five or whatever. The way that you start to come out of spawn but if you're it puts I don't Unidon know. On you get the to the, the championships and like someone's got to lose Kaiser first. Kaiser has looked very organized. They have been focused, looking extremely sharp. This is the willingness to play cooler. To I, they're they're just kind of playing what they know. They're playing what they're comfy with. They're playing what they like. And like... 
and as you take you know, a look at this I would, combination here, Rain if I'm, you know, going to world championships, because of those I would want to try and, you know, grind up a, what a pretty optimal comp and do the best that I could, but you know, that's an interesting question because different people have different goals. I wouldn't the more hold it against them. Ones in competitive play. It's not necessarily that it's but uh, I think it will maybe demonstrate to Nintendo how powerful the cooler is. Uh, that, that would be the silver lining here. Comfortable with not only the Rainmaker path, oh, Keiko has enough to submit a comp for Silly Comp Sunday. Very, very much and you're just in time for that, too, because that's tomorrow. Time that leads to the big push, as we've seen it over and over or I guess again. later today? To stabilize if you can't get to one Something like that. Choke points. But Robo Ramen has such an open access mid area and ways to hit your opponent on some of these. Yeah, they do still have the one more game here, but they, they need to reverse sweep. Fundamental and they have not shown much, so the capability to win a team fight. To try to go in behind Shino's tentabrella They've to gotten like through, picks here and there. Enough angles to attack They've the gotten problem, like advantage very briefly. Why does it feel like that's Kuna not enough to win a game of Splatoon? Of those key splats. We oftentimes see the advantage, <laughs> as we said before. Oh my God, two, Margin. Four, three, even a couple of three ones for Kaiser. What does Unadon need to do to clean that up and try to get more of those picks where they can? Does this tournament allow screen? On I haven't seen it at all. I I'm gonna say it I'm might just be that record. nobody that's wants okay. to play Sometimes it. Sometimes we like to hear the same song over and over and over again. I really think they need tact cooler, Jordan. Okay. I think that. Even if they go run a Splatoon team at my jobs esports should have them watch finals even though the season's over for us. It's not going yeah, I mean the, with play versus you have to play turf there. war, so that's it's actually not not a bad way to learn that. Well yeah, there are some so teams you want to be copying more than others. Um, like Phantom that. Thief again, are some of the best turf war players on earth, so like they would be really good to watch. Looking at their comps and everything. Robo Ramen can Kaiser complete the three O sweep or will. Unadon force a game four. We'll see if they make any changes. Not really as far as what you're seeing from the loadout. A slight change for Kaiser. Though. All the commentators yeah, are saying very, Unadon needs nice cooler. Change, I would say here from, uh, Kaiser it's going been back to known for that some time that, that like in Zara's the anarchy mode especially, at the highest level, you just run a cooler. I gotta be honest, when this guy brings it's out this too much to lose to not have the cooler. Right now, a bit of Some a of them are running double cooler. Like that's that's a thing that has been run at this tournament. That's a thing that has been run in a so number of places coming through but here comes the tactical mm. coming out booyah bomb over committed a little bit a got, in the, got Kaiser, caught in the booyah there on with one of those rare advantages they take the rain one of those rare advantages yep, tank gonna need to get this out of the way quick i mean true I but you didn't have to do, do them like that by the killer whale 5.1 that was a golden oh man, they've got a lead of 74. This is one That's of totally going that to matter. Checkpoint can go very, very quickly. As we see one player here stuck. Not uh, the joke is that the, that lead doesn't matter. They didn't clear a checkpoint. So, kind of an awkward spot. Maybe was trying to wait for. Just somebody, in case there's anybody who, who is who's we'll in the audience, like, wait, that looked like a good push to me. You should see Kaiser work up to that. Nah, they need to get more than that for it to be worth. Yellow, can they run forward? It appears so. They are not afraid. Fly zero with that oh try man, and losing Prio there oh, means they've got a lot of momentum to make up. To get into the cup for the there first is a reef slider that's in position that might they've go in here. They should be able to get Zeres. Pinched in this little point here. Okay. Yeah, this is kind of what I was talking about earlier, where there are lots of ways to hit the opponent from this choke point if they don't get through. One is now swam behind. Well played. Them. Well played. They're fighting to together. Majin will continue to poke at them to give them some stability. But Jordan, here comes Zeres. This is what I was talking about. Got behind. Oh got no. Out there by Zeres ball, just didn't get seen at all. To find that shot. Oh, yeah, what a fake out. Typhon, but then Ishit goes Running down, into the ledge is actually a crazy idea. Real quickly. It's 3 2, though. Unadon has an opportunity. Here, they're going to be a little bit more careful here. Nine, they're not going to just go grab that. Either, either it was genius or it was a mistake that worked out. But I'm going to choose to believe it was genius. Open things up. Yep, you saw right there. Majin was doing a great job of making sure nobody could get that Rainmaker for free, and it gave the rest of the team to time to come back. It was a rare time. Hundred plus one. Oh yeah, it's fun. There, but they've now rallied the troops and Jordan. They basically stabilize. And goodness, nine that combination All right. of the rapid blaster plus the tactic cooler. This is this is the way you want to push in, really but you've got to get the pedestal painted for you. Nobody did that. And, and now it's so they're not going to score. Map, oh, and a wipeout. I mean, no tricks oh, at all man. against Kaiser. You saw right there. They tried to use the ink back, which it's does wild how consistent Kaiser are at dealing with that push. Like they have a great set play. They're able to get in there with the tent shield and do what they want to do. 
move. And then Kaiser down. just they don't die, and also splat everyone. Every set. time. <laughs> now it's Unadon that's feeling a little bit of pressure. Just over two minutes left. Typhon trying to move forward behind that tent to Breda. Julio needs to go in at some point. Are they going to lose to Rainmaker? Yeah, yeah, a little bit slow on that. Has that ink back ready to go? We'll see if they use it with that Trizuka coming out. Still being patient Okay, let's see if they can get in with the VAC here. When you have that special, yep, and always keep an eye on the top of the screen. Launch folks, shield, top back, walk forward. To be used when they have been and don't get together. flanked. Fly zero got a couple and shots don't off let there. people get on the rainmaker. Okay, that's so that's okay, not though, happening. Because you have Zeris on your side, who takes two players out once again. The two front runners there alongside the rainmaker, and once again, Jordan. Once those two goes down, once those ten yeah, are I, down, I haven't seen. Have they Bob used the vac to try and push so far? It might just be that they're worried about getting flanked. Backwards, poking away the Kaiser with spread out too much. While the teammates try to pepper in. It's done enough to really keep Unadon uncomfortable about how they want to encroach. Well, it, there's just no actual answer for it. Every time that that happens, Majin puts a little bit of damage on somebody, and it just breaks it open, and they don't have a lot of range on their specials to try to fight through that way. It's it's a zip caster, it's a reef slider, but it means that you have to really risk yourself as opposed to the Trizuka, which is at no risk at all. The Trizuka once again claims another victim. 4-3 on the map for Kaiser. Down for all of the defensive tools that Unadon left, has, point they're really not not keeping their rainmaker carrier the that safe. Two. Here's their best opportunity. It's a lot of like getting flanked, not knowing that there's push, someone I'm at a certain sure angle. Going to get it. They push people back, and they've got to get there the now. Did they turf it paint the side. Paint the no, side. Nobody's painting the side of the pedestal. Yellow, which means that they're going to be stuck. A slight misstep, Jordan. An opportunity was there. Now they've got to hustle. They get the first Oh, this is a mistake. Take the splat. Now they're at low ground if they go for this. They aren't going to be able to respond quickly. Oh, they got the pop. That shouldn't have happened. They have to hustle. Now it's just a matter for Kaiser to shut off any avenue. Don't let that Tentabrella march the pavement. Oh, no. And Zeris once again completely breaking open the position into a wipeout. Zeris dove right into the ink. So Zeris is a threat, time. right? Again, when the, the vac goes out, because it, you can melee range one shot thing, and still hit people through it. Yellow, but like, big, and let that's the when you forward. shoot Zeris, and that and didn't happen. First set goes to Kaiser in dominant 3-0 fashion. Grab the broom. It's like, how did Zeris get that close to them in the first really place? Is the question that they've got to answer. That's if they want to win that set. Out. Yes, on offense, they got some pushes. It but feels like, they didn't get a KO I don't know, they're getting sharked out games. or like one push, but then what they're able not to collecting information well enough. What about Majin, that rapid blast? Well, just peppering things like bees at a picnic. Kaiser looking good. Everybody's fun. <sighs> He's been doing it for years, uh, too. We'll, I mean, we'll see the, the real was. test will be Kaiser versus uh, Jackpot here. in the World Championship um, back in 2018. Because that's what that sets up now in the semifinals. At this level. And really, the entirety of Kaiser. That has one is for quite a while as well. There are neither of the matches that Jackpot's going to play today are going to be easy. <laughs> this event, let me tell you. Well, Assuming that they, you know, of do Jackpot win the first yesterday. one. That was one of the early surprises. And then you look at what Kaiser was able to Silly do. Silly comp submitted. Udon. All right. Udon never really I'll keep an eye out for that. Of those first three games, to be honest, they had an early push in splat zones, and then one push in tower control, but. That was dominant from Kaiser. We keep saying 3 0. You just swept What do you think of the commentary? So, I haven't been listening to it too much, but Jordan Kent is an excellent commentator. He's not primarily or even all that much of a Splatoon player. Um, he's probably played a, a couple hundred hours at most to understand the mechanics of the game and whatnot. And, like, that's an admirable amount of, of effort to put in, all things considered. Um, but he is, I believe, an NBA commentator. Um, and there's a lot that, like, Nine and some of the other commentators that he's worked with have said that they've picked up from him a lot of, of tips and value that we've gotten as a community from having him around. But he's also good for just being, like, a point of contact legitimizing the game to a casual Yes, audience course, so definitely not, not a bad pick at all nine is the one who's really super knowledgeable he's, he's probably here, but i would go out on a limb and say that i think nine is jackpot there were some moments there where they could have taken some is, do i think he's the single best splatoon commentator a great show out of them so taking a look at the last he's easily here, top five probably top three and it felt like 
they never ex overextended themselves. Like, and he's, he's very, very good at what he does. And he's like actually yeah, playing, yeah, he like, see a lot of plus exactly server scrims and whatnot. Like, he, he knows around, top players. Right he knows side, what they're doing. The he's been around for a long time. That he's putting his shots so, all of the it's, it's, a, it's a good commentary squad. Obviously, you know, as a competitive player, you always want to see different members of the community being brought up by being able to be a part of the big show. It was the initial push that nearly um, the and like nine gets basically every one of these spots. It'd be cool if like there were a couple more casters that they gave a try. Like there, there. I'd love to see like like Knox, Osti, Ninja get more of a chance. But I don't know. I know Ninja, for all I know, might be like blacklisted because of his participation in um, the Squid House. I think it was, um, which was like a protest tournament. Defender, get to one of those spots first, attack an opponent from but like, off that side. It's only a matter of time before the push falters. As far as like, point is correct. No um, really put who's going to teach you more about the game? Definitely listen to Nine. Um, you're going to get a lot more color commentary from Jordan just because he's not a competitive player of the game. Um, and he's picking things up quick. He like he understands the, the mechanics of the game. He knows the players decently well. He's been able to watch enough of this game that he's kind of picked up on some of the things, but um, he's, he's not as active a participant in the community. Huge investment of, of, of time. True, except, like, think about what qualifies you to be a commentator of, like, the NFL or the NBA. The people who they get to commentate those those matches are professional players who have just retired from playing professionally for years. That's a lot different than the amount of investment it takes to, you know, get into a game casually. Nine's a fun guy. Yeah, totally, totally. Very good vibes. Um, I played uh, Ultimate Frisbee with him at Riptide. Um, he's very athletic, <laughs> in case you couldn't tell by the size of his biceps. You know that the smart roast chicken. Oh my God, they're so cute. Talk about some mechanically strong players here. I mean, the Greasy Goblin's up here as well. Next, the uh, incredibly tall one that was up there. One of the finest mechanical players that you will see um. in the world. Then the smart roast chicken what do you think of Unidon's defense? The have one of the I think that they're the held back by the lack of range. For the um, oh, they really wow, yeah. heavily I mean, depended on be. their Tentabrella to get them in. And at a certain point, the Tentabrella shield is, is going to be shredded, and you need something that you can do when that happens. It can't just be like, the egg is cracked, and now everything falls apart into a, 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 a mess. That's going to give everyone salmonella. Um, the tent needs to be, have like support from like a flank angle or something. Um, and uh, they kind of just weren't able to get in for long enough to get anything done. Any anytime there was a reef slider or something, kind of just led to the reef slider getting splatted. So. Basically, the, the strategies that they were planning on using don't hold up at top level. Of where the current meta stands right now. Yeah, back in August, uh, update 5.0 came out, and that is meaningful for one particular reason, because that was the patch where the NZAP 85 got its special meter nerf. And for those of you at home, each of the weapons in Splatoon does have yeah, an associated the, number of points This game is from the, map the single most gender-diverse esport. Like, I'm pretty confident in that statement so, that, that came not just from me, but also from a, a researcher who was familiar with the subject. I... I've been that looking for months to try and find who exactly it was so that I can safety. cite their work more formally. From as well. um, oh, yeah. um, but I haven't been able to track them down. No. Even so, like... It's not so much you're trying to take somebody out with one shot. It, we j we just do gender diversity in this community better than literally anywhere else in esports. So like, so that's like that's a big Jordan reason that like I want this scene hey, to be bigger, so that other communities can look at what 
No, we've accomplished here and like follow our example in that regard. I think that is something that even the best of the best esports right now can learn from. Them really close, and in this game, it doesn't matter how you hit 100 damage. You cross that threshold, and an opponent is being sent back. Smart roast chickens running cooler. Look for the Um, I don't think they were. As they move up with their team to continue to find a way to. They have so. Oh, a game They've got an E-Leader one trick. So well. Lin, so who we're looking at here, is a 52 one, one trick. YDD so plays one shot weapons. Jared, I think we were watching play T Tech. They might have a zap. But they definitely don't play it every every game. game two as we get set um, here. Goblins We've are playing like a very goblins, meta composition. Uh, okay, never mind, they have a brush. What? Three in our second quarter final. Let's see Excuse if the me? Aussies can continue to make <laughs> history by marching forward further than any other All right. team in their nation's well, history in these world championships. I mean, they did say that Nex was a, a, a player of rat weapons, but I didn't realize you're not gonna see how rat else or anybody else they were going to go. Play, which is the how does the brush get in on this map? That's go. crazy. There's no flank route. Back home asking for it here. This is not Nothing a is a flank route. Everything very, is just a choke point. It. You can be an absolute medicine, a pest with that well, weapon. See. And right now, the Greasy Goblins have done exactly that. The Smart Throw Chickens so, did score first, but oftentimes... Next, got that behind that them somehow there. Gets the zone first, it's able to trade, which is worth, because that means... These they are just keep the zone for longer. Modes these teams have had weeks to prepare for it, and so the greasy goblins. So, to the early lead. It's at inkjet. Comes that I'm surprised to see inkjet. Oh, how about oh, wow. the shot by Remy? I'm surprised oh, to see inkjet. Absolutely, take it for a shot on Remy. To go for another one there is Leo. This is actually a really interesting dynamic. I wonder how could. Oh, okay. So you can use that ramp. Where one has that, that would be a good inkjet spot, I guess. E it's just it's so flat. You usually don't like flat maps on inkjet. Especially really like into a charger player. And make it difficult for them to attack. They've taken it back. Smart Rose and one of the big reasons you're not seeing a ton here. of They're inkjet right now is just the, the prevalence of chargers Greasy in the meta. Can't break through. Crab comes out. It's really difficult to just the exist. Lead as Smart Rose Chickens continue to hold down that zone. There's a lot of opportunity on the left there, but the All right. This lockout is pretty nasty. They they right need to use this cooler and like get something going here. So here's the whale. Very deliberate. Okay, nice. Just that. Great work there by Ardino, taking a couple out and pushing forward beyond the zone, not wasting any Very time. Very methodical. I, I respect it. Members should be a rough I would have been a lot less disciplined about it in that moment. And, and they clean everything up friend, really well played. The goblins turn. Three two advantage on the map. They have a chance, but no, the zone. It was a smart play though on Smart Rose Chickens to, to pull the fight to over to the other side. Penalty. Because that made it so that uh, nobody's left. watching if the zone are getting quite as far again, forward. You the range of that so goblins the should take lead here, uh, maybe. The they can't, yeah, notably, unless they can't keep the uh, paint up. The zone, so if you go behind that cross structure they do outpaint because of be sniper raider versus leader. Now they're kind of stuck if in an the spot, uh, front line from Smart Rush Chickens has to stay back, this is dangerous the for Chickens. Right they now, need Smart to get a, a push win position. right now. Yeah, oh, when the Inkjet got immediately the deleted, that, that might be game. They don't have any specials to move in with. There's a crab tank going to be out on zone. They drop down an ink wall this and now should be an it. Opportunity. Greasy Goblin, six seconds away. They just have to hold it a little bit longer. Three, two, one. Oh, that inkjet going down was devastating. And they come back from that was their way in. The that was their push back the in. I don't even know how it went down. There. In two moments looked like maybe you got hit by a bomb or something. I feel like it blew up too fast for it to be Latias shooting it out. Position. That inkjet from that Anaki splatter shot Nova, but Ardino Smart with roast that is squeezer, only squeezer <laughs> player in the tournament. That long fried one might say in the grease of the goblins. When Lin tried to make that dive down, out came the crab from Remy, who had been waiting on it that entire time, and I don't care how strong your 52 gal is, it's not going to take on a crab tank. This doesn't bode game. well for the You're American so Inkjetter. The the, these, that special needs to come out this is on the other side yeah, from Jackpot. It, but waiting until that moment, as oh, oh, I see what you mean. Out, the ability to get them out of but yeah, like the, these guys, whoever wins of the, these two, run into Phantom Thief next. And for them to win there would really be a big upset. Defensive turret. It's a powerhouse. You can use it to pressure opponents back from relative safety. Is Anarchy Nova worth running? Surprised to see it. Um, so Anarchy Nova has a niche in a meta where Inkjet is really, really strong. Unfortunately, this is not a meta where Inkjet is really, really strong. Um, 
Like, we'd be seeing a lot more, like, ball points if Inkjet was really good right now. Um, Inkjet, if you're trying to run Inkjet, I feel like the optimal play is to run ball point, but ball point's a very, like, specialized backline weapon, where not even every backline really likes running it. At top level, you learn, and you, you play whatever's that good, but... Yeah, that'll be a little up to a certain point like you can't necessarily the expect that someone's gonna run ball point and so if you really Kaiser need an ink jet say, it's right, probably one of the better ways to get it because you you paint for a lot of them the, the problem is that if you don't get value out of that ink jet you don't get value out of the weapon until it can get another ink jet because the the splatter shot nova is just an absolute dog water main weapon it is so bad but i think that the only thing it does what we saw from particularly well is paint. Smart roast chickens, because they do have a traditional backliner, so. will be willing and able to bring that snipe rider to the battle. They'll have themselves a tactical, though, which means they'll be able to be a little bit more... Nautilus is strong. Say, Pe people run Nautilus. We might see Jackpot run it. Trying to set up the perfect scenario for their comp. And you love the flex Both of the Nautilus kits are usable. Coming out that many people have talked about. We might um, see some it struggles a little bit without the the kit that doesn't have a bomb struggles a little bit against Squeezer. So right now the Splashdown one is is probably preferred in that matchup, but Splashdown is also less valuable than Rain. So it's a little bit of a struggle. Right now as like midline Slayer, you're tending to see either Squeezer or more of like an AOE weapon. So like Range Blaster, Buckets. The really popular weapons. You also might see Stamper. Listen, that goes the entire range of the map, and once you fire it, you can continue moving there. So as opponents are looking at, oh, where's that killer whale coming from? The player who fired it, especially if it's an ink brush, is half the map away at that point. <laughs> so it's just one more thing that you have to worry about. Jackpot favor to win the whole thing. Shots and that's and everything. It's just a prediction that I have heard. Some of us like a 52 gal. Phantom Thief sometimes that's their cup of tea, have outdone my expectations for them. I could one, see it going to Phantom Thief instead. Um, I think Jackpot is probably favored to win over Kaiser. Not to say that Kaiser couldn't make the upset and end up in finals themselves. Um, but I think that there is a very significant gap between Kaiser... Yeah, and all the other teams after that like teams, it's gonna be phantom thief like jackpot this, or kaiser this, these eight players have never that's run into each other in that i'm like very fashion, confident so about they're gonna have to do a little on the job training Game two between, between jackpot and phantom thief and it's gonna be exciting chickens, it's some tower control let's go um, move some cargo as we see both these if kaiser makes the upset i feel like else? phantom thief probably wins yeah, i'm removing my foot from my mouth here but because there's not a tactical <laughs> that's i don't know jackpot are very chickens. strong and like what we saw yesterday was probably not Instead, so they them at 100 percent they were they were messing around a little bit they were trying to mechanically outplay instead of playing discipline just to kind of problem is well, the Greasy Goblins Limit check. happy to fight you on any terms, and they have Tacticooler. Greasy Goblins with the tower initially getting to the first checkpoint, and you see a little bit of the crab providing some protection at this point. Crab moving forward, and just look how much they're pushing the Smart Roast Chickens back. Who's the Japanese team? Phantom Thief. Well, and that's what you can do with some of these ranged specials. When you follow a crab tank up with a Trizuka, the opponent simply has to move, and now Ardino holding that side as well. Too much range to be encroached oh on. And even though a couple players did get taken out by some great shooting there from Leo's E leader, they're still going to have to work. I was surprised that shot missed. The middle of the map, much less counter push. Greasy goblins are able to get past that first checkpoint. They're threatening the second. Yeah, one th that's a, a big push from goblins. Because now they get bit. into the Smart enemy court a lot quicker. Had the momentary advantage. They oh no, Ardino stays in there. On the map. Yeah, and Lin went straight Ardino has definitely been overstaying Ardino from time to time. One on one fight. Fight, which means that they have done a could be dangerous for them oh and they they catch one, next two so this gets there, checkpoint for nice sure big bubbler. The big bubbler does go away faster if ydd it's on the tower, getting that deep is tower, terrifying Jordan, it's gonna last the full okay time they just went up onto plat down. instead Ooh, of sharking something right there and now it's gonna be the smart roast chicken just a couple seconds away that, that could have been a lot more scary for ydd than i think it was approaching the second checkpoint they're gonna hop up happy with that lead but ydd is gonna super jump onto the tower try to keep it moving and they continue
continue to pick up more of these splats and win these one-on-ones, Nine. Oh, and keep an eye on that. Remy want to fight right there against a roller near a tower. That is not There needs to be a special push coming out of uh, Goblins at some point here. Instead, they reshuffled the deck There's a pick. Back in. Now let's so the threat snowball that. Gone is next dives forward there, but I've been very impressed, Jordan, with how the Smart Rose Chickens have played around the tower instead nice. of risking themselves the whole okay. time. Can't super jump out of there. Now it's 4-2 advantage. Greasy Goblins, that tower is returning to mid. They're going to go ahead and... I breathe a sigh of relief for the Goblins the every time Raimi uses Crab Tank. Something, Nine, because you know you've just it's like, okay, they've got a special out. They're doing things. For the smart roast chickens. How do you try and get Their the defense is really solid. Well, like, they know exactly where that. to look they took out to defend themselves. Somewhere on the other side. Ardino but pushed up to this side, which is what the their offense is a little bit slow, the and they also struggle areas, not to overstay. Like, Ardino didn't need to be that close. Ardino didn't need to go down goes down and at this moment it's still the lead nine could have just taken the pick and run back and had an advantage but they got traded back instead how things have gotten to a little bit of a that's something that this moment. is see, getting punished coming down that'll scatter by every team they've played for a moment and slowly but surely oh boy you see the smart roast chickens trying to gobble up a little bit more turf <laughs> gobble work that they've done here so far again holding some that's of these funny. positions again i'm gonna keep pointing it out because <laughs> oh, in the middle of the that's how i roll baby a huge wow. splat for the smart roast chickens but it's still the Greasy Goblins that are trying to control the tower. They've got four members right by their tower is going to take a quick little trip back to mid. And at this point, oh you man, just see this is either going to be a Matthias huge multi kill tower, for Goblins or they're about They've to get walked by a roller. A critical one on one coming out here. Killer whale support able to provide a yeah, okay. Advantage. Th th that, that didn't work. The back line are alive for the smart roast chickens. Uh, the chickens were really bunched up down there. Smart roast chickens get a dive at the tower now to try to They've really got to stop lead here. To, I, so they will lose the lead right I there. feel like that was a big Jordan, mistake because so Goblin's the strongest point is their defense. On this map mode. It's going to be harder to push in than it is to just defend him, there. Hesitant to pull the trigger. That allowed Greasy Goblins to take the lead. Under a minute left. Now it's up to the Ooh. Smart Rose Chickens. Can they peck back? No, Greasy Goblins continuing. This might to be push even bigger forward. lead. And now things can get scary because with 45 seconds on the map, you're starting to think about how many opportunities you're going to have to make okay, a push. Okay, yeah, they're going to. They, they should call Remy back to here. Fight because you and they don't do. Have awesome. A choice. Good you discipline there. there no right side, need to be getting picked in the last 40 seconds from the when you have the lead. The team, but they're Just play for your specials. In a hurry. Let the enemy Greasy team use all of their specials and get nothing out of them, which is exactly what happened there. That was two specials used. Here comes the big. And a net negative soon. in terms of the numbers advantage. Because they still have a lot of ground to cover. The bubble is now, gone now, and all goblins have to do is push back point, in. They're need to hold on they are to not pushing back in. Oh, Here we go. Okay, this is a little scary. Forward. They have to hop off the tower. There's the crab. There's the Zuka. Triple. But who's pushing Tri in with it? Coming they need out. to get Here boots the on the ground over there. Okay, okay, okay. Are they going to stop them? Yes, they do. The greasy goblins halt the smart. A little bit closer than they probably needed to let it get, but. Away. They knew what they were doing. Possibly taking the lead, but no, those goblins, a thief in the night, take game two. Yeah, whenever you sit back like that, build not YDE, -E, YDD. That the is their tag, Listen, YDD. It's the, right the uh, roller it's player the right in that game a, from uh, Smart Rose Chicken. Take them out from relative safety, but boy, does it always make the heart rate jump a little bit. Back. Once those specials go down, you realize hey, we gave up a lot of room Gotta for that strategy. That special. <laughs> Gotta get some splats. <laughs> With All that right. special, but what it means, the Greasy Goblins, one game away from advancing to the semifinals where so. they would take on Phantom Thief of the Heart. Yeah, Goblins, you know, definitely getting a good warm up here. Gotta figure something out here quickly. Much more competitive but, uh, this time around. However, they just gave I worry for their run. offense against Phantom yeah, Thief. and a, a lot of because Phantom Thief really, really demands the that you defending that map was they had their splat them quickly and then right move up quickly. You're coming out of their spawn. That meant like, that we could be seeing double cooler comps some of their from Phantom Thief. Up and make and sure that the greasy there have been some opportunities where the Greasy Goblins have been a little bit slow to move forward because all they've really got to do that, set up on that side. We were in terms of like time, aggroing the enemy team on the front line squeezer, is a squeezer and a splash, which are really not meant to be skirmishers. show you the mechanics and why it's so important. If you can get your hands on one of those weapons like the squeezer and do what it's They're kind of trying to let the squeezer do that, but the squeezer is getting isolated a lot instead of like having other people follow up for it. The entire three minutes, you're waiting for the final 30 seconds. 
There are always critical moments in every ranked mode match that if you can win that moment right there, you're going to most likely take the game. And it might be subtle in the situation where it isn't moving. They have the shirts with the, 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 the food squid? For your team oh, that's awesome. Tower and to I didn't notice forward. that. That could make the difference. That's what we saw <laughs> last time. Yeah, the I, that was right on cue. It was so beautiful. It was like the cameraman just knew what I was asking. As a game is engineered to create Wait, that mask had a little, a little character over on it. Over within the game and... So glad that we got to spectate that one, and Ardino has to be feeling good. So that sets up game three. Rainmaker at Robo Ramen. You see a couple of smiles. Ardino, <laughs> it's so funny looking at all of their pictures because all the other greasy goblins have these big happy smiles. They're, they're like, oh, that, that's, that's awesome. And then Ardino is just staring into your soul. Just like Chadley gaze. In that out the screen roast chickens x-ray vision on you said before but i think you pointed it out looking for a cooler looking for something to give them a little bit more support in those situations well, just to give them a little room for error yes. here a little margin about error. what makes a weapon a good skirmisher a yeah uh, everybody does because it means a lot of different things um, it makes sense in FLC's head, but then when he, he tries to explain it to other people, it tends not to leave the same impression in their heads as it does in his, and he has to keep correcting people about it. But in people's defense, in his view, Tetradules and Dynamo are both skirmishers. What does that mean? Well... There are different kinds of skirmishers, you see. Um, so that's that's where the, the confusion tends to come from. But basically the idea of skirmisher is the enemy team has to look at you, and you can avoid dying while they are looking at you. So a tetradouli accomplishes that by being difficult to hit because it can dodge roll and move away. Um, and it has decent range so that it doesn't have to hard commit to yep. get in on someone. Has Dynamo uses its ability to hit up over ledges and from a decent it. amount of range and to have a really reliable one shot like so that right you have to kind of play around Listen, what it's currently looking at. Name, it's gonna be -okay from a main Same deal with like a Rapid Blaster. Rapid Blaster is a really good example of how that works. It's not a very fast weapon, but you can't get close to it because it's just in the way all the time. Trying to create a little bit of room for Whereas them. a Slayer weapon is something that's designed to splat you very quickly. And like, you'll notice that like Tetras in Dynamo the don't yeah, do that, very nicely done nor, there nor does Rapid Blaster. Spot. Like, first they're not about map, you just really getting you splatted get quickly, the they're about the making it so their teammates can splat you. Holy crap! Hold on, almost oh, oh. three that time! Oh my goodness! The I've never seen such an aggressive Zipcaster pay off that hard. That was wild. Can they take the first checkpoint? The answer and they get is the dunk. Yes. And of course they move to just And that's what happens if you bunch up against something AoE. But right here they could burst the rainmaker shield. But this is going to be a hard to beat. Honestly, probably more resources than goblins so needed to use. Like that was a good bait. Coming out from the smart roast chickens, but excellent job of the greasy goblins. The chickens can't really get forward defense. here, yeah, so rainmaker resets. There. Both of these teams knowing that they can give up that first checkpoint that that's not going to be the winning push there. Don't let the opponent get too far from that for free. Don't overextend. Jared went down there. I don't know if it was to the Trizuka or something else that could have been a moment, but the other members have done a decent job of stabilizing. There's all sorts of pandemonium in the middle of the map now at this point. And we've yeah. got a one point differential in this game. Rainmaker this isn't really a huge deal if like one side gets a small lead, but it's a big deal if one of them gets a big lead. Oh, Remy goes down. That range blaster doing some work up close. It gets another one. Oh my God, YDD! That's a nearly a wipeout. Hold on, that fourth one is right there. Give YDD the quad. Give YDD the quad. The world championships here for YDD. No. Overcommits into Ardino. Ardino now goes. And Ardino gets two. Oh my God. Actually, yeah, took two down there and is now going after the third. At this point, you kind of just cheese for lead. There's nothing else you're gonna get from this. Got caught on the wrong side of the We're retreating way too far. You gotta drop it down here. Getting almost a full. Wipe Jordan. Now they're they the ones retreating, and that's incredible for how fast the greasy goblins okay. are able to back into the thick of Great rainmaker movement to get away from Raimi there. I'm surprised they're alive still. Moment, and right now that puts Leo in a very difficult situation. He's trying to back up a little bit. That should be lead right there. Three, three, and 
can the smart roast chicken oh, maybe not. Like nine, just do what you can to take the lead at this point. Well, at this point, that Rainmaker's only got to be only eight seconds left. Seven seconds left. That's going to explode. There we go. They will take the lead yeah. and find with it 56 points. They to see just, how quickly those just had the crab in the way, so they the couldn't board. go for it yet. Oh, if YDD gets a pick there, that's dangerous as heck. But now they just kind of have to back up. Still not a big push on this map. Yeah, nine is right here. This is a completely insubstantial push to beat. Now they can play defense. You could even drop this right and get to 55. As you said. But that changes things, and now which is like almost never a factor on this map. To on the right side territory. push kind of sucks Tactical once you get up to the point where you have to jump up there on the right. Maker still in the middle. Now they're going to just skirmish over and down go two members of the greasy. Oh my God! This is not That's a time that you need to be dropping team. players, the greasy the player goblins. Oh so no! Accurate with this range blaster and Jared here Some on Some massive individual plays coming out of the stamper and range blaster here. Over and over again. Just one minute left. Are they going to grab this Rainmaker, or are they simply going to sit back here? I'm not even sure they know the answer to that. More triple ink strikes coming down. All four members on the map for both teams, but two specials ready to go oh for man. the Smart Roast Chickens. Remy gets splatted again, and now it's 3-2. This is huge for the Smart Roast Chickens. They can try to close this out. Oh, a big fight right here. Artino versus Jared there. Oh, down goes Artino. an Ardino, overstay the again. Nobody the was there splat. to support that fight. Right work and gets another and one there. Staggers. Next staggers. Next a little bit. Now Remy gets hit once again there as YDD falls down again. This range blaster so powerful on this map. It's going to be a couple desperate specials to try to open the game. They Hold get two. Oh, two no. That, that was Remy's fault. Where the Ramey ran into that bomb and detonated the it before it would have exploded the normally. On the crab. How about that? Six seconds left. Smart roast oh, chickens man. might hang on That's and a force a game four. It is up for grabs at this point, and that'll do it. The smart roast chickens come back and stay alive. They we got ourselves a set. On the plate for one more game, and for the greasy goblins, they had it for a moment, but they looked uncomfortable, and maybe the change in the loadout here, nine, was the recipe that the Smart Roast Chickens were looking for. I mean, it certainly looked pretty strong but to me. Uh, and that map favored what I think might be their best comp as a whole, which is moving Jared over to the Stamper and YDD onto the Range Blaster. But I would agree with that. Oh, my goodness. Like, when the Stamper plus Range Blaster fight, combo was really good. Could see what the they were able to chip damage with each other, of, and they were right kind there. of just able to so many fights that they walk around as a gank squad. Positions, and, and that map lets them rotate around better than they will be able to on more hallway maps. Like, I think Goblins win on the hallway maps where they can done. lock it down defensively turns, and like watch every angle immediate you're done now i'm going after your teammates here the range blaster was the mvp for sure as far as your weapons in that last game and now this is an opportunity if you're the smart roast chickens if it ain't broke maybe you don't try to fix it as we get set for clam blitz on crazy how low scoring that game was so many different strategies as far as trying to fill that basket up what are we seeing from like that map teams as far as never to is won by a push to 56. Man, Sturgeon Shipyard is such an interesting map to play Clam Blitz on. Just got here. What's up? What How's it going, Pink Envy? Um, this is the quarterfinal round. Very slow. Greasy Goblins from Australia, New Zealand versus Smart Roast Chickens of Taiwan. The much more We'll say the butcher's approach. It is 2 1 in favor of the goblins, and we're going into clam blitz now. Um, the deciding game would be in turf war if Taiwan were to win. Being a map from Splatoon 2 has a very, very wide base area. You see that in a lot of those maps, which means you'll oftentimes see a couple players sit right underneath the basket and try to pick off defenders as they're coming out here. So this will be interesting and also might be where we see a special. Clams slowly becoming my new favorite mode. Good, good, yes. Jordan, one of the most we like this. Strategies right now. Clams is a really good game mode. It's, it's blemished right now by the specter of crack and cheese, but... Goal. They can't do anything about it. I think even with Crack and Cheese, it's, it's better than people think it is. You are a distinguished gentleman, my friend. I the problem with Clam Blitz is that it doesn't get tutorialized well in earlier levels. So what happens is all these people go into the match without actually knowing the rules of the game mode. They just haven't read anything about it. They don't know how it works. They're figuring it out on the fly. And for, like, B rank and C rank, it's just like that, where people are making absolutely baffling plays because they don't know what's going on. It's a lot easier to understand something like Rainmaker or Tower Control or Splat Zones. They're very simple objectives, and they've also been... There's a precedent for them in other 
other video see, games. But Clam Blitz is only in Splatoon. See goblins there. They popped that Rainmaker with what, like 70 seconds left in the game? Then they never opted to pick it up or even come close to touching nope. it. They just went and fought over and yeah, over and a, over a, again. A significant That's crack and cheese issue in mind, this tournament would definitely get the eyes of the devs. And they were still down by one, had a little mini push. And so here we go. Game four. It's we'll see what they run. For the greasy goblins. They win here. They move on to uh, there's Miles, no cracking on that comp. They might do something similar with Brush, but there's a cooler. What do you see from our loadout? They've well, got a cooler. Exactly what we wanted to see from the Smart Roast Chickens, which is, hey, bring that comp back out again. I don't care if it fits the map or the mode. You played. Did that they have well, the cooler last the game? Did I miss that Lin wasn't can. playing 52? On the other side, the Brush going to be back out from next. Another weapon that's really good at getting around in Clam Blitz. So right now, both teams are trying to fight for middle, gather up those clams. You want to be a little bit more mindful before you build that first. Okay, they had one last game. Four three advantage. Well, wow. smart roast awesome. chickens. Bobbing they have an offense now. Range blasters, we said before. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh my God! The teamwork there, Lynn is cracked. Around the corner and got them. They retreat. Why did he dies yeah, there if Lynn does not paint their there, feet? Retreating without actually having to go back too far. You can so see good. They have a presence in the middle. So if that's as far back as you have to retreat, you're usually in a pretty good spot. They're going to continue to. These guys are solid mechanically. Like once they picked a comp that's significantly better. Around it's so wide open. Just in terms of like the kits they've chosen. They're doing. Well, dive in with this. Double wave break like it feels like the, the, a lot of learning has happened moment, just over the course of the last the three sets the they've had to play. Chickens. However, they're down a member for the greasy goblins. You're just thinking about defense. Do you more so wait for the smart roast chickens to make the first move here? Well, I think you. Why did he going down? Not, right? Is potentially a problem. As you noted, Jordan, they have Jared is ballsy for trying to hold ground there. I feel Once like he again, dies. There's not a long range yeah. special that they have there, and when the opponent that has the zip casters who's carrying that was an overstay. Player, there's almost no threat for you. Oh my God, Nex is crazy. Splat on Jared. Okay. Fresh moves forward to create a path. It and terrified right now, me. the greasy goblins just need to build just a power clam. Just six clams in their repertoire at the moment. Still tied at 100 apiece, but we're waiting for that first big push. Nearly three and a half There's a Zuka here one. that Ardino so wants far, to use. A matter of applying a little bit of pressure. And now we see a power clam oh boy. finally in the hands of the greasy That's goblins. That's a great flank from Lin, yeah, assuming they get away alive. Oh, uh, they don't. Because that forces the window. crab to there look in the wrong is. direction. YDD and if it doesn't get a pick, a then that's a late, lot of wasted time. But they ended up getting Jordan caught in the open end. Up and force the members of the smart okay, so now they need, away. need to keep the basket open. That's really how you win in Clam Blitz. It's not about throwing all the clams in right away. It's about keeping the basket open for a 0 to 100. The push ends when you can't keep keep the clams coming in now they're just trying to scramble for anything they can find as some of those clams are taking their time to respawn all right. it feels like the smart they don't have the four the positioning oh what a bomb level. next Will is a god push but nine that's a haymaker out the gate well and it's not over yet oh that's no a that's a quad i think one person ended up falling on a bomb there and two went down as a result of that that's half your fighting force and we're going to see another opening as a result barrier bus open once again so. three clams on the uh, next the doesn't get anything in. all right they don't have any more follow-up on this almost nearly uh, out and that'll just careful, cut down to that penalty a little bit now still at nice 22, nice okay but you see the lead with just over two minutes left and that's going to force the hand of the smart roast chickens they've got to be aggressive and no luck there Good play. as they go down yep this is again all a these trades definitely go in the favor of the this goblins at this point where, because it's so like wide, the team that likes the status quo is the, the one that the likes the trade and, grab more clams once you and right now goblins spot. have mid control and they have a massive away, lead Jordan, there's only so if they just keep it that way for the smart roast chickens they heard right now nearly at spawn just trying to find an opportunity oh here comes next though next using the great crazy smart there and that'll put smart roast chickens Back on their heels, that killer whale. They are cleaning up right now. This is Next a clinic on how to play right brush on this map. Like anyone who plays is, brush, I won't know here, but uh -oh. look so at how Nex is getting in on them here. Quad here at the World Championship. Nex still not done. Is sharking around at the bottom of the screen, hidden in that yellow ink as Latias provides a little bit of a path forward. But it is okay. All so easy they've given two They're pity clams over. The execution and Nex is going back in for more. Uh, doesn't Greasy quite get the shots on, but all the meat off the bone. A double splat here from nice. the crab, and now oh, their man, power that's all three and power clams down too. For the knockout, just a few more. They're going to find one clam. their way. Where's just the one, one clam? clam away from the semifinals. Can the Greasy Goblins do it? They do, and they make history for Australia, New Zealand, and advance to the semifinals. 3-1 over the Smart Roast Chicken. Well played, well played. Oh, and you can see how quickly games of Splatoon can get away from you, Jordan. They were so evenly locked there at the start. 
you and I kind of had our heads. It was kind of wild our that around our uh, around our headphones they, there for a little bit. We're able to hold say, okay, mid for that two minutes long. into the like, game. When are we gonna have an opening? Watch then, that that map back sometime and think about like and when was the last time multiple times that Smart Rose Chickens were actually able to set foot in mid at all. They never really got past their spinner. You can wait for the opponent to come out of for such a long time. The hold from Ardino and Remy was really strong. And then next just find a, found a way to like bust everything open with some huge multi splat. They attacked and in that final opportunity where it felt like you were gonna see a push from the smart roast chickens, you saw that quad ink splat that we saw. No crack and clams so far. That was the first clams match we saw. And it was Kurt that because next, one of Kaiser 3 0'd Unadon on the other side of the bracket, so they never actually made it that far. Top level here, and you got to see it here today. Uh, a total treat. Here, taking a look at the first game, a Kraken though, would have done Smart Rose Chickens right there, really well that in that, that match because they had three three power clams squeezer, at one point. But this was the moment where you saw, okay, this would be that's just 60 points right there that they get for pressing the big squid button. Because of a comp, or maybe because they're not quite as familiar. With they still needed the a little more than that to get lead, but not much. Chickens tries to force an issue at a certain point, and the Greasy Goblins just had the answer. And it felt like Smart Roast Chickens needed to pivot just two games earlier to that comp that they had, because they looked like a completely different team at that point. And they finally had a tactic cooler and went with the oh range God. blaster. But it was in tower control as well that we saw. I want to say they're not going to nerf really Ink Rush. A fine job of getting their defense back onto the field for the most part. An opportunity I, there I feel the like Chicken they know that that doesn't need to happen. Nine, about getting all four members in place, applying that long range. I've been proven really wrong in, in my yeah, faith in Nintendo before. Really are what dominates Splatoon right now outside of Tacticooler, and it's again because the Crab Tank and because the Trizuka can put total more than two hours the of the opponent it hasn't there. been more than two hours it's been like one hour because if they stay still they're simply going we've to seen two sets out. in that time while the user of that special is from behind cover they're either in the crab tank which has hp of its own but it's safety so we need to make cracking good for clam blitz you can super jump power clams safety. to it it just and there's actually no way to stop that power clam from landing and being able to throw the clam. Normally, like, there, there's not much of a way to stop a, a power clam super jump, but you can at least drop a bomb on it, and that will splat the user. If you time it perfectly, you can actually splat them before they can throw it, but that's very hard to do, not super reliable. With some bombs, it's not even really possible to do on reaction. You kind of just have to guess. But the Kraken eats bombs by just, you know, jumping on them. So there's literally no way to stop it at that point. And so if you need, if all you need is like 60 points or less to be able to take lead, you pop a tactic cooler and everyone gets it. The Kraken swims under the basket. You super jump three power clams into it, score 60 points. Everyone respawns with tactic cooler fast enough to get on defense and hold the enemy team at mid. And and the there's champion. not a lot of counterplay to that. You have to either That's splat the player the who has the Kraken before they use it, or splat someone who's carrying the power clam so that they can't the jump the when the Kraken goes out. Those are basically your only options, and there are ways of playing defensively to really mitigate the risk of any of that happening. And then game four, if necessary, I guess maybe you could like put a booyah bomb on the landing if you see it coming well enough. Maybe that works. Or like tri strikes. I've never seen anyone actually manage to pull that off. Yeah, very interesting. The order that these modes come out really can change the dynamic of a set here. And with Rainmaker and Tower Right, Cooler is why that play works. These are both because if you pull that play off, but then you have normal respawn times, now the enemy team is in your base and has all of their specials and have, like, 16 clams already. So they're, you're, you're not hurt as much for having that happen to you because you can counter-push immediately. To get that um, third game. 
but with cooler they just kind of go back to neutral after they pull that off you steal one of these two games from kaiser you can say okay yeah game five is turf war i I mentioned this earlier honestly this is the way that turf war has the least impact on this tournament is for it to be the last game maybe risk your decisions it's hard that that match is only important if it's the deciding game if if it goes like to all five games in the best of fives or all seven games in the best of sevens try to overextend themselves like that's not yeah, the most likely outcome experienced players so all of them having to get it might be better this way in person on stage championship like this one so you i did like it when um I, I mentioned this also the eu championship like that, what they did was they had like a best of five or something but game yeah, one really are, was actually a best of three so of turf jackpot. wars so it's like turf war gets more screen time but it only ends up mattering for one game i thought that was a pretty good way to do it too overcome and take down some of the big dogs in North America like, they limits some of the volatility some of that turf war can have as of recent by making it something you played at least twice to get here from North America back in August and September yeah you really don't need to look any further than when Tacticooler became big that jackpot really took their main advantage and I don't mean to say that to do yeah. anything barnacle to wouldn't be one of my favorite maps in Splatoon 2 their but own hard it's definitely like upper final third but once in Splatoon 3. Out. It gave Jackpot it's not bad. I'm down to play Splatoon it. Against anybody. They were Tower control's kind of whack, but that tried to fight. the others they are fine. Not looked back since that game. As we get set for the semifinal, let's meet our first team. Jackpot, okay. North American this has pretty significant... And that brings oh, out all four mer- oh, got a little Judd there. Makes an appearance in little nice. Judd as well, too. Um, this has and pretty you know significant well implications for the rest of the tournament. Because um, yeah, Kaiser is not an easy opponent Americans for Jackpot, so especially long, since this is their familiar, first match of the day. Kaiser and they apparently the haven't been getting much of a warm-up b- backstage. Europe, Germany in particular here, they want to do their region proud. Majin coming out as always with the gun showing their flexing. <laughs> they believe that they can beat anybody at this event and they expect to do just that. If you yeah. were to look at any type of rivalry, this is as close as you can. Either of these two North teams could America win the entire tournament, Europe, Jackpot or Kaiser, they could, could just ground out against Phantom Thief. When North we'll America have to see. was coming off that championship in 2017, and in the semifinals, it was Europe, Majin, part of that team that upset North America in the States. Correct. It's a, it, this is a single limb tournament. So this is the two and three seed. And for Jackpot. How quickly can you get the blood and then Phantom Thief is the one seed. Um, Greasy Goblins, yeah, in theory, an could end up in finals, in the but they would have to beat Phantom Thief, and that's not something that I expect will happen. Warm all as they have. They were huddled up there giving we will see. As much of a pep talk as you can possibly imagine, but for Jackpot, they have to consider that this is simply just another set for them. These players have been on this stage so often. They're so comfortable with it here. They are locked in and focused there. Simple call outs right seven, now. 777 seven, win. That's what they're telling themselves right now. And on the other side, it's much the same. I don't know. I'm cool with the Germans, too. I like Majin. Maker at Barnacle and Dime. This is a map and mode you fancied yourself with before. And what's going to happen here? Uh, this is actually somewhat <laughs> similar to what we saw on Robo Ramen, Jordan, where you'll have that. He's always posing for the camera. Fall kind of quickly there. It's a nice wide it's open. It's so goofy. Up I like map. it. But then you get to those choke points that are a little bit further up. And. That's, I think, where you'll see a defense either be totally set up or lost. If the attacker gets there even a couple seconds before the defenders are ready, you might see one push totally go the distance. The American Ink Jetter. It can be that volatile. <laughs> Looking at the loadouts for both these teams, as far as Jack. She's Bob, not shaking that name forever so now. It's become a meme. It's too strong. It's beyond us all. And now they've had to pivot a little bit, but this is a team that'll rely on that. Sniper. It's it's hit the singularity. Yeah, it's worth noting that we before, cannot control it. <laughs> before Taq became known as the American Jetpacker with <laughs> that ball points flatling, she was one of the finest chargers in the game period and even in the years of splatoon 2 where everybody was switching off the chargers she refused to so going back over to snipe rider has not been a challenge for her whatsoever i will say it did take jackpot a little bit of time to figure out how that worked instead of having jared be their provider but it's given jared the chance to move back over to some other support shooters and he's really become the connective tissue of these attacks and you often okay so 
for Jackpot. This is a team that you said before. We're probably just, just going to see similar from Kaiser. I I am very curious what Jackpot's going to run. It's going to be Isik on Zap. It's been running that all tournament. It's going to be Majin on one of the Rapid Decos, either the Rapid Deco or the Rapid Pro Deco. We're going to have Zeres probably on Stamper. They've run a couple of other things, depending on what the team needed. And then Fly Zero is probably going to fill onto some Inkjet, or not Inkjet, a Trizuka weapon. Kaiser, very but then trying to score what many people would say is we're gonna see Q the to Q on like pencil God, or charger upset. one That's of the, the two You've got three games madness is a bucket player we've been seeing and we start off try new bow and barnacle and dive who's gonna be the first team to pick up a victory and march they got? much closer to the Shot, finals zap. here we go semi-finals wow they're the like mimicking north america versus europe the other Let's side's cock oh my goodness take a look at these almost comps. identical comps are it's all over the place just so jared does go back over to the end zap 85 the only zap difference Q is the kraken Sniperator. instead she's playing the same rapid blaster pro deco it's just 96 versus shot and we is the only difference the in the comps six cal deco coming oh. out here on the side of Kaiser. That's a lot of syllables that I just said, but it means a Kraken Royale may make an appearance finally. Hey, listen, Sheldon's got a lot of options. Might as well explore some of them. So oh, Madness on is on a scary flank here. They get Fly Zero. Oh, good trade from Fly Zero. Fly Zero needed that. But right now, they're really jockeying for They probably can't get check right now, but good trade. Trading the Rainmaker is generally worth it because now look at how many resources they have to pop just to get forward. The Kraken is actually really annoying. Going here because it can move forward there that's a really powerful a like zone in, for it to shut down a beautiful follow-up from Majin to trade yourself. that back this has been a scrambly sort of position and just for 25 points off the board that was a lot of work there for jackpot now Kaiser's yeah th this is sort of the pace of top level play forward. these days they have a four -two they, these guys are great job there by Zara these guys are pretty evenly matched there who was just coming out of spawn which means they will oh leafy's going in so hard what the heck to be used at that point this is a real opportunity for Kaiser now if they get Zara's back in they here have on cooler. the attack as you can see he is spamming trying to jump back in as quickly as he can there's a real opportunity <laughs> for them to get this first checkpoint Jordan Zara's trying to move forward just Cooler's already out for jackpot they're, they're gonna want to fight soon so they don't lose that and now you've got Majin they end up trading again, a double splat and that's Zuka. gonna open up the door for Kaiser like two, opens it up and gets one immediately by a great trizuka shot there they're gonna the grab Kraken it once has come in so clutch here to try to take it but again Jordan buying just that little bit of it shuts that area down that so well there's just like so little room on barnacle horizontally and leafy coming in it gets to attack everything and then it has like a little bit of elevation change shelter itself now you've got some hopes of it if you're jackpot you're pushing Kaiser back God, further how do you get through this? On the how do you get through this choke point? That checkpoint, trying to They're like all popping there. all of their specials. Certainly keep things and open, nobody's but able to move that far as they were forward. Up in the air. And look at that. They did not get through that checkpoint. Oh and with the wipeout, God. Jordan, this is huge there. Who's going to grab it? Goodness. Did they have Cooler? It here, which means they, won't be able to they didn't have cooler. cooler. here, But with that timing, they're going to take this immediately. And they will have the special advantage on this attack. Jackpot needs to be Oh, Jared, don't go down here. That was a huge wipeout. And now the momentum is all in the cooler. Kaiser. Kaiser just okay, if they can get Majin back, quickly, the yeah, on that checkpoint trade wasn't great, Kaiser. but they did at least now, keep their Kaiser cooler player up, and the cooler is going to go out sure all the before anything else happens. That might be well, a little again, bit aggressive for cooler position. Never mind, they're all up there. Did not get through the checkpoint on their push. That means that even I want Leafy there, to go for something other than a one-for-one trade here. Kaiser because they got there first. Majin picking up the splat on. Leafy. Oh, now Madness. 4-2 on the map. 4-3. Madness Maybe wins has these? A moment. Oh, a it's double a splat. The killer whale. It's That's just gonna Majin. Help tag team. And here's a chance for Jack. They don't really have a way to dive in and get that. preserve the game for them there, too. If that had gone so ugly, it might be, again, another person in the middle. And something I finally get to talk about now is Fly Zero on this Kraken Royale. Jordan, at the any Kraken point, has been this special kind of low-key MVP. After the Rainmaker Carrier, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. Cleaning up with that Kraken Royale. Just over 90 seconds left. Kaiser hanging on. I want to consider this for my team lead. now. Running Kraken here. A bit. Find that position. That's Slash just looks too good. Up. They get Jared. Majin goes down, though. That's their backliner. And here's 
jackpot that pulls out the killer whale five they're positioning four, really well with it and like it's not easy to make that work but it's definitely effective jackpot. and now jackpot finally getting an attack okay. started in the way that they are so good at doing there they pushed forward really quickly but now uh, zeris is going kind of going the in maker there needs to not go Does down Leafy get this? because again zeris is the best candidate she to trades to like this we need better than a trade at this point this we need this checkpoint after dot q takes the jumper who came back in and gets q as well and the oh, rainmaker triple splat takes down the rainmaker so hey remember how Left. yesterday and also today i was like hey if oh you, and look uh, out this is a very dangerous if you're a jump, stamper player taken out, but what's going to come after no the cooler that too the this is huge forward there. they're going to get How a lot of points, points off this get down to 43 jordan to 28 yeah. the threat is not yet gone majin is still oh, there man. Zeris is still there jackpot needs a snowball right now there. they can still get more so points. remember when i was like hey if you're a stamper player watch Zeris. they lose a member though four three possibly one last chance okay three down jackpot push but they've got to go through a checkpoint oh Oh, no cooler. Huge Jared picked up, so they won't on. have a cooler. For, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter at this point. Get to it, that at this point, if they go down, they're probably down for the rest of the game. Who gets near it? Ten seconds left. It wouldn't surprise me if Kaiser oh, simply man. gives up this checkpoint Unless and tries to play it. Unless it is possible point, if they dunk right here, there, they can get the cooler out, out before the going back second part of the push. Rainmaker carrier. That is where the fight is going oh, my on. God. Will the Rainmaker get away? It Ooh, does. It does. Just a chance. Yes. Kraken Royale goes and down. And Levy's keeping They're the back. Get they get the check. Checkpoint. Opportunity here. Go, 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 go. Get up, get up, get up. Now get that cooler out. Two specials ready for This is doable. This is critical now. They've got time. Overtime jackpot. Can't afford any mistake. Here's the zip. They've got the troops all lined up. Zeris zip casting, trying to get in, bobbing and weaving, they avoiding did get the killer whale. Five point oh, one, not enough. Zeris. Kaiser picks up. Look at Zeris popping off. One hundred percent earned. I hear them from here through my headset. Oh my goodness gracious! They came in here expecting to win this set, and you can see Zeris right there. Absolutely the MVP. Fly Zero on the side was not able to take out that Rainmaker carrier. Ran out just at yeah, the end. Romeo, they had one other European special Splatoon? that could die from anywhere on the map, and that was Zara's Zipcaster. Uh, I tried to the passion tried to get him on camera is there. Palpable at this point. How about Kaiser dropping the hammer in game one, and they were dominating that entire match. You had an opportunity <sighs> there at the end. The Kraken Royale couldn't snuff out the so, Rainmaker. They get yesterday. The first checkpoint. When Jackpot was playing against, like, I think Unidon, Jackpot were kind of just diving the enemy spawn a lot and sometimes getting punished for that and just kind of, like, trying to get out in there and, like, mechanically outplay. And they said on Twitter, oh, no, we were just limit testing. That was just, you know, we're trying to play mechanically. We're going to play smart tomorrow. Yeah, Kaiser might give them up. There were definitely some like moments this. there where Zerez was backing up had the checkpoint. You could and keeping himself safe. That they were playing with. That first and the jackpot frontliners weren't necessarily. Went down. That's fine. Um, We've got one more I don't blame Jared because NZAP. Of the, game. We'll also the hard thing about NZAP is that you're so important as the cooler user, Kaiser, but also the way that your weapon from. fights is by diving, is, is by being a, a short range shooter. And you have to balance those two things to make sure that like you don't compromise on cooler output while also being able to fight and help your team. So that's that's a hard battle to fight. But like. It felt like it caught jackpot Leafy is diving in really on. fast, not look as and not look as there's not as always did. enough value Kaiser's coming out of that. Like, Leafy's not getting the, the 1v1 outplays that she needs to make that work. So she needs the rest the of the team collapsing in, and sometimes right she doesn't have that support. To build a tremendous advantage. That's oh, what I'm worried about. Incredible if Kaiser is able to build a 2-0 here, but something to note here is that Tower control has traditionally been the strongest mode for Jackpot. Now, they've been good on Rainmaker 2, but they're... I mean, Tower Control is also the preferred mode for so you can feel Kaiser, because Kaiser has a and Blaster also, one trick. In that last one, Dot Q switched off of that Snipe Rider and went over to another weapon here. So, Jackpot Hill still has... Their like, they, they actually got asked the other day, like, which with mode they, they like the best. Everybody else I think it was like an interview or something. Weapon. And they so said, well, yeah, I play Blaster, so it's going to be Tower Control. They can bring out right now. What I'm a little more concerned about, and I'm glad you touched on it, Jordan, is even outside of the Rainmaker mechanics with that, they were losing the fights there. Yes. I'm not used to seeing Jackpot fall behind mechanically, and you hope that that's just one game, it's too small of a sample size, and that they still have the Jackpot we're used to seeing. There were a lot of situations that 
Leafy was going down in one on ones, and typically those are battles that we see Leafy winning. And every time see, like Jordan Kent screen, picks up on some things, you know. Riser, they were taking down Leafy. They were taking down Jared. He's not wrong. Like he, this is a good observation jackpot. that hopefully Duvall Jackpot's Duvall also making. Heiser and what they're able to do in those situations now for them, managing the emotion. You're but, excited. That's great. You still yeah. Have to First game, and then also, man, I should just let Jordan Kent speak. So tower control. He knows what he's talking about. Because like, we'll see if the this is game one. This is the first time that they have played on stage all day. Nine. So your eyes are as wide as a few dinner dishes. What do you if you're see Kaiser, well, you've got to not let the adrenaline get too is ingrained so that your hands are shaking. Shot, or splatter scope, and if you're rather, Jackpot, you got to just shake that off and go, all right, look, ferocious with that was one game one. Best players of it that you will We've see. got this so many more chances to make this happen. Has the triple ink strike as its special weapon, which can absolutely clear oh, the tower. Oh, oh, oh. An oh. early pick. You is heard cracked. it. How about that? Oh, one of the most satisfying sound effects you will hear in a video game when that charger finds its mark. And it's a very powerful main weapon on a map like Inkblood Art Academy uh, where you have to be a little bit better about being able to be moving in that gonna see who wins that? Okay. I'm surprised that they moved away from that fight. That was probably the most important thing happening yep. on the map at that time. Very, very good at it. Again, Everyone survived and they got out, so in the bank. I guess it stalled well out. Use them all here. The but hey, for those so who are looking very, for Nautilus, there's Leafy for you. Weapons from range. If you think the opponent is going to bring a lot of short-range shooters, as and Leafy just kind of dove in on right, took a fight. First they check lose control here. Jackpot, I mean, they got first check, though, so it's not sudden, nothing. Hops right back on the tower. They're but it's not really the important the one either. Bomb trying to push Majin away. Majin has to retreat and this is a, a big bit, special push that uh, Kaiser's going to have ready to go. Okay. They lose the tower, though, and right now they're just trying to get a little bit organized. You see the levers that Jackpot currently has. Yep, that was a very early use of the Trizuka to try Every, to find Very good discipline around each other's Zookas. Those Zookas not getting anybody there, there in conjunction with it. So shows a lot really of find anybody as a result of that. experience. So this be a pretty short-lived push if Jackpot is able to get to the right positions. And for the time, uh, Kaiser appears to wait. Oh, that was kind of a bait, the yeah. Jackpot to attack there. I'm a little surprised. They overcommitted to, to oh, no. Down. Oh, that's a and huge stagger. If you overextend that Do they lose side, second check for this? this? All important plat area. Oh, and no. that is a huge plat to get by. Now, all of a sudden, you can pad this lead and feel very comfortable oh, about the ball. A little it. bit. Here comes Kaiser. A little Trizuka bit undisciplined out, there. Trying to mow down a few opponents. They're working their way through the second checkpoint almost there. They have to hop out. They're, Majin, they're not going to get, clear it. And they're how not going to stop second check here. From Kaiser. Well, and Ishik gets back too. If Ishik I don't like how Jared, they keep putting Leafy in alone. Hurry, but it does appear like if Leafy's going to be alone, Leafy needs to not hard commit to fights. But a push and it's it's like fine to put her on the weak Kaiser side, but she needs to play like a weak side weapon, not like she has follow up from three other members. This is a situation where which is how she's taking those fights. Checkpoints, so they don't have to slow things down. They can get right back into this and threaten the lead. Beautiful. And that's a big splat against Majin. Now you can move forward and put some pressure okay. with their anchor down. And Jackpot wasting no time. This they're is getting the this second checkpoint here. I don't think there's any shot they don't. To attack, they've already identified where if they can find Zeres. Well, that's huge. They're all fighting together. Should be able to look over and fire at they this, get lead. but no, the other members weren't able to get there. Okay, this is huge. They Both teams lead, through second Jordan. checkpoint means that like Zara's goes down and if that you point, wipe, you, you might just lose you instantly. Everything you needed to. The game snowballs though, so hard once you get through that. Left, took them less than 45 seconds to get right back into the I game. Mean, and that is jackpot in a nutshell. There. I'm so impressed that they were able to get that much of a push that fast. Find a way to win, and they will take it. That's that that fast break offense they've got. Attack and spawn camp you for all that you are worth. Now with both of these teams, okay, two down. Jump, out of the way. Every single one of these pushes, you have to consider. Cooler out. They could go the distance, or at the very least, the zip cast are ready. Oh, they're just all the way up on of that bats too. This is going to be hard to defend for jackpot. This jackpot, might jackpot flip all right here. three members, Jordan, jumping both of those They need players. to go now if Sarah's they want to stop it. Down right Why did Majin not stay? Get a chance to I feel like you cheese for lead there, right? The tower, they can't threaten. One member goes down. Three members of Jackpot Maybe goes not. down. Here's the door. It's oh. open for Kaiser. And they were tacticalered up, which means that they got to I've jump back I've seen Starburst in, do that. Way ahead. Madness oh, is in man. The that's lead. Go after this tower. They'll lose the lead. Madness desperately needs to win this fight. Gets pushed off the side there. Will not be able to swim back up. Fly Zero can get on the tower. Down here. goes Madness. There are too many players out in mid. They don't have anybody defending. Fly Zero fighting against Leafy here. They have another tacticaler up here. Jordan, are they going to back up? Oh, the class here to not dive at the tower right. there and instead give themselves back mid and now with under a minute left they have a Good 17 point there. lead it's going to come down to this Inkstorm and Zara's can afford to feed there because they're not going to fight again yet 
their oh, last no, Madness loses the 1v1. Very careful as Madness goes and down that's an easy jump again. out. The See, that's the that discipline that and Leapy goes down Kaiser is showing oh, right now down, that man. Jackpot's not. I, I, when I'm they so get a clean pick, they're jumping right out. For they're jackpot. backing up. They have they're no like letting that be Kaiser trying to dominate the final 30 what seconds won. to go up 2-0. They're not trying Look to at the get greedy for more. Focus of all four members as they can smell victory. 20 seconds left. They are I feel like the jackpot they pushes are, are flaming out too fast for out. a mode Kaiser slow. just on another level at this moment. Right, but Madness finally does okay, get that's that one down. Fight win and tries to move they up need there to, to capitalize Zeris. on this. Zeris now knows Madness, Madness is in such Madness a hard still spot. Waiting around it. They don't have any immediate specials that can clear the tower, but somebody went down there. Another one goes down. There's only one person. No! The tower. And it is another victory for Kaiser as they leap out of their seats. They build a 2-0 lead, and you can feel the energy coming from Kaiser. They've just taken two games in a row from Jackpot. They are one win away from going to the finals of the World Championship. And again, I am stunned with how effective they have been at separating the members of Jackpot and taking them down. Listen, it's one thing if everyone goes the in. The mental on attack, Jackpot's side of Jackpot go is going to get tested here really hard. Because what does that tell you, Jordan? It says they went for an attack. They all got taken down, but they were coordinated. Instead, we're seeing one person go down. One person go down. One person go down. And that's not usually how it happens. They've been separated over and over and over again. And I can't remember the last time. If they're the I best team in the world, they're going to be able to block. sit down, come up with a plan, Tower control. They yes. have and this. blow yeah. Kaiser out in this you how many next game. Of games they have won on that map mode. Nine. You right. remember. Kaiser's looking strong. Six years ago. What was it? They're playing good Tower orthodox control, platoon. Inkblot Art Academy. Academy. Their Europe big playmakers are making North plays, America. but then Same not map and mode. going in so How deep that it compromises the game. Of that. Now it's 2-0. They need one more win to close things out. Jackpot, though, will not go quietly into the night. You now have Clam Blitz. That's going to be followed by Splat Zones and Turf War, arguably three right. of the weaker modes. So Jackpot would have to play this Turf is your War. Best you have to make it out of here. The dragon while you have the sword in hand if you were Kaiser. If not, so it's Clam Blitz. I don't remember what the map and was. I will say that with the pop-offs that we have been seeing here from the side of Kaiser, that if there is a 3-0 comeback here, a reverse sweep, you are going to get it in kind, We better get friend. one. We better yeah, get I, one. I'm almost asking for it at this point <laughs> here, but we will see. We did say right before this set, start, or this, uh, set started, Jordan, we'll just kind of refer to it here. That those were the two that you had to get. Yeah, people love Majin. Kind of I mean, so yeah. Is, this is exciting. Majin also loves the camera. That's why. That's like how that works. Right now. But if you didn't get those two, we gave you very little. You keep putting a, a camera those two, in front of a guy like Majin. Like, like Majin reminds me of Usain explode. Bolt. So in that you put a camera in front of him, he's gonna do something for it. As soon as he notices, every time. Doesn't matter how many times you do it. He's he's gonna do. Usain Bolt's gonna do his silly like lightning bolt thing. Pop up sometimes, and for jackpot, Majin listen, this is, is going to pop up. We it. talk about you come in, you're thinking, listen, we swept our way through turf what, war. What the? Wait a minute. Just it feels like, like there were like three different team. ideas they were trying what to do with the hand signs there, and, and they committed to all three of them at once. That <laughs> is in a groove at this moment. Leafy is she/her. I think a long way that would help out jackpot at this point. You need a dominant win. Mm. A dominant win would really hit the mute button over there for Kaiser, but Kaiser right now it's just. They feel supercharged at the moment. That's what you're seeing from the body language. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they've been throwing up all kinds of symbols there, some hearts they're sending to their fans back in Europe, but this is the moment for Jackpot. And I would say Clam Blitz has always been one of Jackpot's stronger modes here. <sighs> even when they were in previous incantations of their team, What's up, they Guster? were good at this. They sense the moment of where they need to move in and attack, take certain spots, and get their points scored in those moments. But... Again, they've changed around their comp so much, and they still haven't put Dot Q back on that Snipe Rider 5H. He's gone to a number of different weapons, and I, I'm not saying it's the wrong choice, Jordan. I'm just saying I'm legitimately stunned by it. Well, it is interesting because in any I feel like having a, another aggressive weapon out there would be valuable. One of those is going to be random. You might have because for, for a jackpot, like the, 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 what they're Clam suggesting, Blitz like putting Dot Q on the writer. Because okay, yeah, there we go. There we have it. A writing is having Jared be able to fight them. Could this be the difference, or will Kaiser shock the world with a sweep 
of jackpot at the uh, world championship. So Jake, those who are sensitive to screen, just be careful. I don't know if they're going to show it or not, and I have no control over that. Deco, it is that splatter color screen that can really make it difficult for the opponent if they don't know where your attack okay, is. Okay, so we got the cooler. Jordan, there's only one way through on this map. If you take away your opponent's visibility on it, it can really hinder them. Jackpot trying to stay alive at this moment, just going tentacle to tentacle, and a splat right, on Madness fine. with that Trizuka out. One for one trade. Yep. Great job, though, by Leapy to crash in on Specials it. Special's getting popped. Jumps coming in. in this position. Beautiful. Goes down Three down. Jared finally breaking through here. Get that clam in. Get that score. Let's get there. started. Love to build the power clam. They do. And there's that splatter color And now screen. Kaiser right can't now see the if Kaiser they're setting no up around the basket or not. Where the attack is going to come from there. Leapy dives forward, takes out Fly Zero. This is the jackpot we're used to seeing, Jordan. They get into the basket. It's not a huge push. Push. The timer's going down, so it lost a lot of people for that. 74, but you see the 13 point penalty. Kaiser, that's not going to be insurmountable. You generally any. want at no, least 60 at off of the first push. Right here, back up to the middle again. Go ahead. The fundamentals. I like let's the way that they set it up. The map here. They've just got to do it again. And just rack them up. Sure the player we want knock them back down again. Power clam is Ooh. Majin. Majin now has it. And that's a two down. Two of the other members out here. They're going to go forward here with Zara's dives. They're for yeah, they, they, they lose Jordan. some points here. One more player out, expect them to Probably. To crash in. Keep an eye on Majin. Why did they not score yet? Trizuka backs up but has to retreat quite a bit. All right. Leafy trying to apply a little bit of pressure. Zara's provides some help, though. Fly zero now. Good job on Jackpot on that defense. I thought the, the score screen. was going to go in for sure. Slow things down there for just a moment but for Kaiser. Like yeah, I said, like job there. It was if they are the champs, them just they can pull we this back. Some of the earlier sets, one player being taken down at an inopportune time can slow it down. And you can also see here, Jordan, how difficult it is to score on this map if you don't take a couple of players Oh, beautiful out. from Jared. Down, that slows them down so much. Behind, so this is probably and the trade is good, too. Yeah, I, I like the decision to put Jared on an aggressive weapon and to offload Cooler Duty onto Leafy. Or not onto Leafy, onto Q. See the super jump retreat just has to get out of there at this moment, and this is where a so they've got a good adaptation. Gonna give an They're going even now. Kaiser, check out things up top. Majin trying to back up. Power clam in hand, just trying to stay alive. Nice pick. Moment here, nine. You can't fumble this. Oh. And there they go. That's going to be a snowball. To push Do they have the clams? Yeah, defense just long enough, and then once you get one uh, player out them a minute to make the clam. Big piece of their attack. They're having some trouble way, way getting this in. At this point, they have to fight again. Work there on that side. They haven't scored yet on it. They're simply going back and trying to take care of Zeras before Good anything stall from Zeras. It's but not Jack the push. playing this exactly the way you want. Great shot there from Madness. Took okay. two out there. They died to get the power clam in. I don't know. They don't get the whole lot more. They get killed in the choke point. Down, but the damage it's has more than I thought they were going to get, honestly. To 100 lead with just over two minutes so that's left. a lead now. Like, like that's the kind of points you want on your first push Killing to open the game up. Ready to go here on the backside. Majin just trying to pepper a few shots at the moment. Two minutes Zara's left. Pairing, that's a potent They've gotten a lot of picks, and Jared. Jackpot yeah, has been able to defend has the best well here. Weapon right now in that position to fight through for them here. I want to point out that Jackpot did get far enough down that it will now take three power clams if they want to take the lead back immediately. So no major danger immediately for them in terms of losing this lead. It's probably going to take Woo, an okay. push or just two pushes here for Kaiser. So far, they haven't scored out. You can see, Jordan, they really want to take out these other members of Jackpot before they try to push through, and I think they've just waited too long once again. And down goes Zeres was trying nice. to... Oh, and a wipe out for Jackpot. Here's an opportunity. Power Clam in hand trying to add to this lead. Tacticooler comes out, a sprinkler up top to provide a little bit more support. Can that I like what I'm seeing. I like what I'm seeing from Jackpot. Opportunity at this moment. Just over a Fingers left. crossed, you know, there's and a minute right left, but they score here. An opportunity. Lane is open. And they get a they lot of points. In. They're going to add to this lead here, Nine. I mean, they might win it right this now. Might be KO. The KO. Oh, there's the, the clams Kaiser they need to, to spawn campus. right in front of the basket. One more it's clam over. And jackpot. We talked about it. They wanted a dominant performance, and they're looking over to the side of Kaiser with a few choice words. Oh, there's some trash talk Don't coming out there was, from Leafy Dang. One win, and uh, you know this is good. I will say for Jackpot, if you thought you were favored, Don't get, don't let that game, get too. Got to win more than one. Too game much to your head. You go too crazy. Gotta, Great work there. From gotta just the members flex of a little bit, get the blood back in your again, fingers, but mode, that was well played. Stronger modes, Keep the discipline up. You saw knowing where to defend, when to attack with that splatter color screen. Great work from them there. A very dominant performance from them. nine. I've never seen the reverse is definitely possible. So They've just got to keep the, their their comps There's smart. A lot of energy being and right now for both these teams, play turf war. 
mental I don't think either of these teams are really going to be particular turf war experts. They were Obviously, they're going to have prepared for it, but it's not like the, that's the majority of the tournaments that they'll play. Just a little bit as you get set for splat zones, you know if you can get through this, you're going to put Kaiser... Zones is something that Jackpot is probably particularly strong at. Because that's probably something they've done a lot of playing with Japanese teams. Yep, and you saw them kind of go grab some water. There's Jackpot. That's what we expected to see from them. We knew that they were capable of this as well. So Jackpot, we said they needed to get a dominant victory, and they did. You saw there were moments there where Kaiser might have been able to score some, but just didn't quite clear out the members of Jackpot. They weren't quite confident and Sometimes being a little passive on Clam Blitz and trying to hope for the best. Yeah, screen works because really works that map you. has a disgusting there. choke point in it. Jordan, you are and correct. if the enemy team can see you're when you're approaching the basket, zones. you just don't get to the basket. Oh man, Kai, so if you block their vision, yesterday now it's a lot harder here. for them Again, to notice that you slip through. The before the horse by any means, but this is a team in Kaiser that said, listen, Turf War is not our strength. And if that is going to be... And Jared 52 Gal had so many finals, clutch Kaiser, picks that stopped them from getting scored game, on on defense. Flat zones, and you see them, Del Fonsino, and we talked about the strength of Jackpot, how comfortable they feel in Splat Zones. Yeah, I... You cannot get to this level. It's like the whole like adaptation thing that the, most the Nintendo it is the most commonly played writer was play saying about Kaiser. World, so... That adaptation that happened from Jackpot is more of the kind of thing that they're trying to talk about. They were like, okay, Zap isn't working. Let's go to Pencil. Let's run, you know, this weapon that we haven't run at all before that we're going to bring for this particular map mode. Map mode combination in the last game in Clam Blitz. What it looks like when Dot Key was playing that Sniper Rider 5H, and I hope she brings it out once again. You said backliners can really dominate this map. What's the one thing? Honestly, like. You, you always take it one game at a time, and that's how you try to think about it. But, like, if Jackpot wins this Splat Zones map, it's just a total toss-up because it's going to Turf War. And why would you? And certainly, all of the Rapid Blaster family can hit a lot of the perches that the enemies like to come from on this map. But I don't know. This is another time where I think it's going to fit what Jackpot wants Buckle to run. Up. Buckle up. Game four. Jackpot Kaiser. Jackpot. They're starting to feel Back to pencil. I love Jared on the dualies. Oh, this is good. This is good. Energy that was being exuded on that side. It might come down to this because they do not want to see a game five. Basically, same comp coming out of. Well, we're seeing a lot of the same Kaiser that they've been running. One interesting thing to Ooh, man is down instantly. Jared has switched over to the splat dualies. Good play from Zeres. Have a crab tank at their disposal. Crab tank very must have just dropped out and like sharked over to the ledge. And make life Hit him up over the top. For their opponents, but for the time being, it's going to be Kaiser with the opening push. Kaiser rushes to the zone. Now they're trying to go. They need to get Zeres out of there. There we go. Can't get to the second level. Down goes a member of Kaiser. Oh man. Three three on the map at the moment. Jackpot. Two specials ready to go. That Trizuka trying to apply a little bit of pressure. Tank taking down one. Okay. Member. Looking Let's go for Jared. One, trying to avoid the killer whale 5.1, but how about this some 50 help. points off the board already, Nine? Well, look at where the fight is taking place. Two people have opted to dive Zeres here. If Zeres takes both of these players out, this could be huge. Great survivability they there get for those members there. That has kept the game alive okay. for them, Jordan. I cannot tell you yeah. how dangerous of a position that was that for Jack. Early on, line, like, but they survived. They do not go down to Zeres in the zip. It's fine to take a fight that takes a while as long as you play it well and, and win so it that way. They did have the 2v1. They just needed to wait out Zara's a zip caster, you, see at this moment, you know, Don not get scared and get doubled by him. The in the oh, Leafy. Of the zone, and that's going to put tremendous pressure on Kaiser. They, they just lose this push earlier than yeah, they really they needed to there. Players out, which is a big deal, and that's down. a really big deal because that means no tactical cooler advantage. Now they're going after be... the other one there. Oh, this should no. be a rough landing for this player. The zip caster mm. comes out just a little bit too late there. Another one goes down as trades, but hold on a minute. If you're Kaiser, you got to get some turf on that zone. They were not able to. They could. Yeah, Dot Q uh, paints them Dot on the Q zone here. On that, those are two shooters. They're not able to get through this snipe rider. And this is huge because Kaiser could try to provide a penalty. Can Jackpot wrestle it back and avoid having to have some extra time put on the clock? Oh, finally, they Kaiser's get the able penalty, to get but at the cost of two players. So uh, we take oh, that as Jackpot. It took a lot from them to get it, and that's why you see the. So hey, uh, Nerf pencil, please. As well. Look at how Dot Q was able to single-handedly hold that against two weapons that are designed to turf here. Two players oh, wow, have been here. Great shot there from that line marker. Of what? Yes. How did you get behind? Oh, 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 oh. Hold on a second. Where Nobody is he? What? Where did you come from? Is there from? a beacon? Where did you go? 
fighting out How of did he, the Was he just sitting there the entire time? Already gone. What a shot from Jared. I need a replay on that. Two members right there. Takes out Madness. And however, the lead. lead is still right there. It is in danger. Yeah, they get lead. Can they can't Jackpot in time. take it away? Yes, Jackpot wrestles it back. But I like that their faces Nobody are steady. To paint the zone, and this has completely changed the dynamic here. Because They're not popping Jackpot off yet. They know that the game's not over. over, over. Great over. pick. Let's go, Jared. Jared dives forward. It felt like Kaiser was more focused. Oh, they needed the more support for Jared there. The Maybe they just the couldn't zone, get there in time. Just inking the zone. And so now a three-point lead. Just Beautiful. Over two left. Jackpot takes control. That again. pick gets their cooler this is player a too. Huge game and a couple of big moments so far that Jackpot's been able to take advantage of. Yep, two players from Jackpot going down though, make it a third. So this is going to be an opportunity for the members of Kaiser to fight right. through their Let's lead. All right, let's go, Leafy. Take one out, but it's a trade, so it is a wash. Again, folks, keep an eye on the top. They of do the need to get cap back, and they need there. to not contest. Goes down. That's They've got a stamper. Stop going that way. You can't do that against the stamper. They'll always be there. Much more difficult time pushing back. Oh no. That was huge. Two members on the left-hand side of the map. That penalty is being chopped away quickly. They are just 10 seconds away from taking the lead here. Okay. That's not going to help either. We don't worry about lead here. We worry about winning this fight. We need to win this fight. Kaiser with 90 seconds left. We one don't need the lead instantly, the the but we need but to win that fight. Down as part we of it got too. one out of that fight. Now we need to get the zone with the numbers advantage, which we should be able to do. Right? We've got a couple players go down, but they have the crab tank, which means they're going to have a much better presence on the zone itself. Oh, if you get a second one, that's huge. Yes! That's the cooler player. That's so huge. Oh my god, Jerry. Is coming is in so clutch. Side here for I mean, one minute can last an awfully long time in splat zones, especially when you take out Zeris that early in. That's their main fighting force. Oh, and if the shots are on there, that's dangerous. Too far. Escaped with his life. Just over 10 ticks just left keep here the zone painted. They are thinking Please knockout. just take this lead. Five more seconds left. Can Jackpot lock out Kaiser? Clock okay, Levy gets one. That's huge. Takes the lead. You see the frustration that's game. for Kaiser. Jackpot Six wins. Six seconds left. Jackpot trying to force a game five. Can they do it? Oh, yes. Game five. Pop off on cue. Jackpot has set the table. Oh, man. Oh, they are man. so excited oh, for oh. themselves right oh, now. Oh, look at it. I love it. I love it. Yes. There is an entire other side of the bracket Oof. here, folks. You wouldn't believe this was just a semifinal. But, hey, if you give it out, you got to be able to take it here. So you see, you saw as soon as that game ended, <laughs> Zeris look over to the rest of Kaiser and just say, it happened, it happened, it's what it is. And here we are now, Turf War for our game five. This was the nightmare scenario. They had to make Kaiser it exciting. How those first two <laughs> games ended up going. In the words of Michael Scott, my uh, the turntables turned here at this point. At this now point. Now we set for game five. Turf this war. is the part where we oh don't like goodness, that Kaiser it's turf did war. Not see it's this deciding this. At all. And jackpot. If you look Nobody at wants to see this. This is a coin flip. Snatched it, and now they are feeling high as they. These teams are both capable of winning fights. So it just comes down to who wins one fight with 25 seconds left on the clock. For Kaiser, and this is what you love to see: a rivalry across the pond, North America, Europe. Coming down to game five in a spot in the finals. Do we remember what the map is for this? World championships. Yes. When these yes. two squads end up meeting, listen, North America and Europe have been trading domination back and forth. You're saying about game five being less impactful? Going on and Every set that we've seen today, I'm, except for this one, didn't even have a game five. They're like protecting the equipment for like whoever wins this. <laughs> I'm, I'm dead serious here. The Every one of the sets that we saw today had a game one pop -off is and a game two and a game three. They didn't have a game five set, until now. just hope that everybody's equipped. Game five is less impactful, lot more but every game does count that gets played. Kaiser took the first two games, had some words to exchange with Jackpot on the North American side, but then Jackpot won two straight. Marlin games was for um, ranked up the volume on their side. Finals, I want to say. Regardless of humpback. What happens, That's what it is. It's humpback. Fireworks on this humpback turf war. Chapter being scripted <laughs> in this North American and Europe. How in the world do they play this? <sighs> And we're gonna get to see I wonder if they knew what the the maps doings. were going to be ahead of time. Yeah. If they knew to, how to game plan for this. this. End up going where for two of these games, I, I would say three of these games, you've had a legitimate back and forth between the two teams. Humpback is not a bad map. You take that back. Everything else you're saying is correct, totally but the the bad map part is wrong. <laughs> By square, I like humpback. Square, square turfage, however we want to say it. This is one of the <laughs> biggest in the game. It is wide, and you can lose 
games here. I've seen it happen many times where somebody gets behind you and because there's so much available turf near the enemy spawn, you can lose a game and you didn't even know it. Because it's yeah. turf war, we are going down to the final second of this best oh. of five. <laughs> game <laughs> five. Give me every single drop of ink in this matchup as we get set. A lot of energy on the side of Jackpot. Now okay. it comes down to which team can focus, and you know it's going to be a wild 30 seconds, a spot in the finals, up for grabs. Okay. Game five. I like that. Couldn't ask for anything more at this moment. Their faces are getting no, a little bit more serious, a little bit less excited, a little bit less hype. I mean, They're getting. You knew we had to get turf war in here. <laughs> Got to calm down a little bit. Oh my goodness! Can't Jordan. let the adrenaline get to you here. The last second, you can't just dive in and take in bad fights here. Books as one of the greats, Kaiser. Or if you do, Jackpot. you got to pull yourself Give back. Give us one more. This banger of a set continues. Okay, got Q on the reflux with Majin on reflux, so they're just trading off their anchors for that. We'll see their tournament they have come to a crashing end at this point. And help back pump versus track. the Zap, so not slight cooler advantage probably to both Kaiser, but that's not as big of a deal when you only need the cooler for like the one key fight or two. The best turfing main weapon in the and Leafy just wants to fight them. To uh, and it might work. There. Leafy okay, they're safe for now. Forward and trying to fight, still a lot of time in this game, but they're trying to feel out their opponent, keep them away from certain parts of the Jared map. does not win this 1v1, yeah, Jared I can't stay in that. does take out Jared very early, they're gonna trade some shots. So right now, it looks like it's but pretty even the, on the map. The important part here is not up necessarily the fighting. You see a little bit more yellow ink on the top it's making of sure that they're map. able to not fishing. lose the track of mid side, before, while also Norbus getting their base painted. All sorts of room there for them to you want the base yeah, painted early too, so that you when you have to fight later, sure you you're not also having to send someone back in the middle of the fight to paint your base. It can get a little dangerous there if you let them too far on your side. So they're scrapping a little bit here. That point of no but these return. again, these fights and don't matter. That, All that matters is who's in control with about 30 seconds left in the game. 20 to 30 seconds left. Jared being very careful At that point, forward, it's still possible to turn things around, but that's when things really start to matter. So you However, just kind of Kaiser set up, get your base painted as much as you can. Try not to get like spawn locked so you don't lose too much ground. But you'll see everyone's way more spread out than they're going to be in an objective mode because there's no objective to centralize where the fight have to happen. The they can probably collapse this and get both Zeras and Fly Zero clean. Was boxed in yeah. There, which means that it's jackpot oh, beautiful for Madness. Madness does need to heal, but three members good. went down for Kaiser. Jackpot can try to stabilize things as Madness just tries to cover as much turf okay, on top good of that job, Leafy. Fly Zero goes down. Leafy oh, oh, nice. goes down in the beautiful read from Zeras. Zeras with a critical splat does get taken down in revenge though. There. Jared oh, and Jared down going well, down is huge because now they get back into mid. It will be started by Kaiser cleaning up their own side of the map. That's going to give Jackpot precious seconds to get stable in the center. It's going to come down to who can unload the most okay. specials. So the, the next fight, mark. they're going to have Cooler. Out, so the next fight zero, sets the tone up, for the game, but the fight after that Majin wins the game. Trying to keep Majin at bay at this moment. And okay. A big spot on Sarah's right That's there. Massive. Just under 40 seconds. Oh, but Jared left. goes down. Because they're, they're fighting someplace else. And Madness goes down too. Well. Wait, this is huge. Actually, wait, Madness went down there, so that's that no cooler. They're not gonna have a tax cooler until a little later on. I don't know where their special meter is. Oh man. Leafy, and Leafy needs, to, needs to stay position. alive. She opts to back up ever so slightly with 20 seconds left. This is Okay, Kaiser's they need to win the fight now. Uses Literally right now. They don't have enough time. Fly zero goes down. Seconds left. Who's gonna wrestle the victory and find their way to the finals? Eleven seconds left. Two members go down for Kaiser. They might have this. For they don't have a lot of paint in the enemy team base. Real quick. Who's gonna Zeres gets one, though. Drops of ink. Oh, my God. This is actually left. so close. Three, two I have no idea. Map. Jackpot trying to go in a hurry. They feel They look like they confident. won. Let's take a look at the map here. Jackpot. Did they complete the reverse sweep? One oh, I think Jackpot's got this. It does look like it. Jackpot. How reverse sweep. <laughs> down oh, oh my over. God. They take it 3-2 and find their way into the finals. Oh, and they are up and hugging their tears and emotion. Their first set of the day, and it goes like this. They are letting their <laughs> opponents have it at this point, but their job is not yet done. Let's just hope for Whew. Jackpot that they still have some gas left in the tank. Some handshakes there wow. and hugs, some good sportsmanship. They laid it all on the line, both of these teams. What a set. My goodness, came down to the final right. second. Jackpot. So now we get Kaiser 
and courtesy a semi that should be a lot less exciting in all likelihood. Well, I don't that know. If Greasy Goblins get something like that win, nine, it's just the semifinals. Now we're popping Unbelievable off. Action that we just um, saw there. Put that one but Phantom Thief is definitely the favorite. Three competitive lore. That is a set that we <sighs> won't forget. I mean, it's one of the first times I have seen a Splatoon set go the true distance multiple overtimes <laughs> in every US, US, mode. US, 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 <laughs> Everything you could ask for from a world championship. Incredible stuff. The pendulum swing, and you love the talk back, back and forth, the smack talk. It's terrific. Looking at the highlights here, and this is where everything turned around. The clam yeah. blitz. <laughs> where everything turned Jack around was when Dot Q decided to start playing right. pencil yeah, instead. And it's, <laughs> uh, harping on it, but again, it's when Dot Q uh, went back over yeah. to the Snipe Rider 5H. And yes, that I is get that it fits these modes. Sadly, of the one of the major reasons that, that worked there, so well. It allows Jared to go Granted, they didn't have it in the last game. You know, you, that's that's not that turf war meta, but I really think it did get them their anarchy mode wins. When Jared can be up there and attacking as he is so good at doing. <laughs> Having the He's worst the day. <laughs> Unidon, why not oh, get your awful. best weapons here that you're used to? And once they did that and then splat zone, it was getting a little frightening there for Jackpot at a moment. They picked up a key splat in the corner against Zeras in a two-on-one situation. Couldn't hear the trash talk. Oh, yeah, nobody could. They, they didn't have mics Finally, on the players. The KO. Yep, that game could have ended almost immediately. You can't get anything set up with the Snipe Rider in tactical but loops. If a couple players go I Zeres still played so like an absolute point, crazy they person. Just enough, they like Zeres was a raid boss the every time they, they had to fight. Better turf output than what their opponents on Kaiser had. Oftentimes that's what splat zones can come down to. And so that made it 2-2 two, two, and you saw the frustration coming from Kaiser when they realized they lost the zone and that the knockout was imminent and every single time Jackpot won a game that pop-off got larger and larger and then here it is at this moment 930 seconds Kaiser's Whew. got the lead yeah I, they do have the lead and I don't know if it was Leafy or somebody else but when Zara's used that crab tank I thought okay you're all out there, but yeah, the I pencil clutch on zones was huge. Off to the side, whether it was Ishik or whether Fly Zero fell into the middle of. And the it's map. also just a more consistent tactic cooler that you can't that means just like dive and get rid of spawn, anywhere near as easily. Back at spawn at the time that you would most love to have your reflux there, working the middle of the map, and that's how it goes so often in turf war. If the wrong weapon gets splatted at the wrong time, Jackpot, our first team to make the finals, which will be a best of seven. That was just a semi I like how Greasy well, Goblins is in all caps, energy. unlike that any of the other teams. <laughs> the Greasy Goblins versus Phantom Thief of the Heart. They maintained that convention of, of the name. Phantom Thief of the Heart. They're the one team we haven't had a chance to talk about yet today because they will make their first appearance of the day. The number one seed from Group B. They looked very, very good in picking up their... In fact, but Jackpot also deserves a lot of credit for the, the psychological momentum shift. Yesterday, the home team um, representing Japan. Like, now you need something to, to spark that confidence and get them the feeling like they yeah, can win it again. No team in and a comp switch is definitely a good way to do it. Especially a, a one that was smart and that worked. Then this squad fighting through the absolute best Turf War region in the world. No, Phantom Thief Great is Japanese. Hey, the Greasy Goblins, we've talked about uh, The bit. EU representatives, the European representatives Australia. were Kaiser. The um, first time Australia it, there actually was a French team, Alliance Rogue, in the world but Kaiser beat them in the uh, EU championship to make it there. They were a bit of an underdog story. Oh, yeah. Uh, the regions were North America, Europe, Japan, Taiwan, Hong Kong. Or wait, no, the, Taiwan beat Hong Kong to be here. That they uh, competent in Australia, New Zealand, and Korea. This is the situation where now the Greasy Goblins have played already. They felt the intensity of the day. Now it's a matter of Phantom Thief of the Heart to step into the chairs. And it's because unlike the other teams, you're supposed to scream Greasy Goblins because goblin mode is loud. <laughs> very smoothly. You just had to sit out there and watch what those two fearsome opponents on the other side of the bracket were. Kaiser were the underdogs, I think, to too many people's eyes in that match. And Alliance Rogue also, to their, you know, obviously the, the every win, you know, you, you've got to do what you've got to do. But Alliance Rogue was having major technical difficulties where they're, they're, they're capable of in one of their players just basically couldn't aim well in game three the of that set and that really hurt their their psyche five games, in the middle of the game all the game modes and maps it was like a 
20 minute Rainmaker, minute uh, segment of like technical blitz, issues or something ruins. crazy like that and where the MC is just like going around to trying to interview the players in the middle of this really intense set um, it, it was not a great situation for AR they were pretty mad about how that was handled talk about it on Twitter later and I, I mean I understand it we've seen Lafayette feel very comfortable in that backline position that can be critical for Rainmaker yeah and I, I think you're gonna see her very diligently go back into that position what I'm actually called Phantom Thief of the Heart yeah like the Phantom Thieves or whatever it is from um, Persona 5 like that term didn't originate in Persona 5 you see him switch over to the ink brush when that is what's needed for the mode as far as I'm aware. We'll see it here on Rainmaker, maybe so, because Barnacle and Dime is a I'm pretty sure that it's like more of like a cultural idea than it even is. If you put it up there, but they've got some options here. They should be able to fight just fine. But uh, I thought that that was true. I, I Somebody told me that, but maybe I'm wrong. See any major changes out of that. And what are we going to see from Phantom Thief of the Heart, their loadout? Because this is the team that also is going to play that sniper right here and have that anchor spot. Yeah, well, uh, that's part of what I'm wondering as well, is what are they going to play here? Because everything that we have seen from them has been turf war, and Tuya has been the one from their squad who's been playing the reflux. Now, if you're going to be serious about turf war, you got to have a reflux player. It, it, there's no substitute for that weapon in Turf War, but it's not really played all that much in the other modes, and certainly not in something like Persona was specifically so the hand. It's just has Persona. A -matic as well, or at least Maybe I'm wrong. Five -starred the weapon. We do know that. So splash matic you can travel just about anywhere with that weapon, but this will be the first time we see them play a more attack -heavy <laughs> Persona invented in culture. War. And if you're the Greasy Goblins, you're almost playing with house money. Here we are in the semifinals. We can play loose. We can play free. We have a chance to make some noise. Our entire argument coming in is let us play against the best competition. Let's get rid of the time zones. Some okay, so Phantom Thief itself playing at the same time is else throughout the year. like now a let's get on the same stage on a land setup known phrase or whatever. Yeah, but but Phantom cool Thieves of the Heart is specifically is Persona. Is you get to fight against All right. Sukuyomi and the I'll, I'll take it from you guys. Chat is never wrong. The heart here. You've already got Chat never misinforms me. Never once has it happened. You're warm. There's nothing left standing in your way outside of your opponent. And for Phantom <laughs> five for the heart, created we said before, they were dominant in turf four, but how will they look when we get to these ranked modes? And this is something that obviously all of these teams in Japan. Yeah, there are only on, but two more sets of Splatoon to play in this tournament, and they're both going to happen one after the other here. Already seen. It's going to be Greasy, Greasy Goblins, Goblins versus Phantom Thief. Today, and then the winner of those two teams plays Jackpot. Smart Roast Chickens. Yeah, but there's great familiarity with all these modes. I don't want to make this sound as though Phantom Thief of the Heart no, has never touched these other doing, modes, yes. but the, the margins become so thin. If you all take one thing from Persona event, 5 in invented stylized menus. Completely changed oh, the dynamic of these games. The last time this map mode came up, where Rainmaker came up, look at how much not breaking that first checkpoint changed it at all and that's one random shot going the other way that changes how that match goes it is going to be wild but as they get the setup taken care i think of they right have now, the same the map modes the as the other semi about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah everybody jumps up and the poor monitors bear the brunt of your excitement <laughs> Well, oh. the excitement, as we said before, is really starting to raise... So when Jackpot the popped off, they the damaged goblins. the equipment. <laughs> They're excited to be here, as we said before. No team in the history of Australia... I'm, I'm sure that uh, these world championships. everyone's happy about the, the Americans now. <laughs> Thanks, guys. They won an entire set, and now they get to this point. They've got to be feeling very confident. They are seasoned. You've got the experience of Latias. And for Phantom Thief of the Heart, you get a chance to prove that, no, you aren't the underdog. You belong here. There is a reason why... We won Koshi in one of the most difficult and challenging. America is never play. beating the the loud yeah, allegations. Say what you will about turf war as a mode if you have misgivings with it. You don't accidentally win Koshian. I want to note that they had qualifiers simply to get into Koshian, the biggest tournament in the world, simply by player count. They had to qualify to get into the finals. Then they had to win the finals against all of the others. Destroy the opponent's equipment. So, so there's the big brain play. Competitors in every aspect of the game. And there's something to be said for the fundamentals that do translate from Turf War into these other modes. And it's really important as well, too. And with Rainmaker, we've seen a couple of teams that aren't able to the get other countries think we're rude again yeah it's because we are their first game on this map and mode the stereotypes are true be aggressive to get that we're bad at this care of because then it's one less obstacle you have to worry about if you're trying to I remember uh 
it, I mean, oh, again, that shoot. First game that I'm blanking on this map, though, the player's tag. It, but there was a player that I so used to do, like, play a bunch of PBs with. Um, Ramen, Ramen McDad. Ramen McDad is who it was. Um, I believe Australian born living in Japan, I want to say. And. Maybe One of the things he mentioned is like part of the culture more shock more was just how often Japanese people apologize, you have the right tools like to do it, but how aware they are of when they are being a and um, when they are imposing on somebody else's space, on their you know vibe, trying to you know keep everything clean for everybody else, like just a lot more care given to other people in your vicinity and like making sure not to cause problems for them for this and this is going to be very exciting and meanwhile here we are bumping the monitors as we pop off jackpot as we've seen is not invincible by any stretch of the imagination so this championship is still wide open at this moment oh absolutely and if you're phantom thief of the heart you you can't even be thinking about maybe it's outwardly polite you've got to take but i think we could do a little more to try and be outwardly polite i think we could probably <laughs> work on that just a little bit You'll worry about what as, 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 as a country as a culture <laughs> I agree entirely with what you're saying none of the teams here have appeared to be invincible thus far arguably the biggest opportunity in the history of competitive Australian New Zealand teams here in these championships a victory over Phantom Thief of the Heart to get to the finals what would that mean boy a lot of respect for that Australia New Zealand region oh and what it would mean for the growth of that region too it's a region that's been so dedicated and so diligent about improving how are we feeling about so that last set oh that's that last value. set was nuts that was really good tournaments has always been top-notch they've always been so friendly and trying to help grow their institution. it was really funny how uh a position I, they basically gave away who won with jackpots pop off at the end because like so i didn't know who was winning the camera work made it so that it was very ambiguous um looking at the numbers like it was hard to keep track of who had control towards the end and how much they were painting versus how much they were being forced into a corner so like before, so many teams from all the teams knew just to get to this moment. I didn't Here know. we are. We are going to get rolling with game one okay. of our second semifinal, the Greasy Goblins versus Phantom Thief of the Heart. Australia, New Zealand taking on Japan. And let's go ahead and get a moment to check some of these loadouts here. Nine. We were wondering what it was going to be for this first matchup of Rainmaker. All right, oh, here we go. My goodness gracious. Here we have next bringing out the sploosh. And a foil squeezer. <laughs> this is they not have not run friends. any of this. Next was the very best player of this but weapon. Sploosh. In Splatoon 2 by just about any way, magic that you can push together. Way, the are they side, doing? You're seeing a rapid blaster pro. They don't really the have the comp to do. From some of the okay. Earlier teams. So I was wondering if they were doing the FLC there, strat but, uh, where you you play to pop the rainmaker the right now, repeatedly, so he even if you get splattered for it, and you just immediately pick it up and feed and forward like with it and then pop it again because you have a sploosh on your team. But no, they're onslaught already. They're all stuck next to each other right now. That was so they just got picked one at a time and. And that ink vac set up to because this is a top level Japanese team, there, they are going to earlier, punish you optimally <laughs> for going down in that well. way. Next had the exact tool and yeah, the only get that tool out. that's kept this game alive. A key plot against Sukiyomi, and that's going to oh go boy. ahead and give the Greasy Goblins a chance to move forward. But an opening push. Moving all the forward way is definitely for not the Greasy Goblins' strong suit. They have been yeah, doing that a little bit slower than the other teams and trying to play it very methodically, which means they have to win more fights in order to win this game. Thieves right now move forward fight and try to steal like some one fight happens Matias goes down that with the phantom thief and one sudden, and they pushed to 11 the then goblins greasy goblins won a fight the and they got and like almost to their first checkpoint just advancing forward and you've got their own the first checkpoint like out of their own base they are not in mid yep they pushed next eyes for that job traded at least go forward there with that ultra stamp to try to take out a key member of the opposing side they're waiting with so many specials ready to go to that's really all it's gonna do there was no advancement of the rainmaker there and that's just immediately ready for the crab which is a crab insane game planning one shot all it took sukuyomi have a game thus far clip that my friend oh and my down God. goes the ultra stamp sukuyomi all over the map just creating havoc against the greasy goblins a one squid wrecking crew is the it moment. sukuyomi or is it tukuyomi been at the start did they just like run out of letters and that's why they abbreviated because i think i remember seeing really the s in it in some this romanizations uh, but kind of run here at this championship 
has been the key player who has been telling you to look out. Oh my for God! I can't believe they went back into that. I will say, at this point, the Greasy Goblins—they're doing an This is the most dangerous Rainmaker play I've ever seen succeed. Three down on the opponent's side. If they want to get any sort of how is it alive? Long-term push. And they just haven't had that advantage with two and a half minutes left. It's finally four-three for a moment, but the Rainmaker in possession of Phantom Thief. Next is keeping a lot of them busy, so they're not really getting very far. But they're also—they don't need to get far. They've got to eleven. They're just here to waste time. Two members of the Greasy uh -oh. Goblins. Yep, it is okay. rough okay. sledding for them here at that point. One member does come back and take them out. 2v2. So good job there by Remy to at least stop that push, but all the other members of Phantom Thief and are going to be able to out. safely they jump just in. Kind of have to now back they off. once again pull out that ink back there. Will they get it fired? No. They fire it, but that means good defense. The back for protection. They'll still Perfect defense from the side. goblins. Like again, that's their strong the suit. Same, the question is like, how do they get it the out of here? How do they actually really the score points in on this mode? Half of the map for the greasy goblins. I do legitimately think this is probably forward. the single weakest mode that the goblins the rails have. At the moment, backing up, splatter color screen going to slowly advance. Now it's three two on the map. A chance okay, the they've got to make some some ground up here. They got to run forward here. Catch that. Player. There, as you noted, oh my so god gives them a real opportunity and they forces the crab well. to trying to work around oh my god raul you're nuts early, but what that's done is put the rest of the team in kind of oh, an awkward huge hammer, oh, though. ultra stamp reaches around and, next and sploosh cannot reach <laughs> got the checkpoint jordan next was able to get two. checkpoint they is something but they're only going to get like one more chance to push if that and not if they get wiped out and they have to fight from their own base opportunity See, like, look at how much space to the goal. is being taken try exactly that. Worst case off of their fight win by Phantom Thieves here, there. It artificially they got from their base to the other base. To go. gonna try one oh, and more then they just win the game because the there's no way to stop this now. Back. The third time is the charm, and the Phantom Thieves get their first game there. Wow. A fist pump from Sukuyomi. <laughs> it's like, finally, it only took us a few tries. <laughs> They get the knockout in a dominant opening game. So, no, this is a team that doesn't just specialize in turf war. Very impressive right there with Rainmaker. And immediately from the beginning, it almost like it almost felt like they shocked the Greasy Goblins with how quick they came out the gate. Well, Rainmaker is the mode, maybe of all modes, that can get away from you very, that very quickly. That difference always been the MO of is one of the, one the best stage, ways to tell the quality the map, of a team. It's lose the lead when a fight so has just so happened. Because of how fast it goes and... Those what happens in between in game, that major fight and the next fight up at that is really how you tell who has the better game plan, who has the better macro. In like, if off a fight so win, you're getting from your own base to their base, the you're playing, you know, perfectly. It's not even that the greasy goblins play but if you win a fight and you can't on, get very far, such an uphill battle you just have to win more fights. After the first you, you can, it like, throw coin flip fights at a good team and occasionally pull out a win, you know, Nobody's perfect, push. and everyone's I mean, going to screw up sometimes. Push, they would have scored just as but points, would Phantom Thief, but capitalizing really on the fights, the but as you I said, find is the way that you really tell the difference between like different levels of play. Low-level teams will often just yeah, not even realize that they have an advantage in the first place and lose it completely. Mid-level teams start to get to the point where they're starting to rush forward and actually take some space. Top-level teams are constantly over applying pressure and taking that space even if they're behind they're you know finding ways to wedge their weapons in the that they can the heavy edit prevent you from getting through and keep their team even further forward on the map pro or rainmaker so they do have some versatility but it's still allowed their two main fighting forces in Sukiyomi and sanku to stay with what they want which is that Splatana Stamper and some variant of the sloshing machine. What was the thought process behind bringing a sploosh there? So Nex to, is a rat weapon player. Nex tries to get in behind the enemy team, tries to be, control, you know, blot, a flanker, academy. like a hard this flanker. A map we're very familiar with, a game mode we're very familiar with. And the hammer with. came, you know, What's the hammer had some good plays there. One of these teams, as you look at hammer the is the really well, solid on that mode I for, like, the same reason that Kraken was really good on there when Kaiser played it. Every tournament, this finds a way to because it just locks down there because it's so a very skinny area and makes it very difficult to get away from. Familiar with it, you get through that first checkpoint, however, you have to there cleanly. Is so, like, there's there's some value there, just get through it, you get to enter the back. Every weapon on at that point, Phantom Thief's comp is well equipped to kite a sploosh, you force them as far back as possible, and they're not going to miss your special still left or players in the right position. So, it's hard to get next into position to actually hit someone with the main weapon. What makes it so beloved? 
we've played a lot of tower control on different maps. Rat so weapons are the house, like hard flanking, high mobility weapons. Things like your brushes, like your ink brushes, sploosh. See this. There is one block that you can use to jump directly on. Octobrush can do it. Flat. And because of that, there are lots of avenues to attack, and we know these players love attacking. Um, Here we go, tower control. Oh, okay, so they're putting Latias on a two, Phantom Thief, dominant in on a leader now. Build a two advantage so next needs to be getting cooler output. To note here, Latias has switched over to I hope the that the next, next actually plays which like a, is a weapon that has uh, support the here. Good start to so the fight. On tower uh oh. Okay, okay. Let's go, Latias. And now it's the greasy goblins who she are knew it was coming. She took it out. They spot the zap. The zap goes down. almost out immediately. These are great fights. Some of the other players. It should they be need to, here to get take. value they here. They need to get this check. They are looking completely different from this first game. And they've but got the cooler They are sweeping through really well and well taking good fights. The shot. And how about Sanku coming? Sanku opened that up really hard, though. Huge there. I don't know how he. I think they still hold on the left side if the Tower Rider doesn't have to turn and look at Sanku. Like Sanku basically took out really two people, even though they, I think they only got credited for one. Thieves are now on the attack. Sugiyomi has to back up there. Has switched over to that 52 gal. Ooh. Oh no! Oh my God! Holy crap! That was a triple. Took two players out. No, no, no! That was three. Nine. Every single shot directed someone. He's already there. And that is an unbelievable Holy turn of crap. events. Phantom Thief just pushing the Greasy Goblins back on their heels. And now with under four minutes left, it's all Phantom Thief. And the Greasy Goblins really need to scramble here. That, has just been throwing bombs I don't know what you do after that. Look at or anything That's to just do. disgusting. They've already taken two members out, Jordan. They're firing at everybody. They're going to be able to protect themselves here. It's just Remy on the this bottom of the This is just over. This is a KO. A Nobody gets in. in. The Next is going to try to dive down and make it work, but there's no more Holy conversation crap. to be had. Two words, nine. Light work for Phantom Thief. They just made that look simple. All it took was one push from them, and all of a sudden, it is 2-0 <laughs> Phantom Thief. And for the Greasy Goblins, you are looking for any kind of answer you possibly can find right now. But my goodness, I think the surprise of the day so far, despite the semifinal that went to five games, is just how dominant Phantom Thief looks already. Well, look, they had one opportunity to attack there. One. The game, when it was in that middle scrambly position, it, it gets away from you a little bit. Anything can happen at the start of the game. Yeah, you the use the checkpoint first, and then you so get they had a really good fight. Down. When you're pushing tower on, on that map mode, push. And then they you need two people going up left, and you need one person watching the right side while someone else rides tower. Because the tower rider can't really defend itself super well against someone who's dropping out far right. They need to be, like, looking forward most of the time. So you need someone who's on that right side, and having to 1v1 Sanku is not easy. <laughs> so Sanku wins that, and then immediately the push, push falls apart. Because so you have to put so much effort into getting up onto the top left that so far from if mid is compromised, now everyone has to look in different directions to keep themselves alive. Um, that at that point, you just drop back and try really to give jumps behind left stack because it's it's already over. You're not going to get any further than that. We've seen reverse sweeps. We just saw it with jackpot. But that's kind of how you keep yourself alive in that map mode. <laughs> But is you just, it just seems that you saw pitch a, a tent behind left stack, from the greasy goblins and, and when people go down, you give jumps in, and that's where you put your cooler, and so ideally they have cooler as soon as they get in, in and, that's when everything went and down then the you can hopefully yeah, hold that map position. Different comps here too. Nexus switched around a couple times, so you can tell not when you lose mid though. Answer for them certainly. It's or let me rephrase. It's not the problem for them on a compositional side right now. It's just so difficult in some of these maps in Splatoon three to play defense over and over if the opponent gets you down and then tactical is partway through their push your margin for error is so 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 thin if you get taken out obviously that's not great but even if you trade they're going to be back at you and attacking and creating more and more pressure so game three is getting set up here at this moment and for the greasy goblins you're going to do what you can and clam blitz is an opportunity for some unique strategies but All so right. far we have just seen not only the one-on-one -on -one dominance from phantom thief but the coordination that once they get a push everybody's on the same page everybody knows their role as well too yeah everybody knows their so role and they know i don't know phantom thief just like well. look like they're going to be in the finals 
Something of um, an improvisational battle, right? But where uh, you're not always going to have the same end goal of where your <sighs> where your where your special should go or where you should position in the heat of the moment. But taking into account where your teammates are and where the I think it's gonna going to take take at least a bit of an adjustment. Oh, this is going to be so That's rough for I've Jackpot because you know so if it does go to that game seven, then they're up against so probably the best turf four team in the world. Your first time watching Splatoon here at the world. Like this is a team that won Koshin. Don't worry, it never goes away. <laughs> it's, it's not an easy <laughs> thing to do to win the Koshin Splatoon tournament. calling it for years, and there's even times that we can. And it's turf four only. But that's the best part about it. Game three, Clam Blitz, so you really don't want it to go that far. To you want to beat them on the ranked modes. Because that's probably where Jackpot has a lead they if they have the anything. First game off of Phantom Thief in this tournament. We'll find out as both teams start their encroachment to the middle. One last switch here from Phantom Thief of the Heart. This time it is Rauru going back over to the Sniper Rider 5H and Toya moving over to that splatter shot. On the other side, the Greasy Goblins going yeah. back with the brush comp they ran earlier. It's clearly a comfort pick. Yeah, Australia and New Zealand have it kind of rough, just really in that strong positioning at this point. it's hard for them to get practice at the top level. The goblins, a bit of a um, there. Three, three it's hard for them to find, like, of those solo queue matches now with a of the, a you know, the latency the being what it is. As they get their approach set up. Yeah, the Greasy Goblins have done a good job and of not going down in big bunches. You saw earlier it's hard to learn set, from the, the Japanese scene Kaiser because of the language barrier, down, the jackpot moved which should be their, you know, best source of practice for sure. Two down, Jordan, the door Geographically. Phantom Thief trying I think to there are probably forward. some other factors it's involved there, but that finally goes down, and that's going to leave AU a lot New, of opportunity. New Zealand is like historically Thief, had some trouble with, every clam they with possibly competing find. at the very and highest elite level. The greasy goblins out. Look at the positioning they're able to get. Because like I mean, Greasy Rob Goblins comes to an American tournament, they're going to do pretty well. You hate to it's just once they start running into the like FT wins jackpots, that's probably when it when it's going to get pretty hard. They've done it. They've kept the basket open for the time being. The Greasy Goblins have fought all their way out, but Jordan, they haven't cleared enough players. There's still points. And that's the this problem. is a brutal Phantom map. Just gonna run out of clams on the map for the, the Goblins too, because like strike, to they go. don't have a lot of tools to push their way into their own dome. Two members of Phantom Thief and really Triple lock in that choke point. still open, but it looks like yeah, the push to 20 is pretty big. Finally put a stop to that push, but 80 big points come off the board. 80 big points. If Ramy comes up big with this, I don't know. I still don't know if it's Ramy or Remy. I've just been pronouncing it both ways and hoping I'm right some of the time. Come back into the middle of the map. You get to turf and build your special. But like if that crab comes up big, they've got to push. Oh man. Okay, good jump from next. Why is not to contest it? Lead, power nice, and they get the cooler for landing on it too. Up, trying to provide whatever support that she possibly can, and gets out of there because the zip caster was coming in hot. Mm -hmm. Under three minutes left at this point, and now we've gotten to a little. I don't know. You might see some other players here, try to take some sudden, shots there two members go down on the, the goblin zip caster, but advances forward. Man, it never feels like a maybe they're trying to preserve cooler charge. That would make sense. Goblin simply trying to find stability in the center of the map, but there's been none thus far. Sanku fires more There's in there, so many Jordan. Clams. They have enough clams to end this right now. One more will get the job done, but nobody is up left near it. You'll see a couple grab, but they are grabbing it back from spawn. So the Greasy Goblins will continue to fight another day. Oh, my God, but Sanku. a tough fight it will be. Yeah, just one point away with a 29-point penalty. It's just going to take one yeah, more Yeah, they called Sanku their ace. The and next. I think that now makes sense from the way that they're playing here. Sanku's just, like, taking a 1v2 and winning. Their muscle, show their dominance. As and the it's a smart 1v2. It's not like they're they're, they're throwing moment. themselves out yeah, there. They're using so cover to block to themselves out when you have to build up from one of those players. Two, two minutes left. Yes, they're still and doing just time, enough damage to get, get the, the splat and then getting out. Goblins would love to get some real value out of each of their pushes. That crab tank has to rotate all the way back there. Three members are bunched up. You know at least that Phantom Thief has an idea of where the members of Greasy Goblins are. That means they're going to be able to make their attack based on that. Now the Greasy Goblins have done a good job of at least moving up and getting some sort of pressure forward. But with one zip cast, that was just a beautiful team fight from Phantom Thief. Under 90 seconds oh left, it's God. the wipeout, and all of a sudden, Phantom <sighs> Thief is going to go for the KO. They get the win. A wow. one, two, three sweep 
to the Very finals, impressive. and all of a sudden they are looking like a dominant force. They have yet to drop a single. So game first, in this what I was told is, oh, these and guys aren't, you know, the top the players in to Japan. Certainly living up to the jackpot wow. can totally beat them. The then I heard, okay, well, they're a turf war super team, right? That's their specialty. That's very, very happy. That's what got them through Koshin. As they should Not necessarily be. what he'd get through the them through the ranked modes. Tip of the cap to you, my that looked like an elite level team playing the ranked modes. Like it feels like they still have very good game plans here. Great job for them for winning the set. You know they're going to use this to try to build and become. I think they definitely have better game plans than Jackpot does. It's going to be up to Jackpot to find mechanical outplays or just swarm in. That sets and up our final. win fights that way. Jackpot that had to go to game five, a reverse sweep. They were down 0-2 before they rattled off. Based on what I've seen, I'm calling Phantom Thief the favorites. A dominant Phantom Thief team that is yet to drop a game in this tournament. Something will have to give North America versus Japan in our final best of seven. And that's going to change yeah. up some of the map and mode rotation. GG's to the Greasy yeah, Goblins for sure. Games now, which is a tall like, task my heart goes out to the state of Splatoon in, so in AUNZ. Like, I hope you guys are still able to grow and, and find people to learn with and, and, you know, Rainmaker, Manta Marine, find that top level practice that bridge, those guys are looking for. At Crab Lake Capital. And if it goes but, to Game uh, 7, it's Turf War. They've made a lot of really important contributions to the game in that scene. Wide ranging map mode list here uh, kind of looking at this there are some very awkward ones that aren't played a lot tower control on brine water and hey we've got some that some top level brush play tower has to take. we can get people to watch really only one spot it can go and i can finally be like hey there's another brush player i know to recommend now specials up <laughs> at the right time splat zones flounder heights jordan it's just been so long since we've seen it in any kind of big tournament out heavy splat zones maps at least at this all level platoons and clam blitz mako mart i mean it can just get ugly there everyone's <laughs> fighting in the middle of the mart Okay, um, I'm going to pause real quick and just take a look at the map list here. Uh, Tower, Brinewater, that's a really strong um, stamper map. Lots of really interesting Zipcaster spots. So that'll be a test of like Leafy versus Tsukuyomi, assuming that that's what they play there. Zones Flounder is very common in NA competitive play. Um, so we'll have pretty good practice with that they'll probably run like multiple bucket at least one bucket uh clam mako mart japan from what i've seen tends to play a lot differently than what i've seen from na but jackpot does have a lot of practice in japan so that could be really interesting uh rainmaker manta favors aoe sanku is going to be really good there Zones Hammerhead. I feel like Jackpot could have a good game there. That's going to be really good for Pencil. Um, not that they don't have a Pencil on the other side, but Dot Q is going to be able to shine there. It's good for, like, Crabs. Jared might run Dooleys or something. Um, Crab Lake Tower. Why are they running Crab Lake Tower? Okay, the, the last two games are silly, but... He played yeah. once, first he him thief and so early thoughts as we take a look tower trying to catch back up here hey uh, play, play button Zuko weapon so play button Everybody else as far as there what you're trying to accomplish and what we've seen so far is that tactical ft4 so means first to four well. Try in other words best of seven had as much of an impact on things as far as key plays that we've seen but you know it's going to rear its head here soon well absolutely it's one of those constants almost like for those people oh you can just click the, the live Mario button Kart World championship earlier listen those lightning you bolts are going to rain down button. at some point and you're just going to have to doesn't do anything happens because you can't react to it and same is true for trizuka here you always get one free shot on the opponent where they have no idea that it's coming at them there so you kind of wonder if both sides it's going to happen and it comes out in the wash and you just hope that you aren't the one who gets hit by the unfortunate shot at the worst possible moment. And nine, it's been a long journey. For I just clicked on the live button. It didn't do it. It didn't do anything. Course, jackpot. They won. There's no button. Championship in North America. Almost eight. I tried ago. multiple times. And Only when it's behind. Oh, be yeah. Coming eventually. Here we are. We get it done in April. And for fan, this was going to be coming. I'm behind now. Here we are. We get it done in April. And nine, it's been a long time. Oh, okay, there. I just need to go further back. And so it's a gray icon here. 
when you can click it, and it's red when you can't. Thank you for the lesson. Now beginning your best of seven series to claim the title of best Splatoon 3 team in the world, the first world championship we've had for Splatoon 3. Jordan, there's only first one world championship we've had since right, Splatoon 3 came one. out. Because no matter what happens, with COVID, we what other championship may come or go, world championship stays forever. And I know these players have been grinding. The jackpot players have said this is jackpot have won the, the best splat world championship. I think it's like platinum cup Splatoon. I think is the name of the, the TOs for that. Of Phantom Thief of the Heart. But they have I not won. No NA team, team has won media an official Nintendo world championship. <laughs> steal the world championship. I believe it's always been Japan. We'll steal your hearts as well. Yeah. So they're feeling great about their chances here. And uh, after that last set, I don't blame him. But, man, we're going to see some hearts fly out there today. Yeah, the name is certainly fitting as they get set. And really, if you take a look at our first four games, it's Tower Control, Brian Water Springs, Splat Zones, and Flounder Heights, Clam Blitz, and Mako Mart. And then again, a lot of these maps are not maps Nancy that you would run in an NA tournament. They're not maps that, like, the Western scene would want to see. What's it going to be like when you go against a team as talented as either but Phantom Thief or Jackpot? Jackpot's going to yes, have prepared have for them. Scrims, but this is different when you're going against yep. a team this organized and this competent. Yeah, yeah, game speed. And I, I think the the thing that always comes back in Splatoon, again, I, I kind of talked about it earlier, this idea of... And after the finals, the Nogami will come out and announce Sheldon's picks. Right. <laughs> it's something that's common across lots of different team games, lots of different teams. I was expecting they were going to do something before finals, finals just like right before they get into it. quickly make do with the information that you have and get to a better position, right? And you saw or maybe there's just not going to be anything. Who knows? Would take one player out, they would move up to the next spot to play for the next 10 seconds in the game. You can't play reactive in a game like Splatoon. It's simply too quick. It really is, and we've seen how important speed is. In fact, that was something you said that the North American teams learned from some of the Japanese teams. We have got to up our movement speed. We are not moving at the pace that they are. We've got to change that or else we're going to be left behind. Yeah, and you can't hitch, right? When we say improve your movement, it's not like they're tapping a button to move faster here. We're all moving at the same speed, provided you wear enough swim speed up. But <laughs> it's, again, that mental side of recognizing I took this player out, now I go here. Or my teammate yep. this said is there's two players a good on this side of the map. I need, go, I need to go here. It's, it's amazing. The, the processing speed that these there is certainly have, movement optimization that does <laughs> that's for sure show so between you get the team set up they'll make elite level elite le the elite level players and say like finals, mid-level players like they of course have I've had situations where we were up against like FT win or something and they just like popped the rainmaker before I could even put a bomb on it that team that um, that first championship and Sometimes they just get, get there faster, in, but it's a, it's a big moment for it is also a very big deal tell to that that you want, have the the, the mental with the stakes right flow chart in the middle of it. Of best calm yourself. And this just happened, therefore I do this, this and like having that be your muscle memory, having that just be automatic. <sighs> no matter what sport you so play, that that's the question, yeah. right? I mean, you're I think that taking advantage of every chance you get as fast as possible. When greatness is pushed up against a wall, that's when you really see what the peak of it is. That's where the absolute determination, that's where all of the practice that they've come through and the instinct comes forward. There's no more outthinking yourself at that point. You just act, right? For Phantom Thief, I don't know that they've had to answer that question yet. Yeah. They felt so comfortable as they played through here that they certainly haven't had to worry. Let's set the table for the finals. Out of all the teams across the world, it comes down to these two and a best of seven for the title of world champion of our sport. Okay, looks like they're going to have an introduction sequence for them. 2024, North America versus Japan. All for the title of champion and for the hardware right there. It is the finals that are finally here after all the months of waiting. Can we hear the yelling that was just happening in the background? Just hit the stage. without someone talking over it, please. I want to hear that Jack performance. Boss, the favorites from North America that had to battle back from down 0-2. But maybe a Listen giant that. was awoken when you that saw guy's going Kaiser nuts. really start to push their buttons. Are they the ones that can claim the first ever championship, a world championship for Splatoon 3, or will it be the home team that has looked steely, that has looked unbeatable? They haven't dropped a game yet in this tournament. It'll be Phantom Thief of the Heart getting set to take center stage. He's sweating. Let's go. 
confident and steady. Throw the heart sign up there, Sukiyomi. We know you intend to steal it from us. Don't flash us the heart when you're here to steal it and steal a championship here at the Splatoon 3 World Championship 2024. Jackpot, who had a tumultuous run to get here. Phantom Thief of the Heart, who's had a perfect run with three knockouts to get to this stage. You could not have- It does deserve to be said, routes Jackpot to had the harder side of bracket today. Like this I think Kaiser was head and shoulders format. above this is everything you could hope the for uh, other teams. Four the long um, games Smart Roast Chickens win, and Unadon and wild. even the Goblins. And what's at stake for both these teams? Well, what it would mean for a North American But that's just what you get for being the one seed. Arguably for the first time since the World Inkling Invitational in 2017. Boy, the world's changed a lot since then. Boy, has it. Or if you are Phantom Thief. What does that say? That message to the rest of Japan, teams questioning whether or not you belong, saying maybe you got lucky to get in here. You win a world championship. Nobody has anything they could say to you. No, and it, it's great that you bring those up because for North America, it's a sign that you have finally ascended to a level that... Ten times funnier to have buddy screaming with two yes, guys calmly like chatting, said, yeah. 2017, winning in a newer game that hadn't yet to be released. There's always that question about that championship. Now it's a game that has been open and on the market for a long time. You could achieve a height that nobody else in North America has. And like you said, for Phantom Thief, this is a reminder that the deep, deep pool of talent that Japanese Splatoon has that can produce a world I really need to be. threat and competitor from so I'm going to go do that super duper quick base before game one both. starts, right? So You're not allowed to start, okay? Don't you start leave. Time. And you, again, folks, the fireworks should be fantastic here between these two teams. And the biggest question for Jackpot, what is Dot Q going to use? That yep. Snipe Rider, they were undefeated when she chose that. However, when you started to drift away from what your tried and true weapon is, that's when they dropped their first two games against Kaiser. And again, that's nothing against Kaiser. Kaiser is wow. a very talented team. And that, they're a team that, in fact, they're the only team, I believe, that came close to taking a game from Phantom Thief of the Heart. But that was Turf War. And that's Kaiser's least effective mode. Yeah, it's, I don't know, Doc Q's weapon choice here, I think we'll get an idea of pretty, pretty quickly. Because I think every Splat Zones map that comes out, you're going to see her switch back to that. And I would wager Clam Blitz as well. The question is going to be Tower Control and Rainmaker. Is that where it's going to come out here, or are they going to have Jared switch back to the end zap and be their provider? The answer to that question is going to be big. Because of the arrangement of this, Jordan, as you noted, you're going to have to play each mode a couple of times before you get to the very end of it. So whatever her answer is, you could end up playing a bulk of this set with her off of that Snipe Rider. And... That's going to be very, very interesting as well for Aru on Phantom Thief side. Yeah, not a welcoming proposition at all for Jackpot. I think you want your players to be on the weapons that they feel the most confident in. But sometimes the situation in the mode doesn't call for that. But you see the relaxation. And I still feel nine. Kaiser poked the barrel. Okay, thank you. You oh, can start. Jackpot, now. they're normally pretty reserved. We have never seen them show that type of emotion in a non-championship. Don't worry, I washed my hands. So here we go. Tower control. Game one of our finals of the Splatoon 3 World Championship 2024. Who will Range take the Blaster. first step closer to becoming a champion? They haven't played that at all yet, yet today. Ready? Go! It is tower control. It makes sense. Started here. Madness has and Madness would be the first to, to play. Okay. Blaster. Okay. Jared on that makes sense. Dulies, and that and then Dot Q they've been nasty on over. that Rapid Pro. Dot oh, Q and that God. Snipe Rider, but already two members for Jackpot go down as Phantom Thief. And they're going to lose another Quickly one here. I don't the think they get out without jumping. The first push at this moment. Yeah. As oh, my down God. Down they go in their spawn. Living at their that's spawn disgusting. was a member of Phantom Thief, and that's going to buy them some oh, precious no. time to get to the first checkpoint. 20? 20 seconds? That's how long it took them to okay, get Okay, good trade from Madness. That actually saves them a lot of time. Sukiyomi will forward on that time. Sanku has already taken another one out. Jackpot set two I need to remember that move. The to try to okay, they take out Sanku. on the back of that. They've already moved over here to this next checkpoint, Jordan. They are so far ahead. Leapy is the only person who can work on the tower from a melee side. Not like this. Is the game going to end already? No. Nope, they nope. get past they got three the down. checkpoint there we go. and get a wipeout. But what an explosive okay. start to this game. And if you're Jackpot, you're just happy the game's still on. Phantom Thief 
nearly the more chances they get to figure out how Jap Jackpot how the Japanese team is taking the fights, but now here comes Jackpot's opportunity the to be more the opportunities they're going to have to adapt. They are just trying to get on the board. They finally get to the first checkpoint. They are coolered up, but mm. again, another splat on the other side by Zukiyomi, and that's going to give a 3-3 set on the map. They don't even the get the checkpoint for this. The nice they just need to survive. Is this is a map on yeah, I don't, I don't like trading for this. Your chance to throw your I especially don't like having the range opponent. blaster in that so close. So as long as Jackpot is slow and steady and doesn't give up the knockout here, they're going to get a chance. But right now, they just don't seem to have any answers for this Phantom Thief squad. You saw three members go down for Jackpot, and here is Phantom Thief already setting the table. Zipcaster ready to go for some. Oh, they just kind of moved down in. they go to the <laughs> suction bomb. That'll take out two members now of Phantom Thief. And again, I know I use the expression fall on a bomb a lot here, but you can see just how much that changes things there, where Sukuyomi goes down there to that small little accidental play, and the whole attack falls apart as they a result They need to help Jared here. They need to hit shots over there. Okay, they got one. Member here, so they're going to have their presence on the center of the map. But okay, okay, nice. In such a hurry. It really can. Under three minutes left. This is oh, great. That's this is a great. Big pick there they're for slowing Jackpot. it down. They're taking they take it methodically. Out two members. Tower's moving forward. They've got the first checkpoint they out of the way. Respectfully, they need to not just dive in. Make up some ground. You see Toya up top. So Super now is when we get a fast push. Down goes Zonku as well. We got one, yep, got two. two big fighters. That's three Beautiful. down now. And the last one simply has to jump out. Now they're going to have that checkpoint there. That they and can they've got another special. The they've got a side. zip caster. Just Beautiful. Out the tactic cooler at the perfect time. And with Leafy fighting all the way ahead there, they're going to have to oh dive my God. in a hurry. One goes down. Did it buy enough time? That's there my jackpot. They take the lead. That's my NHL. Jackpot wrestles back the lead. They are threatening a KO, but then they're Oh track. my god, let's Down go! go get back on, get back on! Jackpot, they have an opportunity here! It is just Sanku uh, trying to on, keep things alive. No, oh, we lost so much time there. Phantom Thief. It's Jackpot putting all the pressure here down the stretch. Crab take up top. Is Jackpot going to get the game knockout? Game over. Yes, they do in game one. That's what I was saying. I told you, you they get your survive enough of those fights. They figure the out how Phantom Thief chance. are trying to approach them. Oh, Jordan, once they got and they adapt and they outplay. Right in the middle of that push as they were approaching it. That's when you knew they were, they were taking it a little to too fast early on. Eventually going to they slowed it down. They worked they their way in. They didn't feed. And nine. Good stuff, Jackpot. That's what I'm talking Jackpot about. Showing that if you ink the and that's thieves, when they can be this splatted. is when they need that's to be the getting their wins. They need to be getting them early the so that it doesn't go to the turf war at end. And all of a sudden, they were going to have to deal with a little bit of adversity. And that was remarkable. It looked like it was all Phantom Thief to start this game. They got as far to 20 in their initial push. But then all of a sudden, Jackpot, they look like the Jackpot that we were so accustomed to seeing where they just are all on the same page and you can't take them apart. That was an unbelievable turn of events in just that first game. Well, and it's such a difficult map to defend on, too. I mean, I hope that was very evident given how both of these two teams attacked. At a certain point, there's just nowhere for you to go to hit the tower. And for the members of Phantom Thieves, there was only one so map they had. I think Jackpot have shown the tower from that there are the some map modes so where they have really better game plans than others. To that point, but that's Brinewater Tower Control in a nutshell. And but I, I think they're also adapting on the fly the during the tournament. So there might be some parts of their game plan that just kind of get adjusted as they go. As familiar with, or maybe that just aren't good for them to be in. So Jackpot, as ugly as it got there at the start, the second they had that defense, they were telling themselves, okay, we're still alive. Let's just keep going. Once we get our turn, we think that we can attack better. Here yeah, madness the popped off for a moment, in that fight. Like Phantom Thief was going to stop anything that Jackpot was doing, but this push right here. They got they advantage from that, and then God, the the, the be pace coming up here of play as at that moment down, was absolutely elite the level. It did, the Zipcaster right is going out at exactly the moment that the the, the cooler is coming out, which is happening at exactly the moment the enemy team is spawning. Then the cooler jumps come back in on the back of it, and that's why cooler is a necessary special to have on an elite level team, so that you have a team remaining after all that fight happens. Just God tier right there. Heights coming up next that last leg of the push was, was as good as you're going to see split the game of Splatoon out. 3 played. Mm -hmm. And I go back to the emotion. It, it's a real thing. As Kaiser was talking a lot of mess over the first two games, that awoken something in Jackpot, a ferocity that we haven't seen in them in a long time. And I think it exuded itself in that second half of the game. <sighs> I mean, at this point, 
any emotion that they could have felt, they felt over the course. <laughs> I'm of getting season. excited. I'm getting a little bit of those I mean, jitters, at the very right? Beginning stone cold with absolutely like, nothing that they could possibly There's a feeling of really intense relief at that point that you get after a game like that. Hope that you get a game and that you get to have a conversation. Like you don't know how it's going to go and then it goes well and you're like, "Okay, we got this." But you can't be thinking we've got this. You've got to be thinking, "Okay, the next mode is going to be this. The next map is going to be this. This is the game plan where I'm going to be playing this weapon. This is what I need to warm up in the lobby." Like There's nothing left for them to feel at this point. You got to just go next. All the bases so far and there's still so much left to play. As we said, coming up next, Splat Zones, Flounder Heights. You said this is one of those big snowballing Splat Zones games where if you go ahead and get the zone first, you have a chance zones to flounder. Really run away with it. Well, it's just so hard to this is going to be dangerous for Sanku. Well, or, I mean, dangerous against Sanku. This is the single best bucket map in the game. And Sanku is like the quote-unquote ace of the Phantom Thief team. If you get pushed back in the opponent's and he's a bucket player. underneath your side, you can lose a game in a hurry. Kind of like we saw in that tower control game, Jordan. You can see how snowfally and how quickly some of these games can turn no matter It's how a very weird map mode because one of the primary ways of getting back onto the zone is actually dropping someone on the opposite side on the enemy team's side and securing their zone first, forcing them to back up so that your team can push in to get your zone. Because if you have to push uphill out of your own spawn, that's way harder than if you already have the high ground. People have to ask when they come into this is do we go a little longer range what do we switch some of our weapons over to here do we play some more burst damage type of weapons do we play a carbon roller here there's so many interesting answers on this map because of not only the range but the verticality you need weapons that can poke from low ground but you right, also here we go. need weapons that have a little range in order to counteract that here we go game two of the finals jackpot versus phantom thief can jackpot build a 2-0 lead or will phantom thief tie it up 52 with the wall zones? flounder heights they don't oh, have a ton of paints on this comp. Well, I was gonna say an it's mostly duck Q. From one side, but Phantom Thief Jordan has completely changed up their composition here. Sugiyomi has switched over to the Splatana Wiper, which is a very powerful. And Dynamo weapon. is definitely a thing here, and they're gonna get cooler from it. It's dangerous on lockout. All over the other side, but the game's already started, so we're gonna talk about. All of these decisions make sense so on the part of Phantom Thief. I'm surprised to see Wiper personally, but jackpot, maybe it's for the vision. Maybe it's so that they know where people are we'll see how they play this is such an interesting and jared just gets on top of them and destroys them there so many different areas that you can approach them so yeah, still jackpot advantage but they've got jumps coming in kind of conjugates here and two people jumped right into that side they could have both been taken out there one of them managed to get away i believe it was sukuyomi but that could have been the start of the snowball how gets away. Instead, is this a 2v4 where they have the zone it's jackpot okay. who will have the first real look at a lockout on this side jordan and this is where it gets scary one has already gone down for them and the others are pushed back yeah madness goes Goes down however the score continues to move they'll get the some points from this it probably won't be ko unless they win another down. fight but but that stamper is going to keep this is a good position to be in for a little bit longer oh Bob i don't know why you stay the there against the hammer yeah, you gotta know that they're trying something. just a little bit too long in that position and that is going to be a big oh, wipe out there wow. maybe leafy thought wow. that they were going to drop over the side and instead they attacked from below that's a smart mix up madness dies to that oh there's no way to force the other members oh that's crazy further if they want but you see phantom I don't like that they're like trying to run in with madness face first. Like that's just gonna get hit with a bucket, isn't it? Or not? Or Sanku overextended? It's an interesting choice to make. They were firing at opposing players that were in different positions. There. Madness knows better than me. All right. In that spot, but they and I mean, no paint. In very methodically there, so it's smart of Phantom Thief to be putting people down in trench in these really situations where they're behind to they stall out. To but the out problem there, is Jackpot is just diving down this there and picking off jumps. Against a slashing machine and will actually get a trade there. So nicely yeah. done there. Sukiyomi is up here as Good well stalling to catch there. the player who jumps in. Because, like, the score hasn't been ticking this entire time. Sukiyomi, two splats in a row. How about the individual effort by them to take control of this game so far? Jackpot had a moment, but Sukiyomi so, like, shut the door on that. That's something that uh, Chara talks to me about once. Like, 
And they're looking if to you're going to go down, members go down the top of that somewhere oh, man, that's really annoying to try and be really annoying to dive into. Because then they don't get to play the objective during the time that they're splatting you and your team gets back, especially in cooler meta. Yeah, Ducky wins that. They missed too many shots. That's a critical splat as Jackpot and able to good awareness on Dot Q to know that it was going to happen. But, but they still don't. Thief Here's something I'm a little worried about with the, the Jackpot the comp. They don't have a lot of paint. And now they have a lot of fighting power, but they kind of just have to like win a full team fight on the board to get to the zone. Four for Jackpot. Good it's fight going from Jared. Back and this moment. Yeah, and that player goes down now unless they jump. Beautiful. Okay. They get lead now. Reflex is not going to be able to hold back these main weapons. And this is the dangerous spot here. Madness swimming forward. Dot Q turfing forward to allow for that approach here this oh my god that's so huge blow open this position oh Instead, but they didn't hit anything find anybody they will take the lead but there it is hard they were all coolered up so they're gonna move right fast now, Thief has a they're gonna dodge everything to push back but in. these specials just to paint too much here. but Sukuyomi goes down that's their main attacker on that side Jordan and you saw the splatter color screen there's no way that jackpot holds their zone uh, the, the, well the enemy too, zone here Oh, with Jared soldiers. down, this is over. over. a minute left, 37-52 advantage for Jackpot. Now, all of a sudden, Phantom Thief is in control. I love Dot Q going up and taking that pick, though, recognizing really that everyone's going to be in the trench and won't actually Q fight her. That heavy edit splatling. She is sitting back there and simply turfing this side. You see that Sanku just has to risk life and limb in order to Because, like, the Dynamo sort of doesn't have the same long-range pressure that jackpot, the, the head it has. Focus on covering your zone. Dot Q you can kind of just bully. More risk trying to get both zones, I imagine. No, and that's why Dot Q hasn't done it. Is gonna have go like some massive KA at the end with of this game, to take that even if they out. lose. Finally, they have fought their way through, but they're taking a lot of damage. And oh doing no, it. Sukiyomi does get the revenge shot. We there needed to not lose side. Leafy there. Jordan, these points are gonna start flying up the board. Jackpot this is gonna be lead. Plenty of time. Question Watching is, can they get the zone capped back? Slowly try to move back. However, this is not the situation they want to be in. They need something big. Nine, all of a sudden, Jared's able to get up there and put a pause on things. That was huge. However, now the lead That's goes back to Phantom no. Thief with 15 seconds Jared, left. if Jared, Jared caps and then doesn't die, on that he's fine. Them long if Jared gets a pick or two, left, just he's fine. Try to go for the neutralize to get into overtime. Sanku no, fights forward and it. takes control back. There's still pandemonium on the zone, but with one second left, Phantom Thief makes good on it. And even though things could effort. have gotten away from them there, they held like, on. Game plan wasn't bad or anything. There for just Yomi there. Uh, kind of burying the lead here, Jordan. That was one of the most fights didn't go their way right when, right at the end when I they needed to. There. Dynamo roller, we don't see a lot. No. Reflux outside of turf war, we don't see a lot. And even Sukuyomi changed over to another version. Yeah, that that map mode is specifically one of the niche so use cases for Dynamo, they, they even back when Dynamo was not that good. In the middle of the moment, um, like one, one Cooler has Dynamo. made Dynamo a lot better. So many moments but even before then, this is one of the places where you could still see a Dynamo. Because what the Dynamo does on lockout is it sits in that area up where .Q is. Is, but a little, you know, back in the corner, and like attacks over the wall so that nobody can use that zone. area. However, they just got to show. Um, I mean, easier said It also than done, right? paints when pretty well in like one swing on the zone. On that top right I perch, think you can at least like neutralize with a single flick. On, but once Dot Q went down, the great shots from the maybe even Cap. Atoya, Everything else became that much more difficult for them to move in. Jared, with this incredible attempt to move through there, Raul, though, turned around just in time. Yeah, no, that, that doesn't work at all unless you're out of range of the Dynamo. So meeting threats on both sides. You can see why that Dynamo roller can still like, get Like, that's, that's a play that you need to make to get in behind them and take their zone. There from Phantom Thief. But you got to back further up once set. you've got the zone capped. For the time being, that's what we've got. Well, it guarantees another spot. Wasn't a lot of time for Jared to do what he had to do. Five, and that'll be at Hammerhead Bridge here shortly. But up next... Clam Blitz and Mako Martin. The real answer was not to be in that position in the first place as a team. Going on in the middle of this map. But so far, what we've seen from both teams is that there's some vulnerability for sure. And it seemed like Jackpot was in control for most of that game. There's just that last final push that we saw from Phantom Thief where they're able to force Dot Q out of that perch, lost the leverage that changed everything for Jackpot. Absolutely. And sometimes it is that simple. Some weapons are very strong in some positions. And when you get them out of that, they're not as strong. All right. As certain and that's one of the reasons so. why Flounder Heights in particular can be such a difficult. What was it? Mako Clams? Mako Clams. Just has a much better position. You've got the high this one I'm really interested to see. Were, it can be um, so difficult to fight a literal uphill I've battle, seen, we've now seen heavy midline comps be successful here from, like, 
they look top strong, Japanese teams. Fights their way back, I'm curious whether teams. that's like I know is we would love because it was Nyagora that was playing. Oh, I'm man. curious whether that was Nyagora flexing so because that's just what Nyagora plays, here, we talked or if it was what do you like about this more of like the Japanese meta Both on that really like map mode. <laughs> that's the the thing I have um, noticed thus far, and any time you have a messy map mode But uh, we're probably going to be seeing Leafy's Stamper here. Or you can bet that it's going to be very difficult um, for anybody who's trying to Clams. Spectate. And you can also bet that it's going to create some <laughs> What is that Q play here? here? But something specifically about the Clams... It isn't the best Charger map. Is this is one of the shortest basket-to-basket -basket paths. I could see it being like E-Leader. I could see it being it Pencil. Five seconds I don't know. To hard to say. One side of this map to the other which means that if you risk everything to get a big score out I could see headed actually exact same to you in a hurry really fascinating concept there because we've seen the last we'll couple of clam blitz opportunities it's taken a while for teams to get back into things and try and have that response when they get their own power clam so this is going to be one of those electric matchups that you just imagine will be a lot of mayhem in the middle and for phantom thief of the heart what we've seen from them so far is just the ability, their pushes are so strong, especially at the tail end of that game, the first game as well, too, at the beginning. This is a team that will try to go for that knockout punch when they get that opportunity. You've got to be very, very careful if you are jackpot. Well, yeah, and the angles at which... I'm waiting for an angle to, to see what you guys are talking about with the uh, the English the, lettering, the or the pseudo-English, like, squid lettering. To get into it. And then Sanku, like, squeezing through two or three players... Fighting okay, the leg bouncing doesn't mean anything. My leg is bouncing well, like that. That's what is really interesting at this top level is, okay, we all know the conventional stuff. We all know where the powerful positions on the map are. Now, what do you do with that information? What angles do you take into fights to throw off where your opponent's coming from? And there's been some great creativity from these teams thus far. There's the bell. That's the chime. It means it's time for game three of our finals. It's tied at one Get that one, drink of water quick, Madness. Get, 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 get your controller back up. Come on now. Go to the store and pick up a dub. We'll find out as we get okay. a chance to take our first glimpse at the couple of loadouts. The finals continue as we get set to go on Mako Mart. Tent umbrella, Jordan. It is out from Leafy. Leafy on Just tent. Okay. This okay, this makes sense. Some time, and I knew we'd see it at some point. And today. had it. On the other side, Rapid Pro on the other side is going to be dangerous around that tent. Now instead going back over to that if he tried to yeah, flank and they just get deleted them, but wasn't able to yeah the job they needed to follow up as soon as levy started firing and they, they just weren't there well. in time this didn't have targets just picked as poorly for jackpot at the start so yeah not a great start could. madness desperately needs to win madness gets a trade that's good a trade. and this but guy got result, probably goes down right right oh my god they need to get them it's not a lot jackpot is fine in this position but you can see how scary this map can be beautiful let's go levy they're gonna get a power clam three splats all of a sudden they they have three clams this is not Gonna happen yet. The momentum with the free oh. power clam that'll drop. Yeah, Rapid Deco yeah, is disgusting right now against there. a couple Jared of the meta options. Great job, Jared. At least be able to score one power claim here yeah, Jared side. getting in there means that the tent gets That's to do whatever it wants for the next few seconds. Yeah. So this will be lead. Goes down there. There will it be a big lead? Oh, no. There was a bomb that Q dropped on. Is now back behind there. The threat and is then, yeah, Madness was a disadvantage there. Madness didn't have initiative. I don't know if it was worth it to dive in for all of those extra clams there. This is an elite level. Team, they punish you for that. Score on some of those okay, well, and if you we've just shoot two. them with the Zuka afterwards, it goes by quickly for sure. So the early lead right now for Jackpot, but certainly not safe at Mako Martin. Let's go ahead and check in as Madness goes down. Killer Whale 5.1 trying to apply a little bit of pressure. 52 kind of nice here. Phantom Thief, and here comes that coordinated push from our team from Japan. Yep, they get taken out there though. One player. Yeah, the 52 cannot 1v2 the crab against the bucket and somebody else. They got taken out. Jack good job, Madness. Let's go. Great Just clean that up, and we're good. Nice. Oh, Madness is so sword. cracked. Gets one down, but three will emerge over one every time. Sukiyomi goes down, and that was a huge pickoff, and all of a sudden, Jackpot building upon their lead. Yeah, Triple Madness got like three to set that, that's that try push up. Open things up. Couple more clams coming in. Leafy's able to fit one in as well, too. That builds up and to his Jared's diving, and they have to deal with Jared, and they get rid of the rapid pro. Let's go, Jared. Ones that oh my winning. god, Jared is so just good at this video game. Again, twice, and now we'll jump and just completely waste their time, there, jumps we'll out immediately in crab. So it's the same thing both this times, is the elite Jared level pace of play. They're doing so well right now. With those dualies and force these awkward fights Lost a couple players now, to something over there. I couldn't really see what. Should now have a good opportunity to move.q 
off of that power position as well. There's still plenty of time left. A couple of big scores will even this out, but Sukuyomi goes down once again. He's overextending just a little too much. And you see Phantom Thief having to retreat just a little bit. Araru trying Tsukiyomi to move is forward. Toya now with the 52, yeah. power clam. Okay. And they've got plenty of currency on their side. 16 total clams. Good collapse on Sanku. And all of a sudden, you've got to give Jackpot yeah. credit for trying to lock Phantom out Phantom Thief. Phantom Thief is Thief. taking you some should, pretty separated Toya fights got here. In behind them, and now they've gotten now in a position to score. They're not going to take That's the lead. That's a lot of clams, but is actually, don't they go just go down here. Continue. Unless. Oh, there. almost got through two oh, of them. Kind of gross. Kind of gross. That completely changes the dynamic here because now only one member is moved up there and it's madness now gives up his position yeah. there to try to fight they're probably out. okay Zonku. with oh big, my god big bit of the lead that has been pulled back i'm there. watching the one top of the screen plan. okay now, madness wins plan. those we'll madness 1v1 sanku let's go before we get to that See the it's like those kinds the of fights trying to march forward. where creating a little bit of a I feel like NA has a little bit of an edge. Aisle five. Like, and here comes if you just put yourself up against the clam, enemy they get team, it in, and now they've got to provide some supplementary claims. Like, you know, one v one or something. There they go into the penalty down to I feel like NA wins those more often. Push. Oh, down to four. They get another Jared power claim. Jared dies in. here though. A chance for a KO. Jared's just trying to waste as much time. Oh wait, wait, no leafy lands. That's going to shut the door. still alive. But how about that? They get all the way to four. And now it completely changes here because two power clams will put you nowhere close here. Three power clams won't even be enough here. So for Phantom Thief, you almost yeah, have they to need look at this 66 a points. Or one really Three power clams plus two is a crazy side. number. They, they very, basically very probably need to get to this either by wiping by jackpot the map here, or by making back. multiple pushes. One player they've gotten down here and, and they, they get one. Sukuyomi nice goes down here. On they probably side. score Sukiyomi off that time, but don't have the power that's okay yet. because There's of the big lead. Follow -up there. They, they do get didn't first score one, very quickly either. Down here, yeah, that's just wasn't easy to enough. clean up. And they had to use all of their specials, so how about the defensive standby jackpot under 20 seconds left? They've got the lead. They're trying this to is the lid working really well. Clam blitz battle and pull up Madness is popping off clam in possession of Phantom Thief, just trying because to like triple ink strike. He's Eight getting all these left. free shots of one off. One Jared diving They're and off Leafy Jackpot putting the tent out the for defense. them to shoot at. One second left. All of a sudden, we're going to head to overtime. Okay. Phantom Thief is going to have to have the push. Why of do we have a power clam? As Jackpot is just trying to hold okay, on. Yeah. And they're going to have to find some clams. I mean, I guess well. they could threaten to try and score it. you got to get this one in, though. That's most of it already gone there. Sukiyomi is going to try to fight for it on this side, but it's taking Leafy too gets long. Two. And the okay. of Jackpot will rotate uh, over I think we win this. A couple more tips. <laughs> and Jackpot Leafy's going to be popping off from that, that Zuka double at the end, too. With that push where they got two power clams in to build the lead, <laughs> four to four. 49. That was the difference. Well played. And well jackpot played. moves to a We're two feeling good. one advantage, taking care of business on Calamblitz. And what a series of fights that it were to open that up. And man, that was just body blow after body blow. Both teams throwing it back. You get one more there, as jackpot, and you're feeling you pretty good. Get a little bit messy on that map mode. Make you, know, you bring it to a set point before scenario, we're anywhere near over the over turf war at the again, end. But for Jackpot there, their coordination, their willingness to slow down a little bit if it means assisting and closing out some of these players. They're not willing to let any members of Phantom Thief get in an awkward position that could be a thorn on their side. They are finishing their meal, as they say. I thought Jared was exceptional in this mm. game. Jared's ability to get behind the defense and to force yeah. a lot of situations. Everyone was honestly playing well, if on fire. Earlier, like Madness was popping Dot off, to be Leafy was hitting direct. Dot Q was giving them cooler when they needed it. For what Jared and is was holding it down on defense. Like, they all did their jobs. Slippery, winning these fights, and that's only possible when he's allowed to play some of these other weapons here. Great stuff here from the members of Jackpot. Yeah, it really had Phantom Thief out of sorts early on, and that's why Jackpot was able to take the offensive and then... We saw them build this big lead, and it was too little, too late. Not enough clams on the sub field. Sub gear format. The they they, they, they have no sub abilities. Mode. Mains it only. It starts to go downhill. So jackpot, an excellent job by them of really locking out Phantom Thief on such a short map as well, too. Phantom Thief never really had a sizable push at any moment. No, and when you get behind that bar, it also changes the way that you have to play in clam blitz as well right because earlier you heard me call out all right two power clams won't be enough now and the reason why we use that two power clam metric is because yep. that's really just like Koshin, of you can jump which is what phantom thief had to play to qualify 40 point burst 
and steal the lead back for yourself. I still think it's Once very goofy that, point, though, it has that to, a really, really long to qualify for this event, which is so mainly being decided in the ranked modes in the these final rounds here. This level, Phantom Thief only really had to play so Turf War. That's not really on the table. The only other option is getting everybody down on the opposing team and spawn camp them for an extended like, period. And all of the matches that, that they've played up up, up until this point were not so really a test Rainmaker, Manta, of... Maria, is it just Tsukuyomi? One that, again, you and I, both I saw everyone spelling it Tsukuyomi before. To, what do you expect to see here? Well, well, this is a map where the final 30... 35-ish, 40 points are very interesting. Is there that just is a, a typo? Drop down, and those of you who have played on Manta Maria know this, a drop down and a sprint to the goal. Mm -hmm. And you will see points go from 30 to zero like that. If both of these teams get there, it could be just one stray shot of ink that makes the difference between winning and losing on this map. Two different and romanizations? Oh, shame, interesting. Because if Jackpot wins, it essentially means Phantom Thief has to win three consecutive games, a 3-0 sweep, to take this championship. So this is huge. Phantom Thief. Yeah, I lack of quick super jump actually makes a huge difference. One sub of quick super jump going down is a wild amount of value. Give jackpot three opportunities. We saw how hard it is to win three straight against them as Kaiser looked like they were dominating them. Won the first two, then got swept the other way. Yep, and it's it's not an easy task to. From I'm curious to see what their uh, builds are once they jackpot get in here. Over and over again, but this is a longer, slower rainmaker map. You saw a little bit earlier how quickly some of these maps can end up going. This is not one. Also that saying Tsukuyomi. Slow. Now I say or that and I may have just curse okay. this game <laughs> with the way that these teams are attacking, but I hope we'll get to see. Okay, thank you, a Guster. Nice, good, lengthy rainmaker game here. I trust Guster. Guster translated that uh, video from the other day for me. So you've been impressed with the way that each team has shown a different kind of result. They might get down, but then they scramble. Take this home jackpot. We need to go to bed. <laughs> to ensure that they can for the sleep of your nation. They have to do in order to get that victory. Yeah, it's, again, the players here, even on both sides, smiling a little bit, kind of knowing, like, all right, that game got away from us. It, it happens here. This is what it looks like when you're playing against a team at your level. Some of these fights aren't going to go your way, but be interesting to see here, Jordan. Phantom Thief has changed a lot from a compositional standpoint game to game right now. No surprises here from the side 52 of 52 in machine. On this side, it does I'm surprised. I don't know about you. Over to the stamper here. The crab tank variation of the stamper. An interesting choice. Yeah, okay, so A no one's running any quick super jump. Four on Except for Sanku. Maria. Here we go. Jackpot trying to build a monstrous 3-1 leader. Can Phantom Thief tie it up and force at least This is a, a very... Six. Both teams Stally comp this is essentially here from Jackpot. Really part of Rainmaker. What are these teams trying to do? Well, they're trying not to create the big mistake here. You I kind of like how they keep Some running down, but you need the heavy edit here. Or because, like, resource there. if they're not going to have to challenge now, the, the, the uh, enemy backline with the range of the pencil, it lets the heavy edit play a little more aggressively and add another person into the fight. right now. Probably know where he's at there, but man, this guy is so good at hitting these awkward spots. Now you're looking that way. The Trizuka comes out. They're dangerously close to once again getting through this first checkpoint after this jump. And they're trying to go through that jump, which is one of those. Nobody knows where anybody is. You can tell so so well from moment, so Jack the way that they're moving. Think their strategy sounds like they might let that Rainmaker respawn as they fortify and look at all the yellow ink here as they just claim so almost makes you want to consider having something yeah, with that's a the one thing that's point sensor the sometimes in that spot yes you can defend it but you always have to have something at least looking on that side. oh my god Leapy has been oh that was terrifying that oh my god double yes, splat looking for three no almost way an unbelievable Another third of it oh my god that snap pressure. is so crazy and it hit one just shot just didn't oh, get the last one shark that long that's the best case scenario that you're hoping for there and now with jared over there they are going to be able to move for it and they do get through that first checkpoint jordan we know how yeah, they don't care that they lose that player. The they scored. Dynamic. And another one goes down. Leafy is going crazy this game. And you see Tsukiyomi go oh down my God, by Leafy. the Rainmaker at that first checkpoint. That's a sizable lead for Jackpot. And now they can really Leafy focus their defensive effort. just diffing them right there. To, but they would love to move it a little bit further. And now Tsukiyomi up top trying to jump down low. Feeling pressure from all the angles. Avoids the, it feels, goes it really feels like there's a lot less of a game plan here out. from... However, 
down Phantom they Thief. go. It's a wipeout though for Phantom Thief. And I cannot like, they tell didn't you know how, how to sweep through was. and clear their in your alleyway, street. One of them with a Trizuka, and you don't give up a single point beyond the checkpoint, and you get the checkpoint on the other side. Oh my goodness, Phantom Thief! What more do you have? Fighting takes down Jared. They should get something the needs to get what interrupted here. What a turn of here. events by Phantom Thief! They were there we on go. the Plank, okay. getting ready to walk goes down. Oh, no, they didn't. Now they're knocking they on the door Leafy. to try and take the lead. However, and Madness gets one. traded, so now they're going to get jumps in on the shield and bunker, and it's, and it's not over yet. An advantage still for Jackpot. They're going back and forth, trying to pop this Rainmaker shield. They don't actually have the popping power there. there and advance the lead right up top. No luck with that ink back. Oh, they take out Radu. That was massive. And down goes Zanku. If they oh, find man, the zap here, they have no cooler. Yeah. Toya down. goes down. I mean, this is getting a little overzealous with these. They got them, right? Okay, they got them. The camera definitely moved away before that happened. Forward here. Jordan, the points are going to start to fall off here, and I have to wonder if Phantom yeah, Thief should They're just going to drop it down for three points. There, Makes sense. Oh, wait, the can they pop? Oh, they can fall. pop. Wait, they're that's insane. Even more points on this side. Still people fighting down to seven. Well played. Yeah, I got the sense that that's a winning push. Saw they were trailing by one. They were just trying to do anything they could to advance <sighs> that Rainmaker and take back the lead, but in doing so, how badly did they Phantom Thief them? just I feel mean, like they are playing blind. Like they do not know where Jackpot is, and they don't know what to do about that. When you wait just a little bit too long, you give your opponent... Like, they're not even sure if they can leave their streak because they're, they're not sure if Jared's back there about to very, KO them. Very quickly. And even now, you see Sukiyomi back okay, Leafy dies, not sure so that's a good pick for them. Jackpot is waiting by oh, but Leafy the traded. To maybe steal one or two more points this is a crab. They are going to need to touch the pedestal here. The bottom part of it is fine. They don't have to knock it out, but that's how close they're going to have to get yeah. if they want to take this game back. And if you're Jackpot... One minute left. You can think about playing some defense. Oh my god. Time this is clock, very scary. They've got a really strong position already. All of a sudden, okay. And the flank. Rainmaker still in hand. Oh, they do not but get the by splat 4 1 on the map. And it's a wipeout for Jackpot. Yep. And. The worst all right. part one is more one more defense. That's all they need. Seven there. One that more fight win. One more defense. Whatever it takes. Once two members Leafy went down is on already the in the somewhere they probably didn't expect. Done. They swim it forward just to try. And now look at this great oh. position there. Couldn't quite get the tries to get the spray. There. Beautiful. What a read. Oh my Connor god. Clean that up. And again, that's just like Leafy one v one. And it's another wipeout. Twenty that's seconds left, Jordan. Where they've got an They're advantage here. Forward here, and I don't even know how Phantom Thief's going to get into the center of the map. Jared, just that's all fine. over There's the There's a place. jump coming Green in that we can't. Ten seconds left. They've got to just try to hang on. Can Phantom Thief oh, organize one yeah, more push? you missed that no, slot, and you're just going to lose the game. And cornering Phantom Thief. There it is. Jackpot. They sense it. Yes. Jackpot all right. picks up the third game. And now they lead 3-1 in the best they of seven. two chances just one to win this set before they have the to play a deciding and turf war. Has now taken three this is best case scenario. Feet. And you've gone through all four modes to get here too. There are no more questions to be answered about if you prepped properly for the modes. Jackpot, they can sense it in this moment. And I, I want to again point out there that I don't think the game needed to be in... I don't think the game needed to be that dominant for Jackpot. It nope. was that one mistake where they put all their eggs in one basket to take that one point, and, you know, we caught it right here, came in here with the ink back to try to make it happen, super jumped everybody on that side, and it opened up everything from there. And I really think, Nine, when you see the one-point differential and just the thought of if we can just get the lead, all of a sudden we can play defense. I think yeah. losing their zap there was also really nasty because that means no cooler. And so now time was still remaining. the next fight you win, they don't jump in. They stay down for a long time. Jackpot. It's a completely different game. The final two minutes. Sure. And on top of that, like all the players who are rushing the rainmaker have the extra movement speed. Once to that point, it's in the day. Well, not at this point. I guess it's worn off now. Out a couple players. But it just gets away from yeah. you at that side. And it is all because they super jumped there in that side. And listen, I know you're trying to keep the pressure up. It's impossible to know. How but Leafy was also lose. popping off that game. The moment. Like, but it's just they never figured out where Leafy was coming from. Seen from the Phantom Thieves that Even when, like, they'd get a... Uh, toxic mist on Leafy to try and slow her down. She'd at least trade every time. And now you've got, like, the positions of two or three players from Phantom Thief revealed, and Jared and Madness can clean up after. Who was on the brink, down 0-2 against Kaiser. And it was the final 30 seconds, it felt like, of Turf War as well, too, in Game 5. They are standing on the precipice of a world championship.
They're going to have three opportunities to try and close it I out. get sports now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and you've given yourself this stuff is fun. the best this stuff is fun. to do so. Now, once again, we're going to see a run-through of the modes. These maps have all been predetermined. They've been set. No surprises at this Oh, Jared's point. tweeting? Only go oh, no. If it gets what is Jared tweeting? To game seven, but they're going to get another chance on tower control that they won on. They're going to get another Splat chance zones. on splat zones, which even though they lost on, I know Jackpot feels comfortable there. So we're going to start here, though. I mean, they, they put in something 43 minutes ago. Happened. Splat zones, Hammerhead Bridge. And a reminder, splat zones was game two on Flounder Heights, and that is the game <laughs> that phantom thief of the heart took off of jackpot and so both teams probably feel very confident here but hammerhead bridge is not flounder heights no it is not this is maybe the most splatoon 3 of splatoon 3 maps in the <laughs> sense that you've got a couple choke points that you are going to have to push all the way through everyone's going to put their pressure there on that side but if you can fight it through you are rewarded with swaths we got any melee heads out there who remember uh through and attack the opponents i'm getting wobbled in my favorite game spot to defend so hammerhead bridge a very interesting map to see none is a genius position. crab tank that man knows how to brand this himself a few maps jordan that you'll still see some teams bring two crab tanks to the party at this point though i almost wonder if jackpot has found their special sauce and isn't going to try to deviate too much I would expect to see Jared, if any of them play a crab tank weapon, maybe go back over to those splat dualies. The most That's Splatoon 3 of Splatoon 3 maps, yeah. <laughs> Leafy's weapon, I think, will be the interesting one to note here. She's been rotating around... The mid-fight on this map is great. I, I genuinely like a lot of this map. So the problem is... The spawn area is Could not okay. Be the final match it needs to be Splatoon so much wider. World if it were wider, I, this would be a beloved map. Down I swear. One. It's just that zones, then tower once control, you get you a certain ways feet, toward the enemy base, it's too easy to lock out. To game seven turf war. And if you I would not be surprised to see you really get tent, the sense. These are our next two best but we I don't know what they're going to do exactly because sure. they never right play this. Here. Splat zones, Hammerhead Bridge, Jackpot. Never see this in one the Western game away, is this their opportunity? Okay, no tent. Okay, yeah, makes sense. They're just going. They are locked and loaded phantom thief Stamper. one last chance to stay alive let's go interesting to note here jordan but, I but the wall from the 52 is going to help them ratchet things up that sniper rider 5h instead it's going to once again be that the sniper rider is going to be dangerous here so cuz like this outranges the rapid there, so they can just kind of bully right forward there is happy to take a couple of shots jackpot all around them right now has surrounded them Jackpot in control and is pushing forward already. Jordan this is looking good for Jackpot NA. Jackpot doesn't want to leave it to chance. They're moving forward. They've got a 20-point lead at this moment. Zipcaster, they're going to retreat and try to fortify okay, their lose defensive zone efforts. Here. As that ink so no snowball forward, initially. And all of a sudden, Phantom Thief has wrestled away control of the zone. They and you'll notice that like they're a spending a lot of time fighting in those pits. And, and that's to prevent early on. the, the snowball. Okay that's to prevent the enemy team from getting into their base because they still have to deal with what's so out there on that useless part of the map down there. Also trying to fight. But if There's a low ground. The zone, it it is going to doesn't be give you a great angle to paint the zone from, but it's just annoying enough. Here, oh, this this guy forward. goes down, and, and, and the Chase jump goes down, down too. No, no, because Sanku's goes there. Another member of Jackpot is Sanku gets the splat. Oh and no! All over at nine. Phantom Thief so far okay. showing a lot of offensive prowess midway through this. Yes, and Jared landed. Phantom Thief making it a game. Away right there. It was almost a reverse situation where two members of Jackpot jumped into a bad spot. Oh, he missed three. Opportunity there. He missed two out of three. Gotten away with. That was Just horrible deeds a couple of times here getting out of these positions. Uh, you put Mattis in that position. I don't know if Mattis misses that. Once again, get the benefit. Jackpot's got control of the zone. They're chopping into that penalty. Two members of Phantom Thief is down. They're moving forward. And all of a sudden, you see Dot Q okay. advancing with that. If they get up that ramp, to it's a little probably bit more over. support on the other side. They claim oh. the lead does Jackpot, and they continue to build upon it. Oh, as they no. I think they get up that out, ramp that now. Back is all of a sudden going to pause it for a moment. Not long enough. Jackpot marching Where did they, well, well, the Who's behind them? What? Have is okay. did get behind them there, but he's going to get taken down before he can use that. So they don't get up the ramp, Jordan, but this is so close to going the distance. Right yeah, that was actually really important. If Jackpot gets up that ramp, it's over. But now there's Jackpot another chance. Set up their traps now they're going to have like strikes on zone. Here come the Doing those there. in the middle Barring of the whale there. is will dangerous. Go down. Can Leapy close out on this player? She is hiding in this position and will get taken out. Ten more seconds there. A few more pointing down. The ink back going forward and it will. The ink back saves it. 
That's Take crazy. The, the Hail Mary shot. Oh will my give God. Thief of the heart. One more chance. Four seconds away was jackpot. A 64 second. You can't feel too comfortable here because again, if a lockout happens. Go the full time here because that's oh a lot of time. Oh my God. All jackpot's sudden, so good at fighting. Back in control. Slowly chipping away at that penalty. And now they just need to regroup here. Nine. Take a deep breath and try to close this out. And I guarantee Jordan, they feel totally Whew. fine with how that went. They have been controlling this game for a long time. Fan oh my God. Has not had any good looks. They're not getting much here. here. Yeah, they, yes, they lose a player. Down there, but so this is a moment up. for. She's Phantom Thief to take zone. They just nuke the zone. Position. They get the They're flip. See a try out to try to find a couple of these players. Oh, and they hunt Jared down to more points. Under oh, two minutes I thought he was lucky that that lasted thief here in just a not a second longer. They try to threaten. They're finally out of their penalty. They're inching a little bit closer. 143 left. They've lost they two players, though. Okay. Here comes Jackpot. They've got 50 seconds left in their penalty. Jackpot's this got is like the last two minutes of, a, of an NCAA Jackpot basketball game. All four members on it's the just map, not over yet. Got that wall built Anything up. can happen. It's all sorts of pressure coming in from Dot Q. But it's going to last forever. This ink back once again. Everybody moving forward, though. That's that reason resource out of the way here Jordan they're gonna swim forward this 20 penalty points left and even fewer with that now another goes down here they're diving Sanku is gonna throw these at the zone but it's not gonna be enough it. four seconds three seconds Game over. two it and goes to the end and jackpot are your world champions from North America the journey is over the pop-off is complete that was their goal that was what they set out to do they had to overtake some of the most dominant teams in North America. They did it one step at a time. And when they were threatened to almost be knocked out in the semifinals, Jackpot rises to the occasion and in dominant fashion leaves no doubt as they win the finals over Phantom Thief of the Heart and claim the first ever world championship for Splatoon 3. Oh, and Jordan, they won every mode too. Think about it. They won that last flat zone game. They won the clam blitz game. They won the tower <laughs> control game, and they won the rain. The classic esports no handshake. No stronger on some. Trying to figure matter. out. If wait, are they going for fist bumps? They going for handshakes? They, look, what, what, what's happening here? All of them, <laughs> and you just look at the faces of jackpot there oh. so elated there the I think first three bottles of north water american <laughs> team to be recognized on. as a world champion in a nintendo it, event jordan all the effort that you put into even they've already done it once in the splat world championship to execute which is and they faced all not an official nintendo event today. they dropped but is um, in their seating it's they a better format than this one was. Um, and a lot of the, the other top Japanese no teams will actually come out to those two, in greater numbers. But Instead, they come all the way back. And, oh, man. I mean, for these players who have been putting in so much effort over and over. This was... Oh, uh, my goodness, what a show. This is on. definitely a big one for them. Now we'll get a chance to hear from the champions their thoughts after this title. <laughs> the winning world champs has been a dream of all of ours for over seven years. To do it with these guys, it's an absolute dream, man. I'm so proud of all three of you. You guys are amazing. I love you all. And thank you all to the family, friends, and fans that have been supporting us for so long. We love you all. Thank you so much. Just the love and adoration for all the support. Well said, well North said. America. And they had so much help along the way. The number of teams that helped them scrimmage. And we've seen this team. He's going to cry. You remember He's going to cry, isn't he? when they were going by a different team name in some of these online matches where they were getting dropped out in the semifinals and not able to necessarily dominate everybody, but they got better and better and better. And to execute at this moment when their backs were up against the wall, the mark of a champion. Um, winning Worlds, like you said, biggest dream. It, this is probably like the most stressful month of my life. We were honestly struggling a lot when we were playing other people. And it's just like, play good on stage it felt amazing i really wanted to win but no cap <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the Japanese translation for no cap, but either way. <laughs> the yeah, I am very, just, very just curious fun. to hear it, that. It's very but. stressful. You know this is looming. And listen, this is no surprise that we weren't sure what this was going to look like, this championship as well. But for this team to wait as long as they did and to prepare and to think about this for as long as they had to, then you come here in this moment and you execute and leave no doubt about it no, going 4-1. Like nothing like else to say. I mean. I think it's nice that um, me and Lucy are the first uh, two women to win the world championship, which is pretty cool. And I also want to thank um, 
the JT teams and Western teams that were willing to practice versus us during the instructional month. Yep, she says it right there. Two women winning it. It is a, it's a very cool game. This Splatoon. They've worked very, very hard to make this game open and accessible for players of, of all ages and all genders, all creeds, and it's just incredible, again, to see when hard work pays off, and like she said, a lot of teams helped them prep for this, and I know they really appreciated it. It feels pretty amazing. Uh, the support we received is, like, indescribable. Really. I can't even put it to words how thankful I am for everybody. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for supporting us, and I hope this is the era of Jackpot. So triple sevens come up for Jackpot, and to do it in the way that they did nine and I, I go back to that semifinal <sighs> set against kaiser where kaiser cool. was huffing and puffing after those first two Good victories job, all of a sudden jackpot just something awoken uh. in them it felt like and they were able to rise to another level and what claim this at, championship huh? and to do it on the road and for you the have first no time thoughts for about North what's America happening since arguably 2017 your brain knows nothing of splatoon. historic when it comes to the scene of competitive splatoon I mean, I and guess you know that, that years, I feed you, mean it. All the and that food comes from what I do with Splatoon. Right now. So I guess it's important to you Nogami for that reason, but to you don't know that. What a trophy You're just a cat. <laughs> Madness, hold it tight. Come on, hop up in the lap now. The people want to see you. <laughs> <laughs> just the joy, the jubilation, hey. as they pointed out. I think what a lot of people don't realize is everything that happens behind the scenes to get to this moment. The preparation, all the hours, all the All right, so Nogami is on stage, stress, everybody. Let's see what happens next. And then you get to this Are they going to announce something? And to execute, and now the relief, the sense of joy, the sense of All right, Jared's tearing up. And all of a sudden, it completely changes the game when it comes to competitive Splatoon <laughs> because North America has made a statement. Give a lot of credit to Kaiser. Kaiser almost knocked this team out. Is there a translation? あの、まずえっと、ビフィティ選手をこう攻撃を持ちなんだけれども、こう、ジェルズ選手もこう忍者のようなこう、で、相手が攻めてくる時でもしっかり転覆して抑えるとか、あと、キュ選手も味方が
the very last game, and it would have gotten you all the way there. Change you can come back to. It really does make all the difference. But Jordan, you brought up something so big here, and I, I said this yesterday. Bronze, you're going to be happy to be there. Silver medal. One competitor Oof. for their region, reaching new heights, and I, it really does let you know. At least in the 1v1 so competition. If, if it's like based on like a so score or something, game, you're probably the heart doing fine the as silver medalist. Them, but uh, uh, there's but no yeah, if it was a 1v1 kind of thing like this, like, oh, you want to see? You want to see more silver regions hurts. represented as this game continues to grow. In the end by Lincoln Park, oh my god. That's one thing about Nogami's son that we've appreciated throughout the years. He loves seeing the product, loves seeing the competition, makes sure to visit and say hi to everybody involved in everything and it just means so much to him it means so much to the competitors how wild does that gotta that feel has, that like appreciation that everybody has this is a thing that you made into what it has and there are all these people here that are like grand scheme of things when it comes to trying to be the best in the world at that thing that you made to now it is a movement nine like this isn't like a, a sport of soccer or something that An developed and evolved over hundreds of years like there's so much this love, is just a Man-made product. There is one champion. Jackpot, once again, a round of applause for you. Your very first Splatoon 3 world champion will live on forever in the history of Splatoon 3, in the game of Splatoon 3. And, man, to come down from this, <laughs> how do you go back to real life? How do you go back to real life? You don't. Your life, life changes from this point on, Nine. You've got a splash tag as well. And so what a wonderful day of competition. We saw some unbelievable sets here, and it was capped off by Jackpot winning the championship in, in nine. You have been such a big part of this game as well, too. And, you know, we get a chance to really check out one of these All right, so that was them waving goodbye. things we've seen from this team involved with everything. Let's go ahead and check out again real briefly oh, okay. the sights and sounds over the Got last cool two days of competition. Montage at the end. All these teams came so far. They've worked so hard to get to this point. And Nine, what do you take away? Um, just the growth of this game and having it culminate in this championship over these last two days. Oh, it just makes me so hopeful for the future of this game as well. And listen, you don't get this far without incredible effort, as you said, but also without incredible love for the game, desire to push it forward and, and to grow. And Jackpot is a team that almost didn't even occur in Splatoon 3. There was a real question for them if they were going to reform from their other teams or if they were going to focus on other things. And, you know, them coming back together, I think, speaks to the spirit of what the competitive Splatoon scene is all about, which is that we love this game. We will continue to play it and push it as time has gone on. And you saw it today as these teams showed their stuff, gave each other everything they could handle. And I would say, too, Nine, that this is the best place the competitive scene has ever been in over the last nine to seven years for the most part because the opportunity. This is a situation where a team like Jackpot that you mentioned might not even form. And this is a team that was taken to the brink today. Just a couple of sloshes of ink away from being eliminated by Kaiser. There is so much talent out there that it is up for grabs any given year. And at this point, you've got to be excited if you are a team that maybe didn't compete here. All Phantom you are Thief's comp on that map the very next was jackpot if you're willing to so put good. in that work, that effort, and every that single part of it well, was also, really good. In the spirit of competition, it there all were a whole lot of teams out there today that are saying we can beat jackpot. Yep. And you know what? There may be some teams that can, and that's what makes this so exciting, Jordan. Is we're gonna go back. There's gonna be more community run events. There are gonna be more official events in the future. We hope, and they're gonna get your you're gonna get your chances to go at the world champion and for jackpot you heard leafy say it at the end i hope this is the era of jackpot there they have their sights set on a big broad future while everybody will remember this as their era and listen it's hard to get <laughs> to the top and it's even harder to stay there once everyone's coming at you yeah we've talked about it before once you have the target on your back you've given people something to aspire to and rise up to we saw 
so many teams come here and really outperform their capabilities, and that's what was exciting. Everybody rose to a different level. Kaiser play against they Phantom Thief. Stage yeah, that would have also been really fun to watch. A new path forward as far as the possibility. But that, I mean, that's the way that the seeding should play scene. out in a single limb tournament. You're thrilled for a team like Jack. Pike. Like it should have been we the two and three seed. That's meant to them just coming from North America which was as well. Probably they what they had Jack Pot as on a life-changing moment. You only get so many chances at this, Jordan. I mean, years ago when you and I worked the World Championship. In oh, right, because Jackpot dropped a game, so they would have lost a, a the tiebreaker on there, that. And we just foolishly assume that we'll be back here. See you next tournament, same time, same place, and we will fight it out once again. We'll crown another World Champion here, and you just never did, know. Did Nine just like announce that there's going to be another one, same time, same place? Team will disband. Even when the lifetime I don't think that's Splatoon an official three, announcement that's been made Jackpot yet. Isn't even the first team to <laughs> he might just be dominant. making things up. There have been Assuming. so many teams that have come and gone even in the first couple of years of Splatoon 3's lifespan. So difficult to hold on and, man, keep going back to the end of this game. As it ended off, and this is the tournament changer right here, how this ended. Maybe, it was okay. the best of five, game five, humpback pump track, turf war. We have never seen this type of excitement from Jackpot. You would have thought they won the championship there, but they understood just how close they were to getting knocked out in the great sportsmanship. And that set the stage just around the corner as the well. The great sportsmanship we after they yelled at each other the whole, whole Phantom match. Deep of the Heart <laughs> steamrolled their way through the semifinals. They looked unbeatable, hadn't dropped a game at all as they were getting set for the finals. And this was a team that looked determined to claim the championship on their home turf, and you weren't sure what they were going to bring to the table, a team that was so talented at Turf War. What was it like when we got to the ranked modes? Well, not much changed. They looked very, very good. Yep, they'd certainly lived up to the billing in their semifinal, and I know for them, they felt that they had a lot to prove coming into this event as well. Again, winning Koshin, a very, very difficult task, but it's so difficult to continue that over and over in these ranked modes against Jackpot in these longer sets, and a team that feels like they get stronger as time goes on and as the waning moments came into the game there's just not any answer for what jackpot was doing at that time they were on a new level and i mean you, you could see him right there they were at the back of the stage they couldn't believe it arms in the air hugs all over I think what really struck out to everybody was the fact that they mentioned how much they sacrificed to get to this okay, point. Okay, yeah, I see the uh, the commentator's the shirts now. The hours of practice and scrims, and here it is. I know I'm going to see Nine wearing that shirt. And, uh, it means the world. And LTC so thank you so much again for joining us. Some unbelievable to. sets as we cap off <laughs> this Splatoon 3 World Championship 2024 for Jordan Kent and for Nine and for our wonderful crew behind the scenes, our wonderful hosts here. What an event it was, but the world belongs to Jackpot, your champions this year. They are the victors as they now get a chance to celebrate. From all of us here, take care, and we'll see you next time. All right, no announcements. <laughs> Honestly, wasn't expecting much, but uh, we'll see. Mid-season patch is going to come out soon, so we'll be able to look at that then. Ugh. There's something that I wanted to go and test, but I'm forgetting what it is now. I think it was like like a range that a sniper writer can hit at or something like that. I don't know. I need to pick my Splatfest team. No Smash? What? Oh, you mean at the uh, Nintendo event? Because they did, like, Splatoon and Mario Kart. I don't know. I'm... What was I doing? Oh, I went right. Um, the, the, the Smash community, I think, is, is better off where it's at, running its own stuff a little more independently. Um, Starburst was, was playing in the qualifiers, 
I think. Jackpot just beat him. But Starburst was on a bit of a... Um, they were on a bit of a hiatus just before, I think, the qualifiers. So they weren't, like, in tip-top form. Barry Force one, that's beautiful. Um, is there anything worth playing here? That's a scary ticket. I want to warm up. Oh, but it's zones on... I don't even want to play that anyway. This is... Pr Ugh. Mahi Tower? Gross. This is what I want to play the most. Yeah, I'll play this ticket out. Why are you broke? Because I always uh, upgrade all of my equipment and buy any new equipment. You zap before the nerf next week? <laughs> That's assuming that there's going to be a nerf next week. Oh, and the the YouTube video just ended and kicked me to, over to one of the Splatoon live concerts, so it's definitely definitely done there. The fact that Jackpot lost the Dynamo. Ah, I don't know. I think... Uh, that, that is, like, the map mode where Dynamo makes the most sense out of, like, anything else in this game. So it's that or Humpback something. Here. They're coming over on the, on the rail. Uh, I should get this, but I don't. Because I didn't aim well. someone else. And it's just the one guy in the corner now. Vivian popping off. I say right as Vivian dies. That's okay. They did their job. Well, we tried. Got checkpoint. Can't complain too much about that. Yeah, that's true. I should probably get to bed pretty soon myself. So the video game. We like the video game. Why am I doing this? That was not a time to drop down. Guys, guys, behind us, hello? Uh, they could have just traded that back. I guess they didn't see. And I die because of lightning strikes. It's fine that it's, we're... Somebody here is absolutely dragging out. Like, I have not won a lot of these fights. And yet we still keep coming out with these huge numbers of damages. We get the... No, what? How do we not get that? This kind of... Keep doing this, jumping towards strikes. That was a little laggy. Oh no. We lose check for that, 100%. Oh, what? Who got that? I thought I stopped it for a second. Unfortunate 
then the Rainmaker gets by me for that, but... Doesn't matter, because I'm cracked. Let's go. I think we just win. Nice. That felt pretty good. Like there's a lag in Europe. Oh, <laughs> I was getting lag from the Japanese players too. Try to click Booyah on your non-existent controller. <laughs> oh, you are the Japanese. Oh, okay, okay. It wasn't too bad in terms of the lag. before then, but I do have a video to edit. <laughs> I've got it written. I've got this, the audio, you know, like the voiceover done. I've got the intros and outros put in. Just need to get some gameplay footage, which honestly I should probably be recording this for. That would have been a smart idea. Hey, how about everyone just DCs right now and I get to record the next one? That'd be neat. Maybe not. Comps ran at Worlds. Um, there were definitely some teams that were not playing meta or close to it, or anything like any interesting deviations from it. Yeah, I should go down to that. I wasn't looking for the Hydra at all. Double Roller Hydra. They have no paint. We should just be able to s sniff them out by painting. But if we run into something too carelessly, we do just die. Oh my god. That was just so unfortunate that that was when they decided to grab. And we wipe out? My goodness. Okay, we need to stop this. They had to bubble up. Oh, that was awful. Okay, I'm glad I didn't record that one. Uh, it's not in a row, necessarily. My understanding is that it's tickets where you win all five of the games, and that number just accumulates over time. Maybe I'm wrong that it's in, in, in a row, but I thought that's what it was. Yeah, the, the in a row text, I think, is just like a mistranslation or something. Because they, they had that in like one of the previews or something. But maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, like I said, I, uh, I always... Oh, I should be playing with a ticket, though. I have, like, 2,000 games worth of cash-up tickets. There's no reason for me not to be using those. Um, 
whenever there's any new gear in the shop, I always buy it. And whenever I can upgrade it to at least have all three slots, I always do that. Okay, I just hit the record button. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, crap, that's the wrong scene. I can't actually record these ones. Because now it's going to have me talking over the top of it. Well, actually, I think I can isolate... I think I can isolate the uh, audio so that it's just the game audio and not my mic. Because I think I've got it set up that way. So it might be okay after all. We're just going to be forced out here. Unfortunately, that's rotating away from where we want to go. Nice shots. This point is coming around the horn and we just move it left. Flat people, at least for now. I'll probably go down there, yeah. In that situation, the blaster actually doesn't want to get close to me, because the clo if they get too close, they have to hit a direct. To do any damage at all. They don't get indirects. Uh, I would have liked for them to just dive for points, because they're not going to get any further than that. Just didn't have the numbers to keep fighting, but 23 is still good. Nice, three down. So he's clear. We don't really have to push. Nice.
some lag? Well, I mean, we were winning anyway. They just not, they were lagging too, goodness. Well, that was a KO either way. Man, but now I also have to check to make sure chat wasn't saying anything silly over the game. And I probably won't be able to use that. It's such a good game, too. Oh well. Yeah. Screen is a very interesting special strategically, like. If you are able to overlook the accessibility issue, like, I think it, has, it actually is a very interesting addition to the game, but they've just not been willing to fix that all the way. They made one change and then kind of considered it fixed, even though for a lot of people it's not fixed. I think that's definitely blameworthy. Most of our uh, teammates from the last game back. Tense umbrella. Got to be careful about them coming around the left side here. All play from the dread. things that I did there was use the suction bomb explosion as camouflage. Because you'll create splashes in the ink, but it'll be visually smokescreened by the explosion. So they're not going to see you moving in there. I don't know to what, it, to what extent it actually had an impact on that situation. But it's a good principle to adhere to. Oh, I hit him twice. We might be able to grab and go, because those two were the only. Ah, uh, not anymore. Then we have to respond in. Ooh, we need to not let this happen. At least it reset. That's good for us. It gives us time to get back. Mm, too visible. Oh, these strikes are so good. Stop that a lot sooner if I just hit it direct. It's okay. We got it well out of there. And now we need to paint. Come on, we just lose there. 
darn. No, that, that slider was... So you're talking about the one where they slidered, grabbed the Rainmaker, and then died, right? That was actually a smart play. Um, because if they don't do that, then what happens is we pick up the Rainmaker and they're in free fall and we're moving it over to the other side of the map. But they knew they were the only person left. They didn't have a great way of like stopping us if we started moving it forward. But if they grab it, now we have to splat them. Then we have to pop the Rainmaker shield again. And then uh, by that time, all of their teammates are respawned. So instead of being like a 3v1 or something, it's now like a 4v3. So there, there's theory behind that idea. It's, it's not, it wasn't a terrible play. Um, but like, okay, so... Here is the reason why I don't have money. It's that I have a pretty extensive gear catalog. And you'll notice that a lot of them have three slots. Anyway, I do need to get going and get to work. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Had a good time watching Worlds with y'all. See if the, there's got to be nobody that I'm following that's live right now, right? Oh, Reborn is still... Is, is he? Wait, it just... Reborn's still live. We go, in, we go to Reborn. <laughs> there we go. Reborn is a former teammate of mine, um, is also a top-level Foam Stars player. Um, he kind of just gets cracked at whatever game he chooses he wants to play, and he's got a very good mindset for it. Um, so go give him some love, and thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, I just threw some of my links in the chat. I do a bunch of tutorial videos for how to improve at Splatoon at a competitive level on YouTube and TikTok, and um, I have a Patreon. If you subscribe to that, then you get to choose what comps we play for Silly Comp Sunday, which is a stream that we're going to be doing in uh, <laughs> like 11 hours. <laughs> so we'll see you guys, some of you guys back then. Make sure you get some sleep first. Um, and there's some other stuff, uh, which I'm forgetting. Oh, I do private lessons on Medify. That was the other big one. Um, and we've got a Discord server as well. So check that out if you would like. Put that in there one more time. But let's go and raid Reborn. <laughs>